All righty. Are we live? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, where is it? Wait, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts Boat Camp and Real Estate Course. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's bright and early. You have, in the next 10 minutes, some of the biggest data, I would say, all year. Why? Because we are on the cusp of the biggest rally all year after Powell. You had Apple earnings last night. Was not the best, uh, not the worst, but I definitely think you'll get more reaction after we get this non-farms. But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a big event. So... If you ever been here in the mornings, uh, we like to go over a couple of the previews. If you're not aware, uh, we're still going to have our little morning session. We may take a little bit of a break here after the data. I would watch every 15 minutes, the first like 30 minutes after pretty much. We're going to have a general idea, but the numbers that are expected, if you don't remember at the beginning of the week, this number was expected to be 170,000. Now the median estimate for today is 180,000. So a number below that will be good. A number above that will not be good. And if you don't remember last time, and two, if you don't, we have a video uh, on how to get all of the data here from the website, but just don't forget last non-farms, it was a beat of 336,000. So it was very, very good. So we're going to have to see what happens, man. We are going to see what happens. It, it could be very wild today. Uh, Japan, China, everywhere else. Japan was actually closed, but everywhere else did good. So it's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. Yeah, the forecast is 190. The median estimate is about 180. At the beginning of the week, it was at 170. So we will see. But, Chad, we don't have too much time. We got about eight minutes. So let's see if there's anything coming out. All right, so here's what to expect. Uh, Bloomberg, they expect 180,000 compared with 336,000 in September. The unemployment rate is expected to hold at 3.8. Average hourly earnings likely rose by 0.3 from a month earlier compared with 0.2 gain in September. From October, growth in average hourly earnings likely slowed from to 4% from 4.2. And labor force participation probably stayed pat at 62.8. Uh, so Bloomberg, they expect the pace of hiring likely slowed to 157 in October, less than half of September's 336. The unemployment rate is likely close to 3.9 from 3.8 as prior month as job seekers take longer to find work and the labor force participation rate should hold steady at 62.8. Uh, here's a quote from Anna Wong and Stuart Paul. The non-farm payrolls gain for October should slow to about half of September's gangbuster pace, regardless of what the headline figure shows. However, sharp revisions throughout the year, as well as volatility introduced by recent strikes, limit its signaling value. The unemployment rate, which is subject to large revisions, is more telling about labor market conditions. We expect it to approach or even reach the tipping point that usually catal uh, catalyzes non-linear increases. Historically, a telltale sign of recession, very few you false positives. Uh oh, hot dog. Uh, for this report, the revisions will be just likely as important as the headline figure. The monthly data has swung around with subsequent months as the BLS recrunches numbers, changing the labor market picture. For example, June payrolls ended up being 100,000 lower than first reported. This year, the revisions have been to the negative. Economists will be looking to see if the blowout 336 in September was real. Uh, recent alternative reports on labor market have been, a, have been a mixed bag. Jobless claims ticked up only slightly last week, but remains low compared to pre-pandemic levels. Job openings unexpectedly increased in September for a second month, showing that companies posted for more positions, though, of course, some of those are for marketing exercise for firms and don't represent actual demand. And companies added fewer jobs than expected last month after posting the weakest gains in two years in September, indicating that demand is beginning to wane. Interesting. So again, Bloomberg, I think they're expecting a number of 157,000. So some people think this will be the non-linear 
reaction to unemployment. If you're not familiar, I mean, just take a look, you know, by nonlinear, you know, let's pull this to a line. They're saying it's just going to be just one of these little boop, boop, popper drops more or less. So very interesting. Very interesting, young Bloomberg. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, first time chatters? Mm -hmm. These charts are the exchange. Uh, this is the S&P 500. So you're going to, again, and the, here's the crazy part. We have data coming out here in five minutes, and you're going to watch the market move. So technically, the market's not even open. You can't. Oh, come on. It's messing with me on my internet connections, bro. Ah! Attempt to reconnect. Uh, but I was going to show you the futures. Uh, but essentially, the market's closed right now. You got a couple of names. They still trade pre-market, but this is going to show us the overall indexes before everything reports. Okay, uh, two things I'm looking out for today in the numbers, the impact of auto workers strike, and more importantly, revisions to previous month's payroll data. Any sizable downward revisions would stoke concerns that the economy is slowing by more than thought. And of course, the opposite would lend itself to a soft landing argument. Oh, all right, here it is. So these are the futures. Yeah, that's a good way. We're down by, we're break even pretty much from yesterday. <laughs> Uh, again, in revisions, any sizable downward would add that the economy is slowing. And, of course, the opposite would lend itself to soft landing. Uh, there's been a powerful rally in treasuries this week. It's the run-up to the report. Thanks to optimism, the Fed is done with rates. A smaller plan for U.S. government debt, as expected. And then a weak reading on U.S. manufacturing for the Institute of Supply Management. It feels like a soft set of numbers from the jobs report could give the market another notable boost. For many, 5% 10-year yields did not look sustainable. Another thing to consider of the balance of risk for the markets. Powell on Wednesday pretty clearly signaled that it would take quite a lot of the Fed to resume raising rates. He even suggested the economy, strong as it's been lately, may be growing less potential right now because its potential is temporarily higher thanks to the higher catch-up growth after pandemic disruptions. It's pumping early. We were down a little bit more again, I think, at Asia Futures. Uh, you know, when we were even making the watch list yesterday, uh, we were down by like a quarter on the NASDAQ. So we moved up a little bit. But right now, again, two minutes into the event, it looks like futures are coming up to the break even. So those signals from Powell suggest that a hot set of numbers today would hardly move the needle for the Fed. As New York Fed Chief J William Dudley said on Wednesday after the press conference, it would take a whole bunch of reports to make a difference for policymakers at this point. Interesting. So two minutes, Chad. Two minutes. Apple earnings was not good. Again, they kind of beat on the quarter, depending on uh, how much Tim Cook paid you over the years. But for the most part, uh, their guidance was soft. It implies, again, you know, it's been four quarters of no growth. And then even their fourth quarter, uh, the guidance pretty much is saying they're going to be flat year over year. So it wasn't that good. But again, not enough to kill the market here. And like we said, you know, this data that we're waiting for, uh, that is the big key. So how might Treasury yields respond with surprise in jobs data? Uh, the looking at one of the uh, finance shock models suggests one downside scenarios with payrolls coming in at 60,000 and unemployment rate jumping to four. We would see two-year yields drop five basis points and 10-year yields decline four basis points over the next few years. Any upside scenario has yields rising by similar magnitudes. It's going to be a fun Friday. All right, man, one minute. One minute till the non-farms. This is very, very big, Habibi. Very, very big. Bonds are up by 0.43. Again, futures are practically break-even coming into the event. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you're at 0 0.07. 0 0.07. All right, 30 seconds, Chad. Again, the number uh, at 180 is technically what people are looking for, give or take a couple. And remember, you could go to the BLS website and pull everything up, so... Let's keep this up here. Let's see what we have. And good luck, my friend. Good luck. Good luck. Non-farms. All righty. 15 seconds. ba da ba 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 Five seconds. Good luck, Chattadonia. Good luck. Good luck. Two, one. There it is. Oh, I saw 3.9 on unemployment. Uh, reported at 150 versus 180. 
150 versus 180, you got a good reaction. That's it. I think for the most part, again, 3.8%. Uh, September was revised to 290. August revised to 160. So last month wasn't even that good. So that's also very good news here. Oh, come on. Update. Uh, what day? It's still not showing up here. Employment situation, November 3rd. I have that one. The PDF hasn't updated yet. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, they beat. Again, it was a miss, but that's that's really good. Again, look at the bonds right now. This was exactly what we wanted to see here today. So, again, they came in at 150. That was your first jobs miss in a very, very long time. And, again, unemployment rose up. I don't know what happened with wages. I'm trying. To, I'm going to go through the really uh, deep breakdown right now. So there's still a little more to it, but for now, things are good. Average hourly earnings even came in lower. Participation rate was lower. So I don't know if that's as good, but again, I mean, this has been a while since you've had a reaction like that. Yeah, weak jobs, but it's not weak enough uh, till it's uh, to the point, like I said, if that came in, I think some people thought it would come in below 130 or 100. If that came in too low, then we would have had a problem. Bro, they won't update the BLS website. Mm -mm -mm. Employment situation. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so again, uh, total non-farms increased by 150,000 in October. Unemployment rate changed little at 3.9. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported today job gains occurred in healthcare and government uh, and social assistance. Employment declined in manufacturing due to striking activity. The news release presents statistics from two monthly surveys, the household and the uh, establishment survey by demographic characteristics. Uh, for the household survey, both the unemployment rate at 3.9 and the uh, number of unemployed persons at 6.5 changed little in October. Uh, however, since the recent lows, these measures are up by 849,000 jobs. Uh, in October, labor force participation, 62.7. Again, this was for the uh, household survey. Establishment survey, total non-farms increased 150, below the average monthly gain of 258,000 in the past 12 months in October. Jobs gained occurred in uh, healthcare, government, social assistance, and manufacturing declined. Healthcare added 58,000 jobs in line a monthly average of 53 uh, uh, with the trend in ambulatory health care services, 32,000, hospitals, 18,000, and residential and nursing facilities, 8,000. Employment and government increased by 51,000 in return to its pre-pandemic February level. Monthly job growth in government had averaged 50,000 in the prior 12 months. In October, employment continued to trend up uh, for local government of 38,000. Construction continued to trend up. Mm-mm. Where is it? Construction increased by 23,000 and in line with the average monthly gain of 18,000 in the prior 12 months. Employment continued to trend up in monthly specialty trade by 14,000 and construction of building by 6,000. Employing and manufacturing decreased by 35,000, reflecting a decline of 33,000 in motor vehicles and parts that was largely due to strike activity uh, in October. So they're saying this does show striking, which is quite interesting. 30,000 of the jobs uh, that came down were because of the strikes, they said. In October, employment and leisure and hospitality changed little, 19,000 increase. Industry had an average of 52,000 per month over the last 12. Employment and professional and business services was little changed at 15,000 and showed little change since May. And employment and temporary help has changed little of 7,000. In October, uh, employment and transportation and warehousing, little change, a loss of 12,000, and has shown little change over the year and over the month. Warehousing and storage lost 11,000 jobs, while air transport added 4,000. Uh, information employment changed little loss of 9,000 employment and motion pictures continue to trend down negative 5,000 in the industry has lost 44,000 jobs since May partially reflecting one of the ongoing labor disputes over the month employment show little change in major industries including mining quarrying oil gas extraction wholesale trade retail financial services and other activities in October average hourly earnings for all employers or employees on private non-farm payrolls rose by seven cents or 0.2 percent to $34 over the past 12 months. Average hourly earnings have increased 4.1%. In October, average hourly earnings to private sector rose by 10 cents to 0.3. Average work week for non-farms edged down by 0.1 hours to 34.3 hours. 
and then the change in total non-farms for employment was revised down by 62,000 from 277 to 165, and the change for September was revised down 39,000 from 336 to 297. With these revisions, employment in August and September combined is 101,000 lower than previously reported. Monthly revisions result from additional reports received. Ta-da! So there it is. Good reaction. I think that is it. You could call it a day. I mean, until we get our first pullback, but for the most part now, unless uh, the war or other stuff wants to throw a wrench in our plans, I mean, you are up half a percent so far. Pretty big reaction. But again, I mean, no bad news for now. No bad. Again, you're going to hear a lot of people say Goldilocks. They were already saying that yesterday. So keep that in mind. Mm -mm. Crowd. Again, I want to see more of the pretty pictures, but... I just read you that that report. That is most of it. Ah. Oh, let's see. So again, very narrow payroll gains according to Bureau of Labor's uh, job gains occurred in healthcare, government, and social. John Brady at R.J. O'Brien calls payrolls a bond-friendly number. Don't think the A.H.E. number will be much a concern. Uh, the bad news clearly softening labor market is good news. Is this labor market turning point that the bears have been waiting for? Stock futures are up about 0.4 after a result. Another sign of labor weakness. The participation rate trickled down to 62.7. First decline since October 2022. Look at the revisions. They subtracted 101,000 from the the last two months. Uh, both two-year and 10-year are down eight basis points. Wouldn't be surprised if that gathers pace. Average hourly earnings trick, uh, tickled down. At first blush, the Treasury likes this number. Yields extend their decline with the two-year now down to 4.9. January swaps fall two basis points to show six-point uh, basis of tightening priced in, so around one in four odds of another quarter-point hike. Mm-mm. AMD ripping. Again, the market likes this. It uh, should like this. Again, this one was easy, but it's been your first decline in a while. Again, when was the last time you saw non-farm payrolls go up or go down? Excuse me. Goldilocks, people, you know, you know the story of Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold. People have been saying that. I don't like, you know, usually we like rally big and then dump hard anytime people say Goldilocks, but that's what they say when the data comes in weak, but not too weak and not good, but not too good. It's considered Goldilocks. And that's where you start getting the no landing, soft landing calls more or less. So the strikes removed about 33,000 from uh, payrolls. We already went over that. And then the payrolls rose about 180,000 in the month, right in line with estimates. Ah, so they're saying if you didn't pretty much the UAW strikes, that extra 30,000, if you didn't include the strikes, the number would have came in in line. Scaddy says that drop in participation rate is a disappointment. Powell had been pointing to higher participation rate on Wednesday as one component of what he described as big supply side boost to the economy. It's so weird. The website, they haven't updated the thing. I've been checking here for the first five minutes. So again, if you go here to employment cost, if you want to read the Times New Roman awful font, that's the one I read to you. This was the report without the charts, but usually this is updated immediately. Uh, it's still showing October's release. So again, a lot of weird, the way news has came out this last two weeks has been fascinating. But again, you don't even have an update on the BLS site, but Again, for the most part, this is a good number. I think there's a couple of things you can nitpick on. Again, uh, there's the average hourly as well as the uh, participation rate. But for the most part, again, just a, a good number in terms of not being strong on the noms farms. We have not had that in a while. Dollars down by 0.6. Good for you. Is it below 20? Oh, yeah. Below 29.81. So this could be a good sign. But, I mean, hopefully we could hold even 29.62 and below on UUP. That would actually be very good. Again, the BLS line on the strikes, they said employment manufacturing decreased 35,000, reflecting a decline of 33,000 in motor vehicles and parts. That was largely due to strike activity. So in the narrowing payrolls gains, 52% of the 250 private industries added jobs last month, down from 61.4 in September. Yes, and they lowered the guidance. Or they, excuse me, the uh, the revisions came in lower too. So that hot jobs report and a little bit of the hotness ahead of that, they both came in lower. So again, in this time, the revisions are helping a weaker report. So 
Again, I get there's just I think average hourly earnings if you really want to get net nitpicky and then participation, right? But it does seem like this is a, a little bit of good news here today. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Futures are up only 0.38. They're up by 0.5. We'll see how this takes us in here. It's only been 10 minutes. Give it five more minutes. We'll go from there. The treasury market is holding a nice rally. 10-year or the five-year down 10 basis points to 4.5 as the belly prices in more cuts. Gregory Farinello, head of uh, U.S. rates for Amerivet Security, says employment report fits our view. The economy is slowing. And in the wake of the week, uh, the week's Fed, Dovis Fed meeting and uh, presser, he adds, it's clear why Chair Powell stood confident this week. So it's, it was actually only the smallest gain in payroll since June. Uh, when there was a dip, is this again just a dip or something more meaningful? We'll have to see, but the significant downward revision for payroll gains for the previous month argues in favor of something of a more concerted slowdown. So again, this although this was uh, the first time you came in below expectations, they're saying the month over month like dip in it, it's the lowest since June. And then last time again, June we had a drop and then we quickly started ramping back up. Government employment rose by 51,000 and is now back to pre-pandemic levels. We already covered that. Mm -mm. I want the pretty pictures to load from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They're playing me right now. Mm -hmm. Fed swaps price in first rate cut by June versus July. So you're already getting a little bit of that positive bond move. We'll see if TLT and all of this holds. Again, I do believe this is all now above the Bill Ackman level and whatnot. So if we could get above here and hold, I mean, this might be able to, again, you're going to test that first little bounce here. And that's where things got crazy. You know, very, very crazy, man. Very, very crazy. Shortish. We'll see. So again, uh, it's been about 12 minutes. Let's see this next three minutes, whether we run up or not. Bonds kind of want to hold. They're kind of holding up there, but we still have a lot to do. And But for the most part, your jobs report came in good, a.k.a. it came in negative, but that's the first time you've seen it in a while. So now as long as I think 30 minutes after the bell, uh, you have PMIs or ISM. So keep that in mind. That could still move you. I think the real story is bond relief. This data is enough to get it to us, so... Let's see what happens. Where are we? 43.52. The futures are like right back to this October level. Mm -hmm. Biggest positive candle of the year. Makes sense. It does. I mean, this is what we said yesterday. I mean, I am feeling good now that this is going to solidify a rally. Now that we have, uh, again, just Powell was good. Non-farms was good. The only thing that was bad was Apple. But like we were saying, again, a small non-farms number, I think that could do en enough work for them uh, when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, services, PMI, could be big. So again, government, employment. That Dude, I, it sucks. We've already gone over everything, and I want more of the BLS data. Why aren't they updating it, bro? This This is never this slow. 15 minutes after the bell, you don't even have their, like, they they haven't even uploaded their PDF, so this is all they have, but, again, I already read you all of this, but usually there's all these exhibits. I guess I could go through all of them, but they're they're really making it hard to pick apart here. KRE's up 1.6. Mm -mm. Amazon now, XLB. I think everything is going to start off good here, man. I think we got, uh, we got a little bit of that release that we were looking for. Mm -mm. PLS stays delayed. Last time it was instant. I think the last two, bro, that PDF, that should have been queued up, ready to be released. But my goodness, I guess maybe they got to revise it in there. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, we were going to upload it, but we need additional data. So we wait till additional data comes in and then we take three months to upload it so we could, you know, get the whole totality of the data. Mm -hmm. Money markets fully price in 50 basis point of ECB cuts by July. Damn, bro. So now you're even starting to price in uh, rate cuts in damn Europe. Actually kind of crazy. So you're already up by 0.4. We're still holding. But now, uh, again, you might be able to break out early. For, again, first 15 minutes right now. First move was up. Spent the other 15 minutes holding. We're either going to flip next 15 minutes, rally, or 
next 10 minutes or next 15 minutes kind of stay chilled or get your first pullback. But again, everything so far has been good news. Uh, the summary, U.S. added fewer than 150,000 jobs. Prior months revised lower. Unemployment rate rises by 0.1 to 3.9 and wage gains slow by 0.01. Labor force participation drops for the first time this year and treasury yields extend decline and stock futures tick higher. Mm -mm. So Priya Misra portfolio at JP says the market is responding as you expect uh, on the weaker than consensus payroll and downward revisions. She says the 10 basis point drop in five year yields tells you that the rate market is still short and not enough people own duration. It's an awful report. So risk assets should do well here. Curves should steepen and the market was pricing in a trough of FF rate of 4%. Uh, retail payrolls are basically unchanged despite speculation that we would front run pre-holiday hiring. Uh, even factoring in the impact of strikes, today's gains are a long way from the blockbuster numbers of previous months. Add in the revision data and the data confirming the soft labor market. The question from now is how much softer do things get? A rally, in, uh, a massive decline in employment for household survey, which is the jobless rate is taken. A 348,000 drop that tends to be somewhat volatile and we've seen big moves reverse in uh, subsequent months. The increase in unemployment rate to 3.9 means joblessness is on the verge of triggering the SAM rule, which has proven to be a reliable predictor of past recessions. It was a similar mix of industries that led gains in October, leisure and hospitality, government, education and health. At the same time, more categories saw declines uh, this month than the prior months. Mm -mm. Damn, but you're going up a little bit though, but it's not going too nutty yet, but you're holding about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 right now, 4357. Again, this is going to be uh, levels you're going to deal with on the SPX earlier today. But again, all good so now, all good for now. I mean, we've talked about this how much leading into this, but now it, it just happened. That's it. The jobs finally after years or a year. You got a low report in the market. It's taking it good. I mean, we've seen it go up a lot higher, but the question is, what do we do for the next seven hours here? It could get a little wild here, Chattadonia. It could get a little wild. So the bond market is only pushing. The Fed is done track harder now after the jobs data. Swaps for January show only five basis points of additional hikes. So 20% odds down from one in three chance earlier. Two-year year through seven have dropped more than 10 basis points. Led by the five-year, this is a current spurring a bullish steepening uh, in the yield curve with five and thirties at eight points is steeper. That's the typical bond market signal that the Fed narrative has changed and that the prospect that more cuts than currently priced in are coming next year. Temporary help services added workers. Today's numbers can be sliced and diced in any direction, but at the very least, they won't light any fire for the Fed rate hike in December. They support a soft landing for now. There it is. Again, a little bit of caution in the beginning, but like I'm to analysts are already flipping bullish. They're saying any way you cut it, man, that's it. No more now for the Fed. The Fed futures are even responding to, but you should have got this within the first five minutes or the first five seconds, really 15 minutes until the speech by Hezbollah security leader. It was kind of hyped up. People were saying he was going to announce a lot of things. Dollars down now. Dollars at 2961, bro. Wow, remember 2981, we said you go below there, that's bullish. Right when you dump 298, you didn't even stop at 2981. You went from 2982 to 2972. That's it, you just gap right below that. Bonds are still going. It's a it's a good day. It's a good day for now. The dollar can drop a lot more from here. The next test is right here, 23 uh 2965. If you break below here, next levels will be low 30s or low 29s. So we're starting to break out a little bit more. Again, everything's still holding up. Uh, no crazy updates. Uh, Barry Knapp, Ironside Researcher, says this report is for sure a turning point for bond bulls. Equity market, on the other hand, need the Fed to fully pivot. Uh, the average hourly earnings gain on the past three months on a month-over-month -month basis is 0.3. That's a little slower than the 0.4 pace seen in recent times. Mm -mm. We're now above the 200. I think we were yesterday, too. What happened? It was the non-farms. Non-farms just came in good. They dropped, and that was the first time we've seen labor market weakness. Now you could have the narrative talking about more labor market weakness, and finally, 
you know, what Powell needs to see to show up. Again, tie this to the fact that everybody was willing to bully Powell and buy on the fact that they thought he was done yesterday. This just further supports the idea now. Again, bonds, dollar, equities, everything that had pre This is what I was telling you guys the whole time here. Now the 10 year is falling back to a good range, but every pressure metric we've had in the last couple of months, they all just calm down right now by a very, very big amount. Again, bonds, everything. Dude, we're back to 4-5. So like I told you, we fall into 4-5 to 4-2. That's where the market can work itself out, and then uh, things will, will be good more or less uh, until the next issue arises. Mm -hmm. So the numbers in both household and establishment look pretty disappointing. Establishment, aggregate, weekly payrolls, uh, ended up going lower. Oh, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Some 30,000 of foreign-born residents in the U.S. are employed in October, up from 29,000 last year. So aggregate, aggregate weekly payrolls, employment times, uh, hours work times, hourly pay fell on a monthly basis for the first time since February 21. On the next episode of The Stock Market Hates You. Finally, after years during an election, the employment numbers came lower. <laughs> I think it's I think it's good now. I don't think we're going to land at all. I don't think gravity even exists anymore. <laughs> they were excited. <laughs> they were hyped. It's going to the moon. Even though I thought we were dying yesterday, two days, it felt really bad, but I think it's going to go up. <laughs> The jobs report did what they wanted, but now it means the economy is crashing. <laughs> Will they buy the dip on that news? Find out in 30 minutes as the bell goes ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see, man. We'll see, bro. We'll see, bro. We'll see, man. We'll see. <laughs> this, I mean, it's going to be a weird game of musical chairs. I mean, hypothetically speaking... This will be the last rally until we crash, but at the same time, that who knows how long that's going to take. So remember, in 1999, it took two years. 2006, it took you 18 months. 2001, it took you six months. So pick your poison, my brother. Pick your poison. That, that is our issue over here. That is our issue. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You could just move around now, but essentially, you have the jobs market showing you know, the, the next sign. So once that unemployment goes up and they start revising that lower before you know it, that will be the next catalyst. But who knows how long that'll take. So Chattadonia, I hope you enjoyed it so far. I hope you've been learning. But now we got to get into the morning. How you feeling, Chattadonia? Good morning, baby. Who do we got in the chat? Who made it bright and early? You got all the data. You just witnessed. Again, you've been witnessing a lot of things. Again, this is already setting up into one of the best weeks of the year. Good morning. What's up, Devlin? Sean, Danny, Mavis, PNC, baby. Good morning. Good morning, Mo. Ian, Anzel, Kev, baby. What's up, baby? Joshua, PNC once again. Gregory Ruiz, GDN. Good morning, baby. Ty B. Oh, wow. The chat is... There's a lot of you guys in here. The chat is going crazy. Ray, Anonymous, Anzel. Good morning, baby. Good morning, Colt. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Battleborn, Alien, Chris, Skinny, Rodney, Warrior, CYB, Tim Whitman, baby, Laker, J. Oh, good morning, baby. Good morning, Pixelated. Oh, yes, open faces here. That's what I'm talking about. Owen, Erica, J. Samuels, baby, S at work, Young Blood, LX, Straw Hat. Good morning, baby. Happy Friday. What's up, Jam to you? Johnny Trader, Rami, Nathan Evans, Bruce B, the Tiger Man, Brendan, SF, baby, let's go. El Chapato, Terry Woods, baby, Joe, Brendan, Akaika, Magical Johnson, C Money, Glide to the Top, Najee Wolf, baby, good morning. What's up, Dave? T Blizzy, Nathan, oh my goodness, Ed Equity, Brad, Radical, Skinny once again. I've seen Skinny like 15 times, bro. I've seen Skinny so much, Skinny FX. He said, I'm skinny from the FX, bro. What about that Twitch? Wealth loss, harvesting, Nikki on Smash, Big Curly, Triple Three, El Coyote, Lizzie, Big Curly, Ibex, Blowing Doe, Real Mookie Bets, Universe's Favorite, Feed Me, Seymour, Preforms, Match, Charlie and the Train, El Coyote, Lizzie, Amologus, 
Did I say that right? It's me and dog, Matt Bailey. Hey, it's Mike Ng, Nikki on again, Bunny Voodoo, Feed Me a More Fati Trav, Dan SV, Triple Three, Smealy Doink, and Mr. No, no, no Blazing Bob. No Blazing Bob. Blowing dough, though. I, I, I may have missed a lot, Chad. Damn, the chat is popping. The chat is popping, baby. The chat is popping. You know what I'm saying? The chat is popping. So let's do our thing, bro. Let's do our thing. Let's have a good one. I had a good morning. I I worked out yesterday pretty late, and then I woke up pretty early. So I do have. I got like I'm. I think I'm prone to lose my voice, and then the market might rally. But other than that, man, it's looking like a good morning. Again, I'm. I like that the data is kind of easy. So. We'll just ride out from there, man. We'll just ride out from there. But I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go get. I gotta go get everything ready now. I gotta go pee. I gotta. We gotta queue up all of the news. We gotta get more updates that we dealing with. So, brb, brb. I love you. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Doesn't become something pernicious for risk assets. Yeah, I'm not entirely concerned about that, Lisa, mostly because all of the cyclical segments of the U.S. equity market are trading at multiple standard deviations below prior cycle averages. You've got this really interesting economy happening in, in the U.S. equity market where tech stocks and specifically the biggest tech and communication stocks in the index have driven all of the return or, or the vast majority of the return so far this year. They're the only stocks trading at premiums. But if you take, for instance, the consumer discretionary space, which is where we've had the most negative guidance, which is where most people think that some sort of recessionary experience is likely to emerge, consumer discretionary stocks, when you exclude Amazon and Tesla, are trading nearly two standard deviations below their prior, their pre-pandemic five-year averages. So we're relatively prepared for an environment of slow growth. What the equity market continues to struggle with, and we've talked about this ad nauseum for the last two years, it's not about growth. Companies are very well prepared for a slowdown in growth. They've talked about a slowdown in growth coming for a long period of time. Where they struggle and where they probably will continue to struggle is with inflation and inflation volatility. So if we're moving into an environment where growth slows, they can contend with that. They've largely prepared for that. They've talked about it for a long time. What they're not prepared for and what they continue to struggle with is an environment where growth does not slow and inflation remains high and sticky. That's the difficult point in time for equities. We certainly had that throughout much of 2022. We contended, we contended with fears of that environment re-emerging over the last three months. So anything that confirms that that environment is going away right. is going to be perceived positively by stocks. Gina, thank you so much. I'm still not brave enough to buy my first share. Gina Martin Adams holding my hand here in the equity market, surging futures up at 21. She drives the show at uh, equities at uh, Bloomberg Intelligence. It will. I'm going to say this, Lisa, it's a sea change from the, the BKX Bank Index with a nice bounce that we saw yesterday. Just to get up to the top of a two standard deviation range is up 16%. That would be the pop in the bank index is the grimmest of grim. Which which is interesting given the fact that it used to be that higher rates would help the banking sector and all of a sudden lower rates helps the banking sector. There is a feeling on the street right now that suddenly stable rates or the idea that the Fed is done will bring right. so many more deal makers, issuers, etc. back to a market after really being on the sidelines for a while. Just now getting a glimmer of a pause here in the various surges and movements that we see in the markets. I'll focus on equities up uh, 20 where they were up a little more earlier. The two-year yield, Lisa, I know you're focused there, 4.88%. But you just wonder when people who have bet away, not short, but they've bet away, or they're just on the sidelines, whatever that means, cash or whatever, how do they interpret the week that you and I have lived? John didn't live it, but we did. When I think about Michael Hartnett, who has been relatively bearish, and over the longer term, sounds like he still is, he said that the momentum that we have seen and the trading that we have seen over the past couple of sessions does right. give him the sense that we could see that year-end kind of Santa Claus rally, as wow. they call it, just simply because <clears throat> there is a lot of momentum behind this. Just looked at it. 
get one statistic here. The 10-year real yield coming down even more now. Not a pause there. 2.18% from a 2.50%. That is a seismic move in the inflation-adjusted yield over this week. Thanks to our team for just a My goodness, Chad. week. Uh, the acting Labor Secretary, Julie Sue at 10 a.m. My Raphael goodness. Raphael Bostic this afternoon on oh. Bloomberg. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did you hear that? Oh, I don't know if you guys heard that. Oh, what's up, Rami? Good morning. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear that? No, you didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear what he just said. He just said something. Let's see. if. Oh, there it is. Yeah, bro. He said Bostick is going to be speaking later in the day. Oh, no. Oh, no, man. That's it. Uh, you know Boston. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, Chattadonia, good morning. I hope your morning is great so far. We've got the data. Jobs came in slightly lower for the first time in a while. A lot of people are getting excited about that. But, Chattadonia, it's time that we begin. Oh, we're right at 9 o'clock, so we're going to get through this early. Uh, I, I, I could already tell. I could already tell. We've already covered a lot. We're starting at right at 9 a.m. on the dot. So U.S. two-year yield sinks 14 basis points after the jobs report. Uh, stock futures rose and bond yields fell after signs that the labor market showed a slowdown, bolstered speculation that the Fed is done with interest rate hikes. S&P futures signaled equities will gain a fifth straight day. The gauge is currently on pace for its best week since November. Two-year yields retreated 14 basis points to 4.5. The dollar fell in swaps for January, show only a 20% chance of one more Fed hike, with the market now pricing in the first cut by June instead of July. U.S. job growth moderated in October, and the unemployment rate rose at almost a two-year high, marking a step down from the heated hiring pace this summer. Non-farm payrolls increased to 150 following a downwardly revised 297 in September. Unemployment rate climbed to 3.9. Uh, investors will interpret today's jobs uh, week jobs report as a sign that the demand in the labor is slowing, said Richard Flynn, managing director at Charles Schwab UK. For central bankers, a loosening labor market is another reason to lean away further from interest rates, something investors might view as the silver lining. The S&P has ascended rapidly this week, largely helped by a growing sense that the Fed's aggressive rate hiking regime may be over. Meanwhile, U.S. companies have been putting on a better than expected show for their third quarter results so far this season, further boosting investor confidence of the 300. 45 companies in the S&P that have announced 82 have beaten estimates now compared with 72 for the whole season a year ago, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Remember, just last week, that number was in the 70s. Uh, the benchmark index is on pace to record its best weekly run in a year. Technical factors no longer stand in the way of the year-end rally in the S&P, according to Bank of America's Michael Hartnett, who is usually bearish. Uh, the bank's in-house sentiment gauge, the bull and bear indicator, is flashing a contrarian buy signal for the third straight week amid poor or equity market breadth, a reference of the number of stocks rising and large outflows from high yield and emerging market bonds. The strategist wrote in a note, the indicator has slid to 1.4 below the two level that Bank of America says implies a buy signal. Attractive entry point bonds are looking attractive and are set to beat cash over the next year as inflation cools and central banks end policy tightening. According to Goldman, head of asset allocation, bonds are starting to offer an attractive entry point, said Christian Muller Glissman, central glizzy. Central banks are very close already at the end of their right hiking cycle. We also recognize that pressure comes from the rising long-dated yields and on the economy. Those factors are set investors up nicely for a much better starting point for buying bonds. Uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen disputed billionaire investor Stan Drunkenmiller's assertion that her department had made the biggest blunder in history by not taking uh, advantage of near zero. She says, well, I disagree with that statement. Yellen said when asked to respond to the accusation during an interview on CNN Thursday night and geopolitical news, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken held talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Tel Aviv as Israeli troops encircled Gaza and carried out an intense aerial bombardment. Uh, corporate highlights Apple, which is trying to reverse several successive quarters of uh, revenue decline, reported its uh, lowest revenue for the quarter in China region since mid-2022. Coinbase third quarter loss narrow and revenue increased more than forecasts at the largest U.S. crypto exchange as they sought to weather the industry-wide decline. DraftKings online sportsbook reported third quarter sales and monthly unique players that beat consensus estimates. Block payment giant run by Jack Dorsey again boosted forecasts for adjusted profit for the year as consumers increasingly turned to their popular cash app. Warren 
Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is posed to show, show that persistently high rates have helped the conglomerate more than hinder it. AP Moeller Marsk, a bellwether for global trade, fell after saying they cut at least 10,000 jobs to shield profitability, a shipping market that is set to remain weak till 26. Neo said that they're cutting jobs and may spin off non-core business to reduce costs and improve efficiency as the Chinese EV maker falls way short of sales target. And United Auto Worker president says there could be a nasty fight ahead if organized workers at Ford jointly own battery plants after the company declined to join its competitors in agreeing to ease the unionization process. And that's it. No more events. You got uh, the PMIs here uh, 30 minutes after the bell. Not bad, Chad Adonia. Not bad. So jobs day. Uh, again, payrolls came in lower than expected, igniting a rally. Uh, Apple disappoints. Apple warned uh, that revenue for the quarter uh, the quarter to the end of December will be flat year on year, dashing hopes among investors for growth with the group already under pressure from a slowdown in China. They see iPhone and Mac revenue growing, but significant declines for iPad and smartwatches. That has put more of a focus on challenges in China, where the unexpected rise of Huawei is weighing against the backdrop of an increasingly hostile business environment. Uh, SBF convicted. Sam Bankman was convicted of a massive fraud that resulted in the collapse of FTX crypto exchange. Following a month-long trial, the verdict was delivered swiftly for a white-collar case. He was found guilty on seven counts of fraud and conspiracy and faces as much as 20 years in prison on each count of the most serious charges with sentencing set for March. It marks a spectacular fall with FTX valued at $32 billion. As recently as early 2022, Manhattan U.S. Attorney Damian Williams and Bankman Freed have perpetrated one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. And then holding pattern markets are somewhat in a holding pattern ahead of the payrolls and treasuries calmer. Uh, we've already had that, but pre-market Coinbase falling on weaker volume, Square surging, and so is DraftKings. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, S&P futures are up 0.5 on Friday morning training, uh, reversing uh, earlier declines after cooler than expected October payrolls. Comes after big rally over the prior four sessions that left the index nearly up 5% and stocks on track for their biggest weekly gain of the year after coming under pressure of the prior two weeks and finishing down for a third straight month in October. Treasuries rallying across the curve two year below 4.9, lowest since early September, while 10 year approached 4.5 after rising 5% two weeks ago. Dollar weakened on the major crosses. Gold is up by 0.6 and Bitcoin futures are down by 1.9. WTI crude uh, climbed by 1.1. Uh, the big upside catalyst this morning was the October payrolls report, which came in cooler than expected and added support to peak Fed and soft landing narratives. Also, some of the big rally in stocks this week on the back of a rate reprieve from removal of uh, refunding overhang, softer macro data, dovish Powell takeaways, and less hawkish Bank of Japan tweak. Rally in both bonds and stocks also helped by positioning dynamics with deaths flagging outside C. TA short position. Stocks also supported by focus on favorable seasonal dynamics. End of October, year-end mutual fund selling and more companies exiting their buyback bl uh, blackouts. However, some disappointing earnings takeaways from the latest batch of earnings, particularly in tech sentiment surrounding earnings remains mixed as the beat rates are elevated now, though also ongoing concern and underwhelming guidance and pickup in softer demand and macro uncertainty messaging. Uh, October non-farms of 150 missed estimates with uh, prior two months revised down by a Hundred and one thousand unemployment rate ticked up while average hourly earnings cooled more than expected and annualized growth rate of four point one lowest since June of twenty one. Analysts said report also saw a drag of over two hundred thousand or thirty thousand from UAW strike, which could rebound next month. Following the report, economists said that the report gives Fed additional reason to hold. It also might not be cool enough to add much support for further rate cuts in twenty four. Other data today includes ISM services, which is expected to edge down to 53 in October from 53.6 in prior month. Earlier this week, ISM contracted for the 12th straight month in October. Uh, massive volume on earnings overnight with several notable decliners. Apple hit by light quarter revenue guidance, uh, though iPhone uh, and services installed base takeaways were positive. Fortnite down on uh, big takeaways focused on weak firewall demand. Team pressured by limited cloud upside. MCHP flag macro concerns, noting increased push out and cancellation requests. SWKS a laggard in focus on continued weakness and broader market. Elsewhere, bu booking saw strong demand and trends, but stock is down on guidance for significant deceleration in room nights. Uh, Expedia stand out on stable bookings and guidance. Square up big on positive takeaways surrounding 
uh, rule of 40 target in 2026. DraftKings, a big gainer following beat and raise. LYV beat on all key metrics and had positive 2024 commentary. Para beat on OIBDA and FCF while DTC losses not as bad as feared. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't worry, there's more. There's always more. There is always more, my brother. Uh, a private gauge of China's service activity grew less than expected in October, adding to signs of fragility with the economic recovery. Caxon service purchasing manager edged up to 50.4 from 50.2, but lower than the estimate of 51. Any reading over 50 indicates expansion over the prior month, while a number below that suggests contraction. Uh, Bank of Japan Governor Kazeo Ueda will continue to dismantle the central bank's ultra-easy monetary policy settings and look to exit the decade-long accommodative regime sometime next year, an inherently risky plan that would require skillful execution, says Reuters. Uh, Anthony Blinken arrived at Tel Aviv and meets with Netanyahu after Israel ruled out a ceasefire. Israel ground operations in Gaza continued alongside intense bombardment overnight. Death toll rises to 9,000. The UN said that's crazy. Israel stepped up strikes against Iran-backed mil militias in Syria and have moved closer to Israel Israeli border. The world's largest asset manager sees benchmark U.S. borrowing costs hovering around 5% for the next five years as investors grapple with inflationary pressures. Ten-year yields are 4.7, but Gene Bovin, head of BlackRock Invest Investment Institute, former deputy of Bank of Canada, said markets were heading for much higher long-term borrowing costs. That would come from aging populations, fractious geopoliticals, and costs associated with the energy transition. Uh, the UAW is ready to take on Elon and Tesla, President Sean Fain said. Stellantis's tentative deal to end the strike includes $19 billion in U.S. investment. Janet Yellen pushed back against uh, Stanley Druckenmiller by saying she disagreed. Uh, Mars tumbles in the Eurozone as management sees 23 towards the low end of guidance and warns buybacks could be curtailed given worsening industry fundamentals. FTX founder Sam Bankman was convicted on Thursday of stealing billions of dollars. And then Apple service beat, but China miss. And then uh, just to give you another one. October payrolls report suggests a return to the labor market easing after September blowout numbers. Headline October non-farm payrolls printed 150 below consensus for 180 in September's downwardly revised 297. It was 336 before that. August also revised down to 62 from 165. Release noted some drag on manufacturing and strike activity, but reported solid gains in healthcare and unemployment. Unemployment rate ticked up to 3.9 in September uh, against the September 3.8, which was also the consensus. Labor force participation moved down. Uh, average hourly earnings were up by 0.2, but in level with the previous month, but lower than forecast to 0.3. September's blowout employment number now may not invalidate, though, broader trend of labor market easing. Easing. So we will see. Yeah, non-farms risk on contrarian buy signal from Bank of America. Treasury inflows continue. Big money market inflows. Fourth straight week of equity outflows. So multiple firms uh, out with some highlights from the latest EPFR data ending November 1st. Global bonds saw inflows for a fourth straight week, totaling $4.5 billion. Treasuries and outsized beneficiaries attracted 6.8 for the 38th straight week of inflows. Bulk of the inflows went to shorter duration plays. Some of the recent thoughts of the rate reprieve may not come without capitulation. Uh, and then also they flagged uh, meaningful CTA shorts. Money market funds saw inflows of more than $60 billion and are running over $1 trillion on a year-to-date basis. Massive money market funds inflow spurn in both directions, supported of Tara and Tina Dynamics, but also thoughts of cash find its way back to equities with the end of tightening cycle and rebound in earnings. Global equity outflows totaled $3.4 billion, marking a fourth straight weekly loss of outflows, and U.S. equities saw inflows of $550 million, attracting funds for a third straight week. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, God bless you, lucky soldier. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. What's up, T. Grider? How you living? Good morning. So, Chad, Chadadonia. <laughs> Chadadonia. We've gone through all of the news now. Now it is time for the play. You got Hezbollah leader. He says, Alcosa to flood battle has extended to more than one front. Hezbollah chief Nasrallah says, if we want to search for a battle with complete legitimacy, then there's no battle like the fight with the Zionists. So, again, they're spurring it up. Hezbollah. I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful for you too, man. I hope y'all keep showing love. I hope y'all stay in the game. Show love to all your other chats. You know what I'm saying? And let's have a good day. And it's already uh it's already wild. We're gonna have seven more hours of this. 
We're going to have seven more hours of this. But Chattadonia, let's get into the pre-market movers. Again, we have so much time. So much time. We're ahead of the curve right now. But Square, again, up 16.3 on earnings. Uh, pretty much, if I don't say earnings, assume that it's up for earnings. Okay, Expedia up 10.4, LYV up 5.2, MNST up 4.9, uh, IT up 4.9, Celsius up 4.8, 3 for 1 stock split, DraftKings up 4.6, IT up 3.7, NEO up 3.0, reportedly planning to lay off 10% of employees and do a spinoff. Uh, WBD up 2.1 off of nothing. APTV up 1.7 off of a Piper Sandler upgrade. Micron 1.7 off of nothing. Doc N up 23.4. Ud Udemy up 9.1 for solar or FLR. Uh, up 6.5 off of earnings. MOR up 5.7 off of nothing. IEP 5.2. Para up 4.6. Joby up 3.8 off of nothing. SHEN up 3.6. MCW up 3.2. Pack B up 3.1 off of nothing. MODG up 3.1 off of nothing. CFLT up 2.6. Guggenheim Securities upgrade. OMCL up 2.3. Wells Fargo. Farger, Piper Sandler upgrades and BTIG downgrade. Manu up 1.8. Jim Ratcliffe to commit his own money as part of a deal to acquire 25% stake. Uh, Howell up 39.1. Preliminary monotherapy data. NVOS uh, up 25.8. Novo integrated tweets news is imminent. Uh, FUBU up 15%, DMTK 14.3, CVRX 14.0, CMS increases outpatient payment for borrow stim procedure, uh, GBBK up 10 off of nothing, IOAC up 10.5, shareholders approve one month extension, Trupanian up 10.4, uh, IPHI up 9.9, .9. new clinical data of Lacatinamab of SARA 4.43579. Uh, Hippo up 9.6 off of earnings. LILM uh, up 8.1 off of nothing. PRLB up 6.1 earnings. NBTX 5.4 off of nothing. BHR up 4.6 finalized extension for two existing mortgage loans. Uh, Redfin 4.5. Bali 4.2. Sinclair makes $850 million offer in partnership with Bali's to repurchase bankrupt debt Diamond Sports. Uh, CMBM up 2.5. Fortinet down 19.9. Team down 9.2. SYK down 4.8, net down 4.3, SWKS down 4.3, booking down 3.5, MCHP down 3, MOS down 2.6 off nothing, PAGGP or PAGP down 2.4 off of nothing, Palo Alto down 2.4, Fortnite Sympathy, Apple down 2.1, Intuit down 2.1, Bill Sympathy, and Zscaler down 1.8 on uh, Fortinet Sympathy again, Bill BILL down 31 earnings, uh, Fox F down 17.6, AGL down 15.5, FND down 14.5, BLMN down 6.7, Carvana down 5.9, ABCL down 5.6, and Boot down 5.2. All of those were because of earnings. Uh, INSG down 23%, WW down 9, ONCY down 8.9, STEM down 8.8, .8, EAF down 7.1, and then CLLS down 6.6 .6 to present preliminary results. And then crypto plays are all trading lower. Womp, womp, womp. So Chattadonia, I don't know. I, I I drink a lot of water. I don't really need to go to the bathroom, but I do. You got Mohammed El Arian on. Let me see. I think I might. Yeah, I'm gonna finish the rest of it. I guess. We'll see, baby. So I'll be right back. Follow me on Instagram. We got. We got. We're so early. I just don't know what to do. We we've, we've smashed. Everything was kind of easy today. Again, you got your numbers. And there was no confusion. We'll see the market. The bonds are up. The data all across the board. So. We will see, but if you got plays and questions, and, and, and I will be right back. Hiking rates very aggressively. Or oh, this year, when markets had to recognize that rates were going to stay higher for longer. I think the Fed actually and other central banks are going to be less of an influence. And when we look to next year, we're going to be talking about who's buying U.S. Treasuries. We're going to be spending a lot of time looking at auctions. Um, it's going to be a different narrative. I must tell you, this is a really hard market also to figure out the technicals. For example, and Rick is better placed. If you're an investor in high yield, in 48 hours, you've seen 60 to 70 basis points of carry disappear from whatever you were going to buy. Forget about a week. In 48 hours, John, we have seen a massive spread compression. And we've seen, in addition, what's happening 
to Treasury. So when the yields move this, this much, it's not clear to me whether you attract more buyers or whether people stay on the sideline just wanting this volatility to go down. And, and there's no one better than Rick to give us a sense for how the technicals are going to play out. Rick, the floor is yours. So can I just go ahead with what Mama said? Next week, we're going to get Treasury supply of $500 billion. <laughs> Next week, we're going to get, I mean, I'll just reiterate, that's, by the way, that's 40, gross supply. That's 40% higher. This week is 40% higher than this week last year. The number's staggering. The amount of bills we're going to, we're going to get Treasury refunding next week. Let's take the other side of it, the technicals. The, uh, in, the, uh, in the high yield market, the, whole, the high yield market's a trillion and a half dollar market, but we're getting 500 billion of treasuries next week. The whole high yield market's a trillion and a half, and the, uh, and the, the issuance level is light to say the least. I've never seen a more technically driven market. By the way, the equity market, part of why the technicals there are so well supported. This year, I think it's 800 billion of authorized buyback. There's 19 billion of IPOs. So you have <laughs> buying, no selling, and the Treasury is issuing immense amounts of debt. So, I mean, in my career, I don't recall a more technically driven market than we're seeing today. And it's part of why some of these markets, single names are so shallow. Uh, the depth of these markets is atrocious. It's because it's an incredibly technical market in, in, in almost all forms today. Rick, when you say the depth of this market is atrocious, are you also talking about the Treasury market? And how much of a change is that? <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the depth of the Treasury market generally is pretty good. It moves around with, and, and uh, I think Bob had said it, the auctions that we're going to get, we're just going to be continued focus on can we keep pumping this much debt into the system on the, on the risk-free rate, and that will be how you interpolate every other asset class. Is, that's, a, that's a tremendous amount. The depth, generally, the Treasury market's pretty good. It's not as good as it normally is because people are uncertain about whether it's geopolitics, whether it's these big rate moves. The depth of single-name equities, the depth of some of the some of the risk markets generally are, uh, are pretty thin. And, you know, a lot of that is geopolitical risk that people don't want to get in the way of it. And a lot of it is just people sitting on their hands for a while. You know, he, by the way, here to four, sitting in, sitting in money market funds and clipping five plus percent or bills and getting 560 has been an attractive way to play it. So that's why part of why you've got shallow depth in a lot of other. So nice. So nice. Chattadonia. Bro, I just looked at it. I can't believe TLT is up almost 2% today. So the bonds, again, everybody is talking about how much things have already ran. Again, we're about to go below 4.5. So, again, everything we were talking about, fall below the peaks. It's beautiful. Now, wait, why does it not show? There you go. That's it, Chad. You're below now even the other little BS rally from October. This is what we kind of needed to see. But, again, now we go to 4.5 to 4.25. This is going to be the next range. I think that's stable, stay more stable. But we'll see how it plays out. If it goes even lower, maybe the narrative starts to change after that. But this is very, very big so far. Again, TLT market's going. You got the Hezbollah leader making some statements right now. He's saying he's thanking everybody, fighting for him. It's, this is like a weird speech. But at the end of the day, Chattadonia, we got eight minutes till the bell now. What a day already. Are you ready for seven hours of this, Chad? Are you ready? I want to see your plays. Show me what... I don't have that many plays. Again, I'm writing everything. A lot of plays have now came back to green. Uh, even my damn bond plays, which is wicked now. So we're going to have a good time here, hopefully. But, Chad, you heard everybody on the news. You heard the analysts. They've been fighting for bullishness. The analysts have been shoving bullishness down your throat lately. But, again, you see it now with all the data and Powell. What's the first play of the day? HD calls, Google calls, long euro cash, short FTM, bill down 26, Apple call, the Ron bill, Google calls, K calls, Palantir, November 20 call, hold in NVIDIA, Pepsi call for the long term, Apple shares, Airbnb swing, UUU, Bank of America, take profits off TLT, Tesla calls, hold in VIX, looking for Carvana, Apple calls, sitting on cash, cutting green plays, adding some TLT, silver, TQQ, lunar for the long term, Apple calls, 355, Microsoft, spy calls, grabbing QRTEA, long euro, meta calls, sell TLT, Met Tesla calls, MO calls, Tesla ready, spy calls, month of gold, Josh calls, C-E-L-H calls. They're doing a split. M-P-W, I-R-M, N-C-L-H, wait and watch. U-E-C, baby, have Apple put Palantir, Elf, Elf calls, NVIDIA calls, Spy calls, DraftKings calls, Long Jets, Ford, K-R-B-N, Celsius, T-Q-Q, Leaps, Sell Spy, A-I calls, Closing T-X-N, Roblox calls, T-Q-Q, U-Pro, Soxel, Rope calls, A-M-L-X for the long term, holding the clapped N-Q short, PayPal, riding E-S to 44, A-M-D puts, Tesla calls, day drinking, more chewy, HubSpot, payroll, waiting now, NVIDIA, A-N-F puts, chilling, sitting on my hand calls, 
Cause, QQQ, Long America, Spy Call on Hold, UBS, MS, Calls on Peach, IWM Calls for the Hold, Fortinet, Dead Cat, Bounce at 47, 200 IWM, IEF, 324, 104 Call, and Buying the Draft King Dip, Morgan Stanley, Overstock Shares, the final plays. TLT calls, ADP, short TLT, cold calls, and Pinterest puts. Wow. Wow, good morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. So my plays are simple. DraftKings, Square, PayPal, Cart, Team, and then anything else that we were in. I might be down to flip some of the futures in bonds today. Uh, they're already up quite a decent amount. I mean, literally, even if you played the first candle, I mean, it was kind of hard to get in. Maybe we get one of those early sell-offs, but again, we're going to have a lot of movement here, I think, today. We got a lot of info. Things are going to start setting the sales, I believe, but, you know, we should be able to make some moves. I don't know what oil did today, but that might be able to come up. Oh, I forgot. You have all those other ones. I got a couple of other things moving up here. Mm-hmm. Maybe Hezbollah comment. Could be they said the battle is completely Palestinian for Palestinian people, has no relation to regional issues. They said secrecy of this operation does not upset anybody in the resistance. And this decision to launch operations was 100% Palestine. But And then he praised everybody else. The ARC idea. The ARC idea is something we've talked about and we've, we've had experience with it because the ARC play... At any time people get sensitive about interest rates, it has moved. So that's why I like it. Any of the little pops here on bonds, anything, you know, ARC has benefited. So we got a little bit of time. The play's already up. So we'll see how it goes. But that should be another winner here today. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's talk about the real winners. The real winners. Because here at the Colt, before we do anything... Before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a very special group of people that has sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will. And I am talking about the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, I want to give a huge special shout out all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country for real. God bless you and thank you for your sacrifice. Even your families made a sacrifice as well. And the journey, man, just for real. God bless you. Like I said, you know, the real winners, because a lot of us have benefited off of the freedom and sacrifice and blood of the people before us without knowing it, man. So honestly, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for all of you who have made that commitment to your country and the people that you have not even met. So I salute you. I don't even have the right to because I did not serve like some of you have. So thank you. God bless you all. Big shout out to the vets and big shout out to anybody else out there giving back to their local communities. All the doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, the coaches, the police officers, anybody giving back, helping things run, baby. God bless you. I hope you know you appreciate it as well, too. But ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Send the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Horna. <laughs> oh, let's go, baby. It's game time. Happy Friday. Happy non-farms. Happy Powell. Happy Apple earnings. You've gone through every event, and now we get the opening bell. Oh, my goodness, Chattadonia. So bonds, literally 2% on TLT pre-market. NASDAQ uh, SPY looks to be about like 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. We have data 30 minutes after the bell. And that's going to be it, Chad. And shout out to the vets, baby. So we got a minute and 30. Drop that thumbs up on the video, Chad. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any questions, though, uh, we, we still got a little bit of time. So again, hopefully you've been following along with 
the narrative after today's data. Uh, again, people are, are feeling more like Powell is not going to raise. You have your bond market actually stabilizing. Like I told you, I'm very, very paranoid, but we finally have gone past one of the previous highs here. So if we could hold up and kind of base out here, this is all looking like a good sign for now. Again, you've already heard a lot of bullishness today. So all you got to do is just be mindful of how it moves. But and assuming nothing changes or gets worse from here, uh, we should be having a good day. We should, you know, inshallah, inshallah, God willing. So less than 50 seconds, Chad. Call out any plays if you have them. If you have anything else, you let me know. Is there a level for today? Let me see where the SPX opens up, but, I mean, it's going to be around, like, the, the high 4,300s or mid 4,300s, I believe. So we just got to make up a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the uh, losses that we've had. So we're probably going to be around here. I'd say like in between here, pro trying to get to 4,400 today. So the question will be if we break 4,400 today and, and how much higher we go from there. PMI is 30 minutes after the bell. The ISM, or it's ISM services. Mm -mm. Is it ISM or is it PMI? I got I to gotta double check, but it's one of those. Either way, it's related to services. And again, data has had the ability to move us. But three, two, one. Round one, fight. All righty. So TLT's already going up there again. I want to see some of those other plays like cart. That's the, I'm hoping that this after today it has the juice to get above. That would be good. Again, Tesla, a lot of you guys were active on that. Don't forget about the earnings. Square, DraftKings. Square was up 26%, I think. So honestly, is this lower? Yeah, Square had another extra dollar or two in there, but be careful with that one. We talked about watching PayPal, too. That could be another one. Protect yourself. All right, let's see where we're at levels-wise. Again, NASDAQ uh, up 0.4, SPY 0.5. Yeah, 43.41. So exactly right here at this level. Let's pull it out a little bit. So you're a little bit lower. Uh, again, so next level right now is either 43.26 to the downside, but 43.58 is uh, where we should be going. Maybe 43.49. 4349 and then 4358 if you could break above those you're going to get close to uh 4400 again dollar down by 0.7 uh PayPal's actually starting to move that one could be interesting Oh, does that work? Disney above 85. Again, I'm still holding a lot of other plays, but I'm trying to see if we could hit something here. Again, the PayPal... Either the PayPal or the uh, Square, but Square's up a lot. That's the only issue there. And then uh, UUP still down. Again, watch the SPY levels. Uh, maybe I got to stream alert these. So again, 43, 43.49 and then 43.57, 43.58. All right, you're at the level. This is going to be our first little baby level. No, 40. What which price is it? Yeah, 43.48 and then 43.57. Let's go. All righty. PayPal on the high. I'm thinking shares, but maybe we'll just wait a little bit. If that doesn't come down, though, that'll suck. Again, UUP's holding up. Where's our DraftKings? And then check financials too. Financials and real estate stuff. Again, uh, real estate's already up two and a half. Where's MP Dubs? Yeah, they're even going up there. That one's going to be interesting. Let's 
Roku's on the way up. I forgot about that one from yesterday. And then where's the big tech? Netflix a little bit down. They're not moving as much. Microsoft. Yeah, dude, again, once again, big tech is not moving as much. Amazon's doing a lot better there. Apple, I guess Apple is still down, but keep that in mind. You know, the equal weight is what's running a lot crazier. Why is Redfin up 20? Again, their earnings were, again, once again, it wasn't a good earnings, but they just always rock it off of it. Kind of mind boggling. Yeah, Redfin is holding up. Square came down a little bit. PayPal's still actually holding. Interesting to see which one is going to be the winner there. JD, Baba, China Play is not doing too hot. I feel like they could, they're still up 2%, but they could do a lot more. Bank of America, Green. Financial, again, financials, bonds. TLT still up and holding 2%. And then NASDAQ, 0.58, SPY, 0.54. They're holding up decent for now. IRM rocketing. There's prayers and hymns to 4,600. Oh, I forgot. Elf. Again, that bond play came back to life, which is good. And then Tesla's going through the low here. So, again, the bigger tech, I mean, I feel like it's been an interesting dynamic. We're still holding up uh, the earlier gains here from the morning. But, I mean, you're 43.43, still holding in here. But equal weight is up 1.3. So, that is everything else right now. Tech is moving the market a little bit weird. But, again, that equal weight, you're getting just way more moves in, like, little random names more than not. Open 12 and a half. Oh, where's the other one? Uh, Celsius. I forgot they announced the split. They're up 2.4. Wasn't somebody pumping them up yesterday too? Mm. Uber reports soon. Yes. That would be a big one. Uh, Celsius is interesting. Hezbollah leader battle established new historical phase with Israel. Says Hamas decision was right, wise, and courageous. Came in the right time. Jeez. NVIDIA. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, NVIDIA's up 1.8 now. You're still holding up at the high. Again, equal weight's doing better. Your big tech isn't playing along in the same way, but generally speaking, you're doing a little better. PayPal trying to come up here again. Square, DraftKings. DraftKings still holding up 7. That's good. Oh, where's the other one? Team? Yeah, Atlassian down 7.8. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's the little names that are moving more. Again, they got crushed, but... You're definite, the equal weight index is literally up 1.5% right now almost. So you're getting almost double the move there. Airbnb on the high. Oh, I forgot about booking in Expedia. Interesting. Well, Expedia is up 15, so hopefully uh, Airbnb gets a little bit more of that. Yeah, nice rebound for now. I'll take it. I'll take it. Watch the bonds, too. Again, TLT, I'm still shocked it was holding up that 2%. It was just about to hit a high and then calm down. Again, equal weight just popped up another 15th of a percent. So, again, 43, 47. Again, 43, 48, 49. And then the 50 level. But you're right. You're hugging a level right here right now. Marisk in the buy zone. UK rate futures fully Price 225 cuts now by November 24. Dang, we're even affecting European odds. That's insane. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Oh, the arc play, that one's up 100% now too. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, where's cart? Tesla off the bottom. Yeah, cart now breaking out. So there you go. I'm going green on cart now too. And then TLT's going a little lower though. We're still holding banks. Still see a lot of banks on the high. XLF, City, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Financial plays are really, really running right here. Yeah, all of them. Even regionals took a little candle up there. Bonds all day. So Microsoft, big tech going down. Again, high, low ticker. A lot of other names on the high. And then financials, I think all financials alike are kind of ripping there, more or less. Uh, where is it? PayPal. No, they came down.
NVTS fell premium later. Uh, AMD on the low. Visa on the low. Palantir on the high. Spy still holding up. Bonds holding up tremendously. This is just their low of the day. Fortinet on the night on the high. FTNT. Remember, they were clapped. They're still down 17. Disney is 84 bucks actually. Not too bad. Remember, you want to get to like 87. Netflix coming up, 428. Mm -mm. Well, the candles aren't showing on the big tech. And then Spy's just literally one point uh, below the next level. Again, 448 like we talked about. You're like two to three points. Just depends on the candle. Holy red fin. Is that still moving? 21. Still not bad. It looks to be within the range still, though. Am I thinking about selling ARC? Uh, just, we talked about this a lot every day, uh, and I'd watch yesterday's watch list. NVIDIA is on the low. <clears throat> Cold on the high. Where's oil? And you guys were talking about that earlier. Uh, oil got molly wop <clears throat> down 0.91. TXN at 150. All right. Still holding up. Again, just there's so much moving right now. It's like, you know, the names you want to watch, they're not doing much, or maybe they're holding a gap up or gap down. But, like, dude, look at the high-low ticker. There is just hundreds, thousands of names that are moving crazy right now. Mm -hmm. Oil's real. Apple's coming down here again. I think DraftKings. Oh, where's the other one? Shop. Shop and Coinbase. Shop starting to come back up. Shop barely moved, actually. Yeah, wait. Wasn't Shop supposed to be up a lot? Oh, I guess that was from the other morning. Everyone piling into equities. There's a lot or a lot of short covering, but, you know, at the end of the day, too, though, we want to make sure people keep coming into bonds. That's what everybody keeps talking about because, you know, this relief is great. It looks like we're getting some, but just don't forget over the next weeks, you know, there's going to be a lot of bond supply that we will literally have to deal with, not just hear about it, but will actually be hitting the market. So Tesla with a candle, a couple of the other big tech, Shopify breaking out. We just had that one up there right now. PayPal, Square, Intel, chips aren't doing too bad, I guess. And then Elf still clapped, unfortunately, on that one. And then Cart. We are now in the green on Cart, finally. Good for you, Cart. Good for you. PMI in four minutes. And we're right at the level. So, yeah, get ready. ISM services, PMI. No, you got 20 minutes. The S&P one, that's not the main one. So, in... uh. In five, four minutes, you have S&P PMI, but ISM service PMI at seven. That's the one that we want. Mm -hmm. Hope you have a blessed weekend, man. You too, bro. You too. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. All right, 10-year or, or 30 years starting to move up now. This is where it gets interesting. All right, at the 50-day. There, Spy's breaking out ahead of it. So there you go. You have data on the way, but Spy wanted to move through the level. 43.50 now. This Again, 43.48. It's a baby level. I don't have it written up here. Uh, but then 43.58 is the next level. If we break that, we're going to be looking at like 43, 43.74 to 43.81, then 43.89, and then 44.00. But 43.74, I'd say that's a pretty big level. That is that remaining gap fill that we need to get to. So SPY, bonds, again, Instacar, uh, almost everything now. Again, besides your bigger tech, is it just it's not as active. Don't forget, Apple is down 1% right now, but you just have a different reaction from everybody. Shop. Mm. 
Mountain play Magnificent Seven. They're doing good without it. It's almost been 15 minutes. We'll see the breakdown. But again, uh, you got data coming out here literally in a minute and 15. So S&P Global Composite PMI expected to be 50.2 and then services 50.1. Or excuse me, 51 and then 50.9. So we'll, I don't know if it'll move us too much, but then again, the market will like any soft data. And then the next thing is, you know, again, where we go from there uh, after with the uh, ISM services, that, that could be a big one. But you're already running up here again. The squeeze is still remaining. You didn't really even get a pullback. You just had hold the high looking scary. That's it. Bond's new high of the day now on the 30 year. So that rally is continuing. Uh, more ISM is laid. This is S and P PMIs. That's what's coming out here in about thirty seconds. Mm -mm. Light for it again. I don't even know if the data is good. I wonder what the bonds will do. Because again, the wild part is they're already up. Five, four, three, two, one. Where are we at? ISM 50.6. Estimate was 50.9. Slightly softer. So again, 50.6 and then 50.7. They both came in lower on services and then final. So it's softer. Again, that data is not as important, but at the very least, you know, just nothing to get in your way. So now punt till 30 more minutes here or 15 more minutes, that's the real, that's the final one. And then after that, I think the day is over. You're just going to play within the range and then the options and, and everything else after that. Mm -hmm. All right, we're working our way up. NVIDIA, Tesla, again, Shopify's at the high. A lot of other names are moving too. How'd you go long on bonds? I already am. So I took a long on the bonds before the carnage happened. So I got in on this first peak, not thinking we were going to die. So now I'm back up on it uh, again, or I guess uh, like right at break even, but it's a pretty expensive price. I think it's a good spot as well as a bad spot. I don't want to hold it for too long, but I do want to ride it for a little bit, if that makes any sense. So it's just, but at the same time, it's still precarious. But like, I mean, read the room. People are getting excited about it now, but again, we still have some challenges. No, Redfin was nothing else. Redfin was literally just the uh what's it called? Redfin was just their earnings. Those art calls are are going insane too. That's a again, arc another three after ten yesterday, but those now you have a hundred percent on those. Bottom after the first rate cut? Uh not necessarily. Uh it just depends. Usually people I don't like the first rate cut. Uh, I think the market will go down, but some people do say sell the first, uh, you know, right when we're done raising and then buy the first rate cut a rate hike. Mm -mm. All right. A lot of things are moving here. Again, even that cart, I man, I'd love low rates for this thing to move up again. Spy still climbing. Uh, latest data was not too important, but didn't move us too much. You're right below the level now. 43.54, 43.58. That was the next one. And then again, what was it? 43.74, 43.73, then 43.88. Those are your next two to the upside. Next daily high. Woo. All right, four, three, five. So you're right there. You're getting into it. Again, I'm already putting out the other level. Microsoft woke up. Hold on. You were telling the big seven to get involved in this. Yeah, Amazon now. Take a look at what's happening. Amazon, Apple went up another half a percent. So all these big companies are starting to get a little bit of that move right there. 
And then money markets fully price in 50 basis points of cuts for ECB by July. I don't know. This is like good and bad, but like if you guys don't realize what's happening right now, like even around the world, they're pricing in less rate cuts right now. That's honestly phenomenal. And it's all said and done. Tessie Vertical. Disney on the high. Yeah, Tesla was, Tesla was actually moving a lot better than any of them. It's good to see the other tech names run up because like I was telling you earlier, this wasn't anything. This was just a lot of the names that got de demolished. Uh, again, it was just massive on the equal way, but your big tech names weren't playing along. So you're right below the level. NASDAQ's up one now, SPY 0.9, Dow 0.5, and then Russell uh, 2.5 once again. And then right below the levels, KRE, they came a little bit off the bottom. Real estate stocks are still killing it. Mm -hmm. And then XLF, the banks, yeah. My goodness. Mm. Oh, I'm a business. And Michael Saxton been kicking it since April 2018. God bless both of you, man. And I'm all hard. Every day. Every day, baby. Every day. Yeah, Overstock, I just saw that one flash across the high. I think they're, again, remember, they had all of that uh, activist shit. I think they're getting above that range. Yeah. So, again, this was the last. Honestly, it's actually quite interesting. They're right below that level. And then, again, you have data in 10 minutes. Mm -mm. Meta's the worst. I think Microsoft was until it just woke up. Microsoft's only up half a percent. It was down like it was. I think it was in the red, or it was only up like point two, and then it just whoop. Mm -mm. Tesla on the way up, and then Spy still holding that candle again. The dynamic you have between equal weight. And you're going to get a weird push and pulls. It's going to be the squeeze mode like yesterday, unless the ISM is bad. But just keep in mind, your equal weight is rocketing. So everything is taking turns. So, like, you see, this is going down. There's another 500 names running up right here. So you're going to get this back and forth. That's actually quite fast. Do you see that? Oh, that's the socks. But 4357, it's still equal weight is up way, way more right now. DraftKings Pop. I was looking at that earlier. DraftKings Square PayPal. Just in case any of those got wild. DraftKings. Yeah, they want to go square at the bottom. PayPal's starting to move up a little bit too, actually. Mm -mm. Where's BNB? Yeah, that BNB has climbed. Myrna. Mm -hmm. Myrna was down yesterday. Where's Pfizer? I mean, Pfizer's getting some love, 2% actually. Bond's coming down though, so hold on. Very interesting. So data comes out, was weaker. Markets went up, but why is TLT even dropping? That's interesting. So maybe that's a little bit of the supply. Pfizer is coming into the high. Bro, bonds are dumping right here. This is getting interesting. So, again, market's still holding up. You're kind of loving it, but at the same time, you're getting quite unique around here. Airbnb. Tesla, huge pop. 
Uh, bought and do TLT's hit in the low of the day. This one's getting very interesting. How that plays out could say a lot. Yeah, a lot of things hit the high there. A Tesla's calming down. All right, not too bad. Not too bad. The bonds, they gave up that 2%, but like I'm, it, any at any turn, I'm going to be paranoid with the bonds until we actually, you have to actually maintain a lot of this. That is the crazy part about all of it. Well, there's Tesla still. Uh, where's Cart? Cart's still running up now, so I think we almost have a dollar on Cart. That was awesome. I'm still going to be riding that out for a little bit. Again, I... I want to get into the higher end, maybe to like 30. Non-farms already happened. They were good. Oh, yeah, net. Yeah, net. Oh, my what? So net found a way to flip? My goodness. And then Atlassian and team is trying to go up. That was the one that died. Banks are doing another round two there at the high. So, again, all those financial plays, anything real estate, extremely risk-sensitive, a rate sensitive is moving. UAL. I forgot we still have that one. Mm -mm. mm. Non-farms was good. Yes. The number came in lower, but it was good for the market. Again, I mean, we rallied and we're still holding up after four or five days. Again, the non-farms was actually excellent for what the market wanted to see after the last couple days. And now we're at 43.58. So here is the level, Chad. So above here now, it's like 43.73, I think, or 43.74. You got a little bit of upside. You may like dance around here, even like 43.71. But remember, this was a very, very big deal. Then if you break there, you go to 43.87. And then welcome to 4,400 once again. But we had a lot of resistance last time at this point. But you are still climbing up. UAL, that one's still going higher. Mm -mm. The bond auction, they're, they're done for now. Next week, though, you're just going to get the actual bond supply hitting. Mm -mm. UAL coming up. We got Netflix. What a nice guy. Let's see about Fought that T, my friend. Data four minutes and barking appearance. Yeah. ISM services will be key. Bro, the bonds are... Uh, this is weird. I didn't think the biggest bond move intraday would be off of the, the smaller data, but definitely watch out. Apple's going green right now. What the hell? Apple's only down 0.75. Apple is literally about to recover. Pfizer keeps going up here too. What in the hell? Yeah, Apple's starting to move up there. Again, bonds are the only interesting thing for now besides it's either squeeze until bonds change. But again, generally speaking, you have more squeeze sentiment than not. And then we'll watch what happens here on the data. You got about two, three minutes. Dollar still down well below 29.81. That number should mean something to you. Mm. Square, PayPal's chilling. Crocs on the high. Oh, yeah, we're Celsius. That one ended up coming up here, too. Yeah, Disney earnings next week. They got the run, too. They got the real big rally for now. Mm. Oh, where's Eli and NVO? They ain't doing anything today. Let's check the market composition. The Hezbollah, yeah, I saw those two. I don't know if, again, the market just, I don't think it's going to be a market reaction unless something, you know, very terrible happens or it turns into like an oil thing. But, you know, even, the, again, even Powell holds the same view. That, that just blew my mind. The yen is chilling. It was up a little bit. Again, Jap Japan has, all, actually, no, the yen rallied. Whoa, I, I was only looking at it pre-market. The yen went crazy off of the, uh, off of the non-farms. But Japan is closed today for a holiday. I 
Outlook, why is Outlook up? <laughs> they just got the bad news yesterday. As somebody, you guys said that people upgraded them, but if that's the case, shit. I'm down, I guess. I'm down. Well, I'm down on the stock too, but. Uh -huh. AMD new high, even cart too. That one's getting exciting. AM Dizzle. And then Spy Holden. All right, one minute. So numbers you're expecting. Uh, ISM services, 53.7. That's the expectation number. Then employment, 53.5. And then 59 on business activity. And then prices, 58 and a half. So again, there's a lot of metrics to look at that could get us moving. Mm-mm. -mm. Okay, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Burp. And we're off. ISM services, 51.8. Uh, again, came in weaker. Employment came in weaker. Activity came in weaker. New orders came in higher. That's honestly kind of good. And then prices paid went up by a little bit, by 0 0.1. That's the weird spot. But new orders, honestly, it's this is a it's a perfect report because then you had everything show slight weakness and then a, a little bit of strength in new orders and then prices maintain. But that was a that a, I'm not going to tell you Goldilocks, but that was a, that was a good uh, good set of data. Netflix explores streaming live boxing match. Oh, and then Spies rocketing again. This is at the level. See if Netflix gets a news reaction. It's been a minute since they have. But yeah, you just rocketed up five points, came back down, but you are above the level. It's good news for now. But again, I mean, the market and bonds, it's you're you're getting a little bit of a uh, like resistance in a weird way. But that was that was a good report for the most part. Very in dude, you had a six point pop and then everything just came right back down. Very, very interesting. Mm. The bonds don't want to believe it. No, they're going. This could be the supply. Maybe I bet you it's Jerome Powell. I bet you there if he's getting mad, if he don't want, I bet you it's the Fed trading desk and they just dumping. They just finding a way to make the because otherwise that makes no sense for now. The only thing that would make sense is that you were already up 2% and the bonds just went up way, way more. So the borderline, this was already priced into the bonds. And what I mean by that is like you already had a, a fat rally here in the morning. Mm-mm. Watch the yen too. That's moving again. You even got the dollar. That's something to keep in mind also. Yeah, dollars too. Dollar went even. Dude, the dollar flushed another 10 cents on that candle. It's very wild. So watch. Maybe we'll get out of this little gulag. It looks like equities want to do their thing. I don't know why we're the dollar and bonds are moving opposite on that data, but... It was good, but equities are kind of doing their own thing. You got Roblo on the high now. And 4364 was the high on the wick, but you're holding the 4360. Bring you to the promised land. Again, Netflix just had news, no real reaction. Card is rallying now, 7%. So we are up on that play. Now you got a little bit of cushion. Uh, hopefully that does the IPO breakout. That would be nice. Uh, where is it? Netflix, I think PayPal and Square too. Raul may be retired for a little bit. He'll still show his face every now and then. Don't don't underestimate it. But again, for now, I mean, I think we've ran out of problems until new problems come up, if that makes any sense. So we'll see. All right, they're talking about it. Let me go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. Good morning, good evening, good night. See you in a little bit.
just confirm basically what ended up happening, that we saw weak job creation on the service side uh, compared with uh, what we've seen in uh, previous months, and that the service economy has slowed. Now, I don't think these are terrible numbers at all. Mm -hmm. It does just suggest a slowdown, which is what the Fed's been looking for. What, what will the Fed make, though, of prices paid in the services sector remaining sticky? 58.6 uh, is a pretty elevated number, Mike. It is, but service industry prices have also been elevated uh, since the pandemic. So it, uh, it does suggest that the prices are sticky at this point, but it doesn't uh, mean that things won't come down. They, uh, they still have more work to do to wring inflation out of the economy. Um, Mike, we were talking, I think you were on with us. Yeah, you, you were. This is an economy that needs hikes or cuts. And based on the stuff that we've gotten today, and from jobs to the services, when they're weaker manufacturing, is this an economy that needs either? Uh, that, that's going to be a debate for the Fed, but I think you're going to find that the, the, most of them will come down on the idea of it needs uh, neither at this point, that what they need is time to keep the interest rates uh, where they are long enough so that they affect people's buying and borrowing decisions, and they don't need to go up a little bit more. I mean, Jamie Dimon said last week it wouldn't make any difference at all to go up another quarter point. Right. And inflation's not significantly rising, so there's no argument for going up more than a quarter point. So I I, predict, I, I think the day will just end up saying um, this is kind of what we expected and we will just sit. We get rid of the higher four and we just keep the longer yep. part. Mike, I appreciate that we spent a lot of time talking about the data and the data, the data matter. Let's, let's be clear about that. But next week we are going to get a deluge of supply. And that is going to ultimately have a massive impact on interest rates that the economy is going to have to absorb. Let's come back to another question we've asked. Who is more important right now, Janet Yellen with her Treasury issuance or Jay Powell with his rate hikes or rate cuts? Uh, well, I think at this point, uh, over the next week, it's definitely going to be Janet Yellen as the symbol for what the market's going to have to digest because the Fed has pulled out uh, of that. So that's good for the bears there a little bit. If you notice... Already, you know, even though today has a lot of good news and people are reacting, you know, we keep talking about what the bonds are going to look like next week. So it's interesting we're holding such a bond rally. Maybe that could make sense why it's given up a little bit, but there still is some of that overhang of what the hell is going to happen. My goodness. So you came down off the date. Again, That all that data was good. Uh, very interesting reaction because any of the data like that so far this week. We were running off it, but then again, we were already up 1%. Bonds are already up 1.7 when that data came out. So it's not as if it's, uh, you know, again, we we already we, we had a lot of juice in the morning to go off of. So a couple of things coming down now, too, are a little bit off of the high. You're still elevated, but remember how yesterday played out. The only difference is it's the morning. We'll see by Euro close, too. Marathon to hold special holder meeting November 10th. Bond shooting up is not what the Fed wants. Exactly. I, and that's why I'm like, maybe this is just Powell in the Fed dumping on it. But it's again, the narrative is already being skeptical of next week, though. Again, you already have people looking ahead for how bond supply is going to uh, play out with everything. UAL's on the high. Netflix came down. Yeah, Expedia. I think that's why Airbnb got the run. It's weird. Booking went down off of good earnings. Expedia, theirs was just good, so they ran up. But you definitely got Airbnb following along a little bit. All right, back at VWAP, and bonds are giving up. So, again, maybe oh, you would. last thing you want is this to be, like, the little baby top on yields. That would suck. Because <laughs> of some of these days, that's, oh, what the hell is happening? Ah. Where is it? Where's the 10 year? So like, you know, I'm telling you here, like you don't want this. We literally just bottomed out at four five. You see what I'm saying? So we went right below the four five. And then now you're getting your little, maybe that was it. Maybe that BlackRock guy was right. It could be purely technical and you're just yields are bouncing right at four five. You know, again, they don't want to really go below that just yet. Uh, but that is, again, if we do, if we don't get below here and hold it, be careful. I mean, we could still kind of be trapped in the range, even though you just broke below. It's still very, very early, but 
just again, you had good data, that reaction. But Bonds have a tremendous amount of cushion. And then again, uh, coming into next week, that's what everyone's going to be talking about. Mm-mm. Pump it up at 4,600. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Again, as of now, data's had a couple reactions, but both data sets after the non-farms, bonds have gone down regardless of uh, what the data has uh, exhibited. Very interesting. Uh, did Apple, remember Apple was about to go green for a little bit, back down to 1.4. I like PayPal, but I thought, I thought Square was going to get more of a move, but we said this because, I mean, how many times have we seen PayPal and Square just sell off the opening move? I feel like that has happened a lot. Mm -hmm. RYAA, Why Airlines, again, that's Ryanair. I saw UAL, Love, Delta, they're all kind of picking up here. Again, Uber still up, Dash from the other day. Overstock came down. What was the other one? Cart. That's still holding. Uh, Hezbollah leader. Further escalation on Lebanese front is a realistic possibility. Mm. Oil was at 79 the other day. Equal equal weight is holding on great. So, again, if any, this could be your tech. I feel like you're falling below the levels more on everything else. Again, equal weight is literally just hugging the high. It's been like that every day. Elf, I don't – Elf, I think it's because they've done good already leading into this. That would be my only explanation. But Estee Lauder recovered and Elf went down. Uh, that's actually mind-blowing. Hmm. And then, oh, MPW, they drop check. That's because of the rates. Actually, no, MPW's in its own little world there. They should be holding up a little better. It's still holding the four, three to five, depending on whichever, you know, those indexes are holding around there. Uh, Netflix, again, remember they had news like five, ten minutes ago on live boxing, but no real reaction to that. Eli Lilly. Well, I'm surprised. Eli Lilly, NVO, they're not moving too much. Since they're earning so far. If we break VWAP, we Rahul. I mean, you could see a little bit of like giving up the rally today. But I mean, I think today is going to end good. Uh, just no no matter way, any way we cut it, it seems like today, you know, when it's all said and done. I mean, everything that could have went wrong this week did not happen. That's all. I mean, we went from fearfulness and selling off. Hey, look at this weekly candle. That's insane. But you know what I'm like? I hope that makes sense to a lot of people. It's just that, you know, we were panicking into this. We were panicking. The markets were absolutely dumping. And then you had this week with all of these things. Everything could have went wrong this week. And all of those potential problems, they just didn't. Again, from Powell to the data to even Apple earnings wasn't that bad. And now your non-farms, you finally got something that, you know, markets have actually liked. Uh, if financials come down, I'd watch out for that. Again, it's the bonds, though. That's the thing. You'll notice that once the bonds start dropping once again, and then like all these financial plays, anything sensitive to them, unfortunately, I mean, that it, it's, it has a, a huge, huge sway on the market. So I, I would keep watching that, and we'll see, unless tech wants to come out and be the star of the show today. But clearly now it's it's the names that were all beaten down. All those equal-weighted names are, are coming back up here today. And then tech is, you know, tech already reported. Yeah, ARC is correlating with bonds. It's, I'm telling you, that's the ghetto bond play. It's up, though. It's up 100% now. So be mindful of the premium. Because, again, whenever the hype dies down, those contracts will get murdered. 
All right, you're back to 43. You're below both levels now. Or actually, no, no, no. You're above the 43, 47. So this is still a baby level that you're holding here at VWAP. End phase. For EV charging. Uh, where'd even Ford and those other guys go? Ford's killing it. Dude, honest, there's so much green on every name that's just not a tech name. Again, UAL, Ford, GM. Those are 3 4% on all of those. My goodness. Again, the big tech just is not moving as much. So your Magnificent 7 is actually slowing you down today. Uh, where's Coinbase? They Coinbase turned red. DraftKings still holding up. Square gave up, what, 10%, 12% from the high. PayPal gave up 1% from the top. A line. A line is ripping right now. About to go to 200. They're literally 199.29. Uh, Redfin's up third. I don't know how Redfin is up like that. Maybe they paid down more debt or something. Because, uh, again, Redfin's guidance was, like, pretty bad, too. I think Redfin guided lower on everything. But then again, the same thing happened to Peloton yesterday. Uh, if you guys... And then they're back down today. Remember, Peloton was down 20 pre-market. Literally, it was down 20, and then it rocketed right back up. And then we're still going down again since data that the market would have found favorable, both little data sets. We top ticked, and then now we are coming down. You're down almost 14, 15 points from the latest high just, uh, what, 15 minutes ago? It's the ten year. I think I think it's the bonds. Just I think we could still hold up, but I think you're getting a little bit of uh just a little gentle reminder that bonds, you know, this was a great rally, but maybe maybe there's more supply. BMX alias. I was trying to figure out how to say your name. Good thing I, I saw the word alias. Oh, and we were playing uh we played a game of two K last night. And we're sitting there chilling in the rec lobby. And then we found a, a team on, on 2K. There was a there was like a like a team, like a clan. I don't do you call it clans anymore? Uh, that's what they used to call it in Halo. But their little tagline was A B and B. I was dying. There was just like three mother effers with just their, their gamer tag was A B and B and then their name. Oh, there you go. Random pop out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken says humanitarian pause was an important area of discussion today with Israeli leaders. Uh, we recognize this will take time to prepare and coordinate. It could be. I don't know. I don't think this is off a headline. Starbucks is up. Don't forget yesterday, Starbucks killed it. So, again, just random pop there, both bonds and equities. BA, Boeing's on the high. Cart looks like it wants to come up again. Airlines are the ones just ripping into the high. So, that Delta play... Dude, literally, we got half of our losses back on, like, today. That's actually insane to think about. So now you're, like, we're recovered back to the earnings mode. We'll, uh, so airline, again, airline and travel doing very, very well. He said my name. I was I was trying. I was like, what the hell is a Maxalias? I was like, I can't say that. And then I saw the alias. So, you know, God is good, bro. God bless you. Thank you for, thank you for joining, man. It could have been Chad's if their clan was A, B, and B. I don't know. It was, it was on 2K. Spy's going uh, up right now. Again, you just hit the level here. I think literally right at 43, 49, or 47. That was, again, one of the first levels. But you bounced right off it back to level two. Again, welcome to squeeze mode. So, unfortunately, if this hits a new high off of this, this is the setup of yesterday. You see what I'm saying? Where it's just like you're going to do these little drops, but then... It doesn't matter. It looks bad when it drops. Watch the bonds, though. If they really go negative, then we'll have a problem. But if you're telling me we're going to go red and then eat up every candle in two minutes, then 
I mean, you have seen this before, literally yesterday. So keep in mind some of the big names, too, and how they play out. Like I said, travel, I think, is uh, kind of a standout right now. Low-key, kind of hard to ignore. And then watch when bonds calm down, see if all of those real estate plays could come up. Again, I think that will be a big deal. Man, you need bonds to chill out. And Netflix. I'm keeping an eye on all of them. I have the 30-year for just like leverage and plays, but realistically the 10-year is the money. Again, and watch the two-year, 10-year curve. But like I'm telling you, this, this, I, I, I hope this chart has guided you. You know, again, we've got to watch this. I've been bringing this up multiple times on the watch list, but like we've been saying, you know, you should be able to see all these. Pe Damn, we can't even see the second peak now. We got it's not even showing us back in time, but. Like I was telling you, you know, this is a problem. This was the problem range. If we go to four five to four two, this is where I, I hope you realize what I'm saying about four five to four two, because it makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying that rates are gonna go back to zero. All I'm saying is that the market can stabilize with rates between four five and four two. Are you guys understanding? That's just a reasonable range versus trying to stabilize at five. So what I'm saying, like four five to five two, you're still like higher than every other point. You're still a point and a half higher, but it's at least better than being five and above. And then you know, again, no ceilings. <laughs> but I would say the ten year is probably the most important chart uh, that you could be watching. Everybody argues about this too, so you know it's not like what I'm saying is is you know for pure fact, but it is a preference. Uh, but I, I do think it highlights a lot. Hezbollah, all possibilities on Lebanon, Israel front are open. Yeah, he said we're ready for all possibilities. That one's old. Yeah, he says further escalation on Lebanese front is realistic possibility. Fed Barkin, contacts been saying jobs market normalizing. The labor market's in a better place. Is he on CNBC? So now you got Fed barking. Is this 25? Yeah. I do think uh, the notion of expectations matters a ton. And uh, if you're going to not respond to inflation when it shows elevated, I think expectations will respond to that. And so um, I'm not sure 25 basis points in the end is the answer to all the world's problems. But I do think if you're going to take care of inflation, you've got to respond if it shows up. You want inflation to be over. When, how will you know when to declare victory? So we're at, what, almost 4 percent on core inflation. You want it to be at 2 percent. You're not going to wait all the way till it goes down to 2 percent until you until you say you're done, right? Well, I'm focused very much at this point of trying to understand the behaviors of price setters. And um, if you go back to 20, 30 years, uh, price setters have been beaten up by the combination of e-commerce, globalization, uh, uh, access to new supply, um, and the power of big box retailers. And if you go to 2018, 2019, you talk to those folks, you found people who really weren't into raising prices, running. didn't think they had the power to. Again, Netflix, 432 now. now. And there are some Not 432, 430. Step back and said, okay, but if they get a hold there, that's a good level. Of this. Apparel would be a good example of that. But I still do talk to price setters who are looking to get more price. Um, look at the big consumer products manufacturers. They're interesting to look at their earnings. Uh, 2019, 2018, price up 1 or 2%, volume up 1 or 2%. Uh, in, the, in the midst of the inflation area, price up 12, 13, 18% volume pretty steady. You're still seeing price of those big manufacturers up 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. Volume's starting to come off, but I'm looking for the point where, you know, they're no longer taking outsized price increases because they're worried the volume in the market won't sustain it. What are you saying? When, let's say you're at a Bond's dinner going party lower, and, though. Watch out. You know, Watch those financials again. Dinner party where real estate Hold didn't up. Come up. Are you like roundly hated because of what's happening in the mortgage market right now? And do you think it's gone too far in terms of 8% mortgages? Are you leaning too hard now on the housing market? Well, I go to dinner parties with old people and old people say, <laughs> I remember when I used to pay X percent for, for a mortgage. That's the, the world of dinner parties I go into. Um, I think the housing market, there are a set of people who do want to uh, buy into a house. I do think they're uh, increasingly frustrated 
by lack of access. Uh, I think the home builders stocks the are going up. Are still building Boeing, scale, RTX, so there are I think even LMT. Mine, like North Carolina, where yeah, you're look still out seeing for that. a lot of home construction. But in the places where you're not seeing it, you're not seeing that frustration. I think the broader commercial real estate market is the place where they're not throwing me any parties right now. And there's a lot of noise in that market. Tom, dig a little more into I, what one of the, when I follow you, what's really interesting is you um, lean less on the econometrics and more on the what you're hearing and how business works and your ideas about price setters and how they think culturally about is it time to make prices? What the hell? Well, they... Your business content. Uh, what I'm hearing from those who sell to lower income consumers is lower income consumers are reprioritizing. They're making choices. Importantly, they're not out of the market. They're still spending, but they're absolutely reprioritizing where they spend and how they spend. You hear a lot about discretionary versus non-discretionary. Oh, they fucked me on uh, that. I'm hearing increasingly over the last three months more news of middle-income consumers trading down. Right, I grabbed an MCL. They had that in their uh, I grabbed an oil so, uh, 8173 MCL. I think even the wealthy not a recommendation. Off you of will goods. lose money. They're still spending, you know, extravagantly, if you will, on services. Um, and, and so that's what's really keeping the economy going on the high end. Now, um, we're seeing consumer spending data that's much stronger than what I just described. And so that's the disconnect that I talked about at the beginning. I still think there's a, um, a, a good chance that what we're seeing on the consumer side is a normal economy, a solid economy, not a frothy economy that would be implied by the recent retail sales or consumer spending but we'll see i mean the data will get updated and we'll get more data and we'll see where it looks like have you been impressed by some of the productivity data and is it changing the way you're thinking about the economy's ability to grow without mm -hmm. inflation overheating uh, really pleased by the recent uh, productivity data really unhappy about last year's productivity uh, data you can't in this era where people left work in low paid possessions and then came back you can't look at it anything other than a four year basis if you look at productivity over four years it's basically where it was in 2018 2019 it's a tick better than it was in 2013 2015 i hope it continues uh, there's lots of reasons to think it might as people figure out how to do more with less but we'll have to see whether it can. Do you think it's related to AI, even at these early innings? I think Bro, it's the too bonds early to keep going to, lower. To AI. Um, but I would give credit to people in a tight labor market innovating and thinking about how to deliver for their customers with somewhat fewer workers. Uh, you briefly mentioned commercial real estate, at least as being, you seem to indicate, and as we all know, a potential problem. I'd just like to get a little bit more from you on that. How big a problem do you see it? I think two thirds of commercial real estate loans I are bought a micro rate, oil so contract, a small one. A little down and yield this, a bit of relief. But overall, I'll explain when we're, when we're done with this. There? But even that well, oil is um, one of the only things down right now today. Apart, and so industrial is doing fine and uh, retail is actually. I don't think I'm going to hold it though. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to give her a flip. really B and C downtown office where people aren't going back to work and I do think that's a troubled uh, sector MCL um, is a future you know, a bit slash of a MCL train because individual owners have choices as to all know, right you're flushing a little again bonds every time to the bank bro TLT has given up 1.2 today on the morning even after some good data now you're getting a bigger candle here welcome to Friday no they make it and so there's a set of challenges that we're going to go through there I don't think this is an unknown challenge we've had commercial real estate things before um, you know, the, the banks, I hope and expect, have the capital to, to get to the other side of this. So you will be a voter next year yes. on the committee. How Not are you going to determine... All right, 43-47. This was level one of the day, the Seems first like one. Still a ways off Again, Barkin mind. says um, rate cuts for way off. For inflation really seven. pleased with and recent so, data. Um, his, his statements uh, are hitting the I wire. I like it when you can get the three-month, six-month, below the 12-month, as has been happening. I like it when that continues down, and I hope and expect we'll, you know, make continued progress on that uh, next year. Um, Bro, demand, you're about to get uh, up to open well. now, so really vibrant this demand, feels like more of the other mornings, but now it just is literally is neutralizing the day slow, here. So that's you still got the gap to fill. Uh, that was kind of the on. issue yesterday. Um, you so see what where, happens here. Um, demand comes off, and you have to do uh, something. You can imagine scenarios where inflation starts to settle, and you want to lower real rates. Uh, both of those imaginary. I think still feel pretty far out in the distance to me. Tony, when it comes to lower rates, I'd just love you to respond to something we heard earlier this week on CNBC from Jeffrey Gunlock of Double Line Capital. He's one of the more important voices Zero in the bottom. We'll talk about it in a second he basically here. posited a thought that the Fed is ultimately going to be forced to lower rates because to do otherwise, given the refinancing needs of the U.S. government, uh, we're going to be running $2 trillion interest costs within three years. Is that a real factor that you think about? 
I think we're just trying to get inflation under control. I'm not spending time thinking about government. At all. So it is possible, therefore, if rates were to stay high, that the U.S. government. So y'all ignore one of the big things that affects calls. your job? Okay. Uh, no, I feel I feel I think this the, fine. Uh, size of the deficits we have now is something that's getting a lot of attention and should get uh, a lot of attention. And of course, if you reduce them, you'll reduce uh, the interest costs. But we'll see uh, what the various legislators choose to do with that. Tom, when we do our Fed survey, we, we did a grading of Powell this time around. And we asked people to grade him on different things, and he got a D in economic forecasting. You guys missed the inflation on the upside in terms of how you ran policy. Is there a reason to have any confidence now that you're going to get it right on the other side? Well, I'm hopeful you don't do a grading after this show, and I'm curious what my grades are. <laughs> I think you're doing very that, well that, right now. And then they cut him off. Okay. All right, no more Tom Bart. My my TD just froze. Usually TD don't freeze. TD no work today. Oh man. I have the other one. Typically is forecast persisting, and I think it has to do with uh, you know the way one thinks when it hasn't been there for thirty years, right? And so. The sense that expectations would settle so quickly. What I believe, going back to what I said before, before is that oh, there, there, it is. Out there, there were price setters out there. There, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You got Tom Barkin, but you have Bradley Fresno letting that peach on a Friday. Because money, money as long as your customers don't go. And so, and so I think all of a sudden it became clear to price setters. Oh, Bradley Fresno. Um, Thank you, my friend. On the other side, oh, I'm my to goodness. To these same people. And Amen. what I'm hearing is it's going to take a while for them to come back to the behaviors pre And is the 10 year yield doing your work for you? Financial conditions help do uh, what we're trying to do. We try to, through our rate moves, affect the financial conditions. Financial conditions affect the economony. You say you try uh, so to? Long as long financial, financial conditions, conditions are affecting the economy in a direction. Come on. I was, I was just getting good. For not issue when rates were lower, she responded uh, last night by saying that actually portfolio oh, duration Frizzle. is the longest it's been in Amen. decades. Do you take a side on that debate? I'm pretty clearly not going to take a side. On that. <laughs> Yo, why is my thing tweaking? TD can't handle it today. Yeah, it just froze again. All right, I don't think I think Barkin's over. Barkin is over. Cart. It's to inflation. So that closely, and I'm very. Yeah, come now. We're still green uh, on that, though. Again, that was a nice little cushion. Control, but uh, no, the markets will tell us that. Is there a big disagreement inside the Fed right now between those that are worried about inflation sticking around longer and having to potentially do more, and those that are, feel like they're done? Uh, the great thing about our committee is you get a lot of views of the table, and people take those. I think it's a consensus-oriented committee, though, as you've seen from the votes over the last uh, couple of years, and so. Everyone puts their view on the table. We kind of work it out. And I, I think we've so far been able to come to a pretty strong but consensus. Let me ask it another way. This is a great question that Sarah asked, which is, do you have to be convinced to hike or do you have to be convinced not to hike? I don't prejudge the answer, as you know. We've got a meeting in six weeks. I think we just got out of the last meeting. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm saying <laughs> we got out of the last meeting. Let's get two jobs reports. Let's get two inflation reports. Let's get a consumer spending report. Let's see if the things that I think I believe today are still true or not. And so I, I think we've got a lot of time. All right, for that. one more way. Is there <laughs> any risk of over tightening or under tightening right now? They're both Good big risks. They're both big risks. Sure. And by and the way, by the way, there's also a risk that some boulder comes in from left field and takes on the economy in the way that the pandemic did. And so you're always dealing with under tightening risk. You're always dealing with over tightening risk. And you're always dealing with the risk that perfect policy can get waylaid by something that comes out. But of left speaking field. of boulders, we haven't asked and you haven't brought up geopolitical tensions. Is that mm -hmm. not something that's high on your list now of risks out there? Well, when you start seeing a conflict in the Middle East, you start thinking about oil prices. And uh, it's very you know, familiar for those of us who lived through the 70s that an oil price spike has issues. Now, our economy is different than it was in the 70s and all that stuff, and we produce more. But yeah, you, you constantly monitor it. And I've been uh, pleased that so far it hasn't really spilled into that part of the economy. But that's absolutely something to watch. When I talk about boulders, that's a classic example of a boulder. 
You did well. Four on one. Not bad. Tom Barkin, thank you very yeah. much. Good to be really here. Really appreciate thank you, you coming and sharing, sharing your Tom views Barkin. The president of the Richmond Fed. Coming up after the break. Again, he's not a voter. He votes next year. I mean, we had a little reaction while he was talking. Don't forget, you have Bostick coming up today. I don't know if there's any other Fed speakers, but at the end of the day, I mean, the, everything was good up until the other data. And it's not like the data changed much, but right when we started getting ISM stuff, came in weaker, the services, but the reaction of the data kind of flip-flopped, and then the bonds gave up half of their gains now on the day. But we're still holding up three-quarters on the NASDAQ, three-quarters on the SPY, just under Dow Jones up 0.43, and Russell still up 2.4. Crazy. And then as far as the breakdown on the day, uh, you have seven names red, 23 green on the Dow. NASDAQ 100, 17 red, 84 green, and then S&P 500, uh, 73 red, and then 430 green. And then, Troy, you said you brought this Zero Hedge up uh, article up. They were talking about the collapse in the household, and they're saying that the U.S. is already in a recession. I wouldn't say that we're already there, but I think today highlights something that I brought up, uh, I would say, about maybe like four months ago, uh, give or take. Uh, but what I what it, when what that is is that just as we've seen revisions and we've been like what the hell these revisions are stupid, you know, they will revise our ass into a recession, if that makes any sense. So in a weird way, I think the household survey showing a job decline, you know, again people aren't used to that, and but that does you know that's like the first stone. I think it shows a crack, but. I don't think it, it, it means we're already in the recession, more or less. But the way I'm looking at it is that they will, they're will they going to start revising the numbers lower and lower, and then we'll know we were already in a recession, if that makes sense. So you're going to, you know, let's say pretty much by like middle of next year, if we are in a recession, you're going to see all those non-farm numbers revised to negatives from positives, believe it or not. So that, because that is what happened in the, in the last moment of, again, in 08, even in 01, anytime there was job losses, you know, it's not like the BLS is always legit. They've they've always been weird with their delays and and uh, revisions and all that good stuff. DraftKings a little bit. And then Square. DraftKings, I think, is holding up the best out of all of them. But lower percentage. And then Cart's taking another leg down here if it goes lower. Yeah, CL. So the way I'm looking at it, I mean, I don't know if oil was going to drop with the market, but I'm thinking, you know, hey, all the economic data has been good, right? And, you know, we're reacting to economic or economic data both being like soft and like borderline good. But at the same time, I do think, you know, if the conditions ease up and people start feeling good, I don't think oil is just going to sit there. And then you got the daily headline. So I think it could go as low as 79. I'm not going to hold this one overnight. I'm probably just going to play it on the day if we get like a move. But I think it kind of makes sense in the context of today where it's just like, all right, if people feel good, you got economic data. It's like maybe we revert back to the whole, okay, if conditions loosen, DraftKings going up, then maybe we'll see what oil does. But I don't think it's a guarantee. It's been in a nice range. Got some volatility, keeping it a small play. I'm down like 40 bucks on it now. I don't think it should move more than 100 or 200 bucks on the day unless there's like a crazy oil move. Mm -mm. Whole world is slowing. Oil going to 70. Well, let's see. Again, and that's I'm down to agree with that. Like, you know, this play isn't to to say, you know, what's going to happen with the economy just as much as kind of responding to uh, conditions tightening and easing. Uh, I don't know if that makes more sense. So again, as, as financial conditions are tightening and easing up, it's affecting a lot of things. We're seeing the bonds, we're seeing the data. So that's how I'm kind of looking at it here too, where again, bonds are up. If we keep rallying, you know, and people feel good, you may, you may see loosening up even on the oil market too. Uh, it's down point four. That's big though. So if that was a if that was a CL, you would be down four hundred dollars. On an MCL, you're down. Now I'm down twenty. It just popped up real quick. Again, it moves a lot. Tala. I don't know what Tala is. Who's a Tala? Yeah, I don't know Tala, bro. Remember you meant to say Apa, uh, uh, Apple? 
Apple's even coming up again. At one point, it was only down a uh, half a percent. Tesla, again, they gave up a little bit. They're trying to come off the bottom. Again, Microsoft, that was interesting. Bonds stopped going lower for now, which would have been nice. Maybe we could hopefully put a, you know, give back a little today. But I, I mean, if we could get a good range, put a floor and ceiling to bonds today, that would be nice. So like we said, we bounced right off the four five, went up five basis point six, And that's it. No, I went long on oil on an MCO, a baby one. Make the market go back up. That's that's in the hands of the bonds, my friend. Unfortunately, you know, maybe another day I could have helped you out, but it is this the bonds. Again, even that little just them giving up a lot of, you know, other days when the bonds would give up like strength, the equities wouldn't react too much, but Again, I mean, last thing we want to see is all this demand get met with supply, come back down, you break the peak, but then can't hold it, uh, then that won't be pretty. So I do think how the bonds move, you know, I, I still think it's going to be a good day no matter what, just because of what happened throughout the whole week. We've dodged every single bullet. So, but I, I do think the bonds are important. Mm. Regionals came down. They're still up three and a half. XLF up one, but that dropped a lot from the top. Mm. What is that? BMX? BMY? Bristol Meyer, Biogen. A couple of, uh, again, B Bristol Meyer is up 3.6. Conflict in the Middle East will make the oil price high. It will and it won't. Uh, again, as I think you get random events that maybe lift the price up but unless we see oil supply get altered in the gulf i don't think then again you know where before you know it, we're you're you're already sending more money to israel you're already got public fully down to juggle two wars before you know it where again if if there is no constriction of oil supply then the markets will firmly ignore israel and and palestine uh, I will say at this point, that's what we're getting into. Just but but again, you need oil supply to actually move to get oil to go up with that. So do I think that's impossible? No, I, I do think it is a possibility. It is a lower possibility, but at the or probability, but at the same time, that is the the driver for oil in the in the conflict. Mm. I don't think the public is down. I've seen some polls. I mean, you can leave that leave that up to the media and the news. I mean, social media as well, but it does seem like again, I mean, even then screw the public. What am I saying? Look at Janet Yellen, look at Joe Biden. You know, they are both, literally I it's the every day I think about it, it's the wildest statement to literally be asked about the war and like even the funding and just be like, oh, yeah, we could totally afford two wars. Just no hesitation. <laughs> so that's a very different uh, uh, like, you know, again, regardless of what society believes at the end of the day, I mean, your leaders are, are, are really hell bent on on supporting it and ramming it through and trying their best to at least get public support. Oh, Netflix going up here at 430. That's a good range. I think go like 438, but then we got to get to the 440s to start going crazy. TLT is coming down again. So getting a couple names moving. The dynamic is kind of flipping here. Again, the high low ticker is like struggling. It's all those equal weighted again, non-tech names that are still fighting. But now your low ticker is starting to uh, advance. But again, that TLT on the low, I don't like. Mm. No. 
Beloved. Yeah. MSTR on the highway. Celsius. Still a couple of good names they're holding. The travel names, they're, again, holding 3 4%. I think your tech is the precarious one here. Let's check the equal weight. Show me what you're working with. Yeah, actually, equal weight is coming down. It's still up 1.5, so you have over 1% on everything else except the Magnificent 7. And then Dow barely up, but then Russell's holding good. DraftKings candle holding Netflix, I think, 431. Oh, come on. You're so close. I need you. CAH been climbing. Apple heavy. I do keep forgetting Apple had earnings, but, like, this isn't bad. I mean, for slowest growth in China, guidance, you know, like, flat year over year, uh, pretty wild. But Apple's only down one. Like I said, you know, I feel like we we ignored a lot. Roku gassing. Some of those names that are killing it, they're still just doing their thing. That's what I'm saying. The dynamic is – in the morning, it was everything green. Now, everything green, tech was kind of lagging behind. Now, everything's kind of working its way in. But then, like, some of the – uh the earlier leaders are still holding, but Shopify, they gave up. UAL, again, like I said, those airlines, Netflix, randomly. Google, too. <laughs> AMD on the high. That one's running right through through 110. Again, the market held up a little better on that. Uh, bonds wanted to retest that low of the day. Like I'm saying we want, we don't want this. You don't, you want to calm down here and hopefully retest this low. The last thing we want to do is start seeing, you know, resistance to the rally. Because again, that's what happened at a lot of these different levels. Again, around like four seven five, you break it, you bounced a little bit, but we flushed right through it. But and then you came right back to it. Then the next days you continue to go lower. But then again, it's so early too. What time is it? Seven forty five, bro. Ah it's been an hour fifteen minutes. So you still got like what? Just under two hours even till Euro close, hour forty five, hour fifteen. Mm -hmm. Apple did. They talked about the meta goggles. They said uh the Vision Pro, they're gonna be having in store demos. So if you're interested in sharing eyewear with a bunch of random individuals in an Apple iStore, feel free to go to your local iStore and talk to a to a genius bar. Uh genius is it a genius and then no you know they'll set you up. Fox Business University of California studently allegedly raped by Lyft driver inside vehicle. Uh I don't know if Lyft is reacting to that. I feel like you haven't heard a story like that in a minute, but then I feel like everyone's like, that happens all the time. You're like, what? <laughs> Lyft, they're not really reacting again. Uber, too, they were up. So we'll see. And then Spy's kind of chilling here. I don't know. Do you? How do you guys feel? Again, it looked like a face ripper. You're coming down here. The ball, everything's still good though, but it's just you know you've you've tempered it. So I don't know, man. I don't know how you guys are. Maybe this could be considered a blessing. Slow things down here on a Friday. Again, still holding 43. You've held every level very well though. Mm -mm. AMD flush incoming. Feels like I should walk away. Feeling good. I think we chill or rally. I think we're just going to maybe we get a lot of dancing, but I, I do think the story ends up green. I think we are going to close five days in a row now of green. I think it's going to be about the weekend, but less on the weekend and then more now just getting into the final earnings and then, you know, letting, letting, letting us see if the bonds actually chill out. Spotify on the high. It's going to be like trying on headphones in the store. I've never tried on headphones in my life. 
unless it's like the over the head ones when I was younger, I would listen to them. But like, I've never been like, yo, let me stick these ear pods because I got waxy ass ears. I wouldn't even do that to those people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is there anything different when it gaps up on a weekday before Friday or it's on Friday? Well, I mean, generally speaking, how people, you know, if people, if the market closes green on a Friday, that means people are willing to hold over the weekend. That's why, like, the whole down Friday, down Monday thing is so important because it lets you know, like, kind of the sentiment. So that's as far as I would take it is just, hey, it's Friday. Imagine what we've gone through. Again, you know, you have people after today, even if we even if we sell off a little bit, I'm telling you, after the data we had today, how this whole week played out, there's there's people out there who are just like, oh, yeah. I'm I'm buying and I feel confident holding this into the next week. You know, they're more more or less positioning and holding because they feel good versus, you know, Friday. Again, look at the last couple Fridays we've had, you know, worries, Palestine, Israel, Hamas, all these things that could happen, interest rates. You know, people did not want to hold into the weekend. And then even on Monday, that would tell you, you know, do they feel the same or not? And usually they wouldn't hold into the weekend and be down to buy it on Monday. Canadian defense minister says Chinese warplane fired flares close to Canadian helicopter over international waters on Sunday. This is unsafe, they say. And then Russian withdraws accreditation and expels Bulgarian Bulgarian correspondent in Moscow in response to Bulgarian's actions against Russian journalists. Used to hang in the mall and wipe them down, listen to the whole album without buying. Well, that was, listen, that was, I, that, that was the day before, you know, I don't even think LimeWire existed back then. So I, I feel that was a necessary part of trying on the headphones. But if you're telling me you got to try on AirPods, you just like things in your ears. I'm not judging you, but I just, it seems like you're doing that for another reason. You know, I don't think anybody need to try on. you like, can I get the other size? Yeah, the other side. Can you give me the smaller size on it? Let me see how that one feels. Excuse me? <laughs> LimeWire. Really? LimeWire was it? No way. Hmm. I was fluent with LimeWire. I, I downloaded a couple viruses, though. Like at one at one point I got like exiled from my family because like we only had one computer and I put LimeWire on it and then I downloaded something. I think it was like SimCity or some shit. And then I got the via dude, it was so bad. And my dad had to take the computer to like his church friend. You know, my dad's foreign as fuck. Like he don't <laughs> you know, so like he's just going to the first white dude who knows computers and is like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And like there's the guy at church. We had to give it to him and it took him like I think like a month to fix it or something, bro. And it was like, yeah, it was bad. Mm hmm. Oil dragging. I'm down 70 bucks on that so far. We bought an 80, literally, so it's a dollar a penny. That's what you make or lose on MCL. You would download the entire discography and would always edit the song title and album work to make it perfect. Damn. I remember when I first discovered the disc, discog, discography. How do you say it? Discography, discography. I'm missing a syllable. Mm. That's wild. Those viruses don't exist for personal computers anymore. They target businesses now. Mm -hmm. It's because Apple. Just don't underestimate one big part of Apple in the early days. They were like the first computer to not get viruses. And that, again, then everybody started using them. At one point, it just, you know, you go you go for phishing for the uh, 
retail, but yeah, all those viruses are all, it's all corporate now. We got blessing and the curse. I did not see the Wemby. I saw some of the highlights, but I didn't, I did not get to see like the full clip of it. I'm telling Wemby's insane, bro. But we're going down now. I'm, we need some market Wemby right now. I feel like the Bonds need a Wembyana. Otherwise, the Wembyn drop up. I don't want them to. And we're this is right at that first level I told you from the morning. Again, 43, 47, and then a little bit above here. And then we hit that that little wick. I feel like we we might try to come back there. That was crazy. Soft data wicked up, and then they all targeted at Okta. Really, honestly, there's no. <laughs> There's no more viruses anymore for any kids. Just they go after Okta, and that's about it. Dude can dunk without jumping. I just saw one where like he dunked it, but like he didn't dunk it. He took off so far, and there was a defender. He just threw it in the basket, and it looked like a dunk. It was insane. SFM just flashed the cheek clay. Uh yeah, it says forty ninety nine on my screen. It's not showing up the cheek lay though. And then forty three forty three are a little lower. So here's the difference between yesterday. Again, even by this moment here, but like when we would go low you weren't setting new lows yesterday. So again, we still have to go prior, but like you're about to go lower from the first couple of candle now, uh, if you do drop this. So again, I think it's interesting because the bonds are trying to chill out a little bit, but that is our problem here, it seems to be on the day. And they're not even a problem. They're just calming down their exuberance. But then again, the paranoia of the bond market. Yeah, it was just like Space Jam Dunk. Exactly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. VIX going crazy. The VIX is murdered, though. So VIX did rock it straight up. But, like, you guys realize what just happened? So you killed almost two months of volatility. At least a, a month and two weeks of volatility was destroyed in four days. So, again, the VIX back, I mean, 15 still kind of elevated. But don't forget, you know, once you start going below 15, you start entering, you know, that type of era allowed us you know, wait, well, ahead of May. Again, that leaving the same route was the same thing. VIX rockets up and then you die. Even last time, I don't even think it dropped that far. So we'll see if the VIX could remember because it came back to life out of nowhere. But now the VIX is uh, VIX is kind of neutered if that, if that does hold like that. And then lift, you didn't get a reaction. Cart came all the way back down. Still up on it, but lost the dollar. I had like a dollar fifty a share on it. Uh, Netflix still at four thirty. PayPal, and then Spy a little green shoot bonds a little bit of recovery again. You could just pull up the ten year. You see how that's coming back down. This is what we want. This is what we want on the day. So like I was saying, if we could get back, we're gonna test four five again. That would be the high of the day on TLT IEF. But if we could get through that, that's gonna say a lot. But if we can't, when we go back down there then maybe uh, the market will chill out in terms of bonds. But I'd, I'd definitely be watching out for that. If this is the top rope, if those bonds maybe, again, if they hit 4 or 5 and then rock it up again and we can't contain, but there's two gaps to fill. If anything, you'll fill this gap, you'll get around here, and then when it's really looking ugly, your greedy short might be around this gap fill, if anything. The Russell is up. Uh, this was the this question gets asked every day for the last couple of days. Why is the Russell up more than anything? Again, it dropped more than anything too. Don't forget, Russell was just getting mollywopped while a lot of things were just doing their thing. Pick me, pick me. So the answer is because the Russell has more interest-sensitive companies. 
there's banks, there's regional banks, there's these small caps that are really dependent on variable loans and other rates there, but they're highly interest rate sensitive. So that's why, like I've been saying, this whole rally, it's one thing about what happened, but what happened caused the bonds to relax. Remember, the bonds effed us up over this last couple of months. So now, you know, if they're able to recover a little bit, the ones that are closely linked, the Russell, the small caps, financials, real estate, they did good. NVIDIA is surging right now. NVIDIA and Uber into the high, even uh, Lyft had a pop. Uber, Google now. So again, big tech kind of waking up here. Netflix already at the high. That one's still going. I don't know about Amazon and Microsoft, even Apple. Microsoft starting to move. So I guess this is VWAP a little bit, but you're just right back to 4350. Again, you went like five, six points lower just recently and then right back up. So I don't think it's telling of anything yet. Maybe we wait till Euro close, but that's still another hour and a half. Yeah, NVIDIA is NVIDIA's doing good. 2% into the high, 444. Again, Netflix to another high, 431.40. Look at the MCL. That one's down 48 bucks. Almost forgot about that one. Where's travel? Roku. And Duolingo. Airbnb, all right. Bonds starting to catch up a little bit. So we, I think we will rally again if you do this test I'm talking about. So if the 10-year could make an effort back down to 4-5, just it's two, two, three basis points, it's kind of big. So it's not like it's a small move. But if we make that move down there and test, I think that'll let you know how the market's going to play. Because, again, as we're making that progress down, you're getting back up here. Bonds are starting to move again. And then high ticker is starting to gas a little bit more tech this time around. And then a lot of this stuff that already held is still holding. SQ. I'm surprised that one. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a good earnings. I thought it was going to really kill it. It's up 14 now. PayPal too. All right. 30 year catching a bid now again, uh, even the 10 year. So again, four, five, two, seven. So let's see. Again, that's the problem with today. The range, it's like big and small. This was like 10, 15 points, but you're still above one level. Now five points away, six points away from the other one. And then that gets you right back to the high. Chips are gassing. Are you going to average this futures? Which one? The MCL? No. It's small. Again, it's, it's like 40, 60 bucks. I don't think unless oil craters 5%, you shouldn't lose more than a couple hundred dollars on like 500 to a thousand. But I think this place should be capped within like a hundred, two hundred dollar range. So I just want to play it with today. I think today's an interesting setup. Again, oil down, things are good. It, uh, conditions over the last four days now have eased up a little bit. I wonder how that'll play with oil and then add to the fact of just any other war headlines. I don't think the war will be as important, but uh, I do think economically, you know, oil oil fits into this discussion before we freaked out, after we freaked out, oil was already there. So on a day like today, it's the one thing that's down. I, I want to make a small little play on it. I'm not going too crazy, though. I'm still just riding out everything. I got a couple things that have came back. So that is very nice. Mm-hmm. Cart, Overstockage, ASAN, NVIDIA, NVIDIA and AMD, both of them. Chips are going up. Oh, I can't load that. <coughs> Excuse me. 4351. Strata Systems on the high, SSYS. It's up 5%. Why does it say it's the first high? Google. Yeah, Google's doing good. Again, I think Amazon and Microsoft and Apple, those are the ones that we need to go crazy. Mm. And for Josh, shining the flashlight on the cogs that matter minute by minute, you'd be in the dark without them. Hopefully they don't freak you out too often, but I mean, you know, uh, on the daily, especially when the, we got this volatility, 
There's always cool stuff to watch. Today we didn't bring up the yen as much. That just has rallied with uh, the non-farms. And, I mean, the dollar, too, is down considerably. Uber, Spotify, NVIDIA all on the high. Those are hitting a new high right now. Dollar is coming back down, too. I didn't notice the dollar came back up earlier. So that was part of the data, too. But dollar is back to where uh, the uh, ISM services came out. So, again, do dude, dollar has dropped 25 cents today. A quarter spot chicle on the highs. 170. Oh, wow. Spotify has recovered a lot, even on the last quarter or two. Mm -hmm. And then TLT. 4.529. U.S. conducting UAV flights over Gaza, Pentagon says. UAV online. We'll get them again next time. I think ARC is going up. Yeah, ARC is... Those contracts keep running up. It was actually, I thought those contracts would have got limited a little bit more. So not bad. I guess they just dumped them on the first round. And then now they're back up. But that contract's up over, over 100, I think. Mm. <clears throat> and you can watch the yen. It's kind of in the middle. The yen just looks like the dollar. Inverse of the dollar today. And there's ARC. Roku still going. KO. Again, a couple of the value plays. Or no, that was KD. KD, not KO. GL, Boeing, PayPal already. Yeah, that. I want PayPal. Maybe after Euro close. I've been looking at it all day. I just hate it. always sells off there, but usually those rocket candles, they've been decent. Then Spy still working its way up. We got to get to one more level from here. You're hanging on to the first one. And then go from there. Fubo, I did not check Fubo earnings. We talked about it a little yesterday. But even then, a lot of names today. I mean, even Redfin did bad and they went up. So I don't know. Fubo's in the green, but it is very hard to say. Because like Redfin's up 26% right now and they guided lower on like everything Spotify on the high unity S Roblox again high tickers starting to gas now so there's a couple I feel like it's just big tech kind of slowing you down and then some of the equal way but the 30 second one minute starting to pick up on the high low ticker Roblo is at the high 35 bucks I came back from that one earnings I can take it big commerce on the high when was the last time you saw Big C on the high? And there's Dra Again, bonds are still climbing, so that's all good news. And then DraftKings hit the high, came down. MLTX, that's running through the high. Chicle, almost a dollar. MLTX, check Biogen. I think they moved Moon Lake. Oh, didn't they have something the other day? I swear we saw something on Moon Lake. I feel like it was yesterday. Moon Lake, MLTX. Again, Biogen, a couple of these biotech plays moving up. APO. Mm. I use one minute candles. I'm a sicko. Mm. Not Fubu. I said Fubo. Nice. AMKBY. I don't know if we did discuss that. coin on the high remember they came down i thought they were up a lot more. i thought they were up a lot more pre-market am i wrong interesting i thought i read it as nine percent only up two aclx again that's another, another biotech it looks like running up spy had that little move there but still hugging vwap same thing with the bonds snap on the high snap is on the high 1080 is it higher than earnings it is well, look at you, Snap. So, again, it seems as everything's coming back to the just trying to make up the quarter that they just lost. But, again, you kind of need all of this to hold up. Looks like all the stocks that moves up aren't moving. But if they were clapped, even if earnings are bad, they came up. Yeah, I agree. 
Again, like Estee Lauder. If you already did report and were good, if it wasn't stellar, you're kind of just doing nothing. Even if it was stellar, you still have a tougher time moving, but you're definitely just watching the names that haven't done anything or did really bad starting to kind of do their thing. Non-farms was positive in the sense that it came in lower. So very good for the market. Yeah, those real estate stocks are coming down. What is this? Seven killed and seven wounded after Ukraine missile attack in Russian-controlled part of Kurzon. Tesla? Well, Tesla just off of their latest earnings and then I think some of the Elon stuff, but they're not really selling it off. Again, below 200 was bad. If anything, it's just holding its earnings price. Like I said, at, even after earnings, I was like, I don't know if this was make it or break it. And sure enough, after all of this, you're just holding this level for there for now. So I don't know. I think I think Tesla's holding up. Don't forget, Tesla's still up 100%. You got 30 ELF shares. Did that go lower? Yeah. But we were down the same amount yesterday. Then it came back up. It just moves a lot. But that one was, I can't believe Estee Lauder is up. That's just, that's just so awful, bro. They let Estee Lauder go up, and then they brought Elf down. It's hideous. Tesla's starting to sell a little bit more. Do I compare my rate of return on your long term against the S&P? Uh, I mean, I think everybody does. No. Uh, I think it just also depends at times. And then, you know, with enough time, hopefully your long term gets just far removed from it uh, to the point where, you know, you should have overall net gains compounded that will always keep you above and then, you know, go from there. But yeah. That is called beta. Well, beta, beta is just the correlation to the broader market. So technically, yes. Any truth to the Tesla rumor that employees are trying to unionize? I don't work at Tesla. I don't know, but a lot of financial media has been saying that lately. Again, uh, even Sean Fain, I think, is trying to go after them. Again, uh, you got to realize that Sean Fain guy had a very big victory. Uh, again, you know, he just he punked every automaker. So VIX is going right back up. And look at this. I think more people are just hammering home puts right now. UVXY is moving more than the VIX, ironically, but I really think people are just kind of, I think people are buying the puts right now on this, but because VIX, you're not even hitting a new low. Bonds aren't even doing anything, and the VIX is running again. Again, MLTX, that thing is still going. But yeah, like, you know, again, Sean Fain punked him, bro. So he has a lot of momentum and, uh, you know, Elon's like the ultimate boss for unions, it seems like. So we are going to see what happens. Mm. He did good on his behalf. Yeah, he did. I mean, he got them all money. He did what he what he said he was going to do. I mean, may not like it for consumers, prices, this or that. Philip Morris kind of running. But at the end of the day, I mean, he just he did something nobody's done in a while. And that that with that comes a lot. And I think they're going after Tesla next. That's the word on the street. But uh, no way to confirm unless we like actually work there. Goldman on the high. So banks, what's up with this? Why is why is Goldman coming to life here? So watch out your XLF. Watch if financials start to rip. You got a couple of weird things. J and J. Uh, what did I have up before that? Uh, again, Philip Morris, Staples, Bonds. So again, you're getting a little bit. Those are the things that have been driving things. Uh, Israel's military says looking into reports, Gaza Health Ministry of Ambulance Convoy hit. And then Maloney government seeks direct election of prime minister. I think that's for Italy. He's a great dude for the working class. New vehicle prices have doubled and wages haven't increased. I mean, it's not his fault. I'm not I'm not really uh, again, I'm I'm not a fan of unions uh, to be honest with you guys. Uh you usually 
you know, in the beginning they were very good. I'm a fan of the OG unions back in the day. Uh, but lately, I mean, a lot of them kind of, it, it gets bogged down with a lot of things, but at the end of the day, I mean, he got people who haven't had a pay raise money. You know, if you, if you're mad about the price increases on vehicles, that's the corporation's fault. Uh, you know, again, I'm kind of, I'm over the era of giving corporations the benefit of the doubt. You know, the people who raised prices on you earlier and chose not to pay their employees, that was Ford, that was GM, that was Stellantis. You know what I'm saying? So although I'm not the biggest fan of unions, at the same time, though, it is, you know, those corporations, dude, they they ran up all every excuse to raise the prices on you ahead of time. So at the end of the day, I mean, I, I can't fault Sean Fain for, uh, you know, doing something good. Uh, you know what I'm saying? For the people, again, you know, hundreds of thousands of workers, I believe, got a got a very nice pay increase. But and although, like I'm saying, it sucks for the consumer. But, you know, you should damage the company's your your brand loyalty. You should take that out on whoever, you know, raised the prices on you prior to that, because that's that's not his fault, unfortunately. So, uh, like I said, I'm not the biggest union fan, but I think he gets a W for sure. He did good for his people. And then now Tesla might be the next one. That's a thing. Like Elon, I don't think a a union would work good for Tesla, but let's let's see what happens. So that and I'm sure Elon will fight it tooth and nail. And then oil play is back up now. You got nine dollars nine cents. So oil's getting a little bit of rebound on this too. Oil's still down though, almost a percent. Easy to blame the UAW. Have you heard of this thing called inflation? Indeed. What kind of play would you make on Tesla if you had inside info on it going union? I wouldn't make a play because then I'd go to jail. So if I act and then and then here's the funny part. Even if you think you have inside info, just you might be better off waiting. I've always said it, man. There's notoriously a history of people losing money or not making a lot on on shit like that. But uh, to be honest, I don't I don't know how that would even play out. So I don't think it's too relevant. Uh, what's rhythm? R Y T H Baba on the high. We ain't heard from China in a minute. Yeah, rhythm pharmaceutical. Again, a lot of pharma names. Carvana's now on the high. They're holding their twelve from earlier. Square and PayPal. They want to move, but they ain't doing nothing. I think cart came down. Still moving back up though. MCL play back up now, 0.33. Woohoo, 25 bucks. Again, we were down like 70. That's nice for now. Again, very small. I just, I wanted to see, I've been, wait, I haven't played oil this whole time. That's why I was like, all right, after today, now we have all this. Oil is like dramatically lower than all of that. Oh, I just want to kind of flip it a little bit. It would be hard to get hit with insider info on UAW because essentially a million people already know everything minute by minute and they post it on social media. Oh, that makes sense too. Chop till you dry. It's Friday though. You guys act like y'all ain't used to this. Friday night chop dance session. You know, usually they got fun Fridays. They got disco Fridays. We got hip hop Fridays, but then you also got chop Fridays. So it looked like for now, but then again, we this is how Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday kind of played out. If you remember, don't forget, Euro closes late this week, and it's messed up all of us. It's messed up all of us. What about Freestyle Friday? Yo, 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 I want a snack. I eat chips like arm. Uh, I'm worried about the jobs, but I've never been on a farm. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's my favorite. That's my that's one of my favorite lines right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. 
Tesla's coming down on the low ticker. There are massive money moves. Yeah, this whole last five, dude, I'm telling you, in in a week, two weeks, you, you got murdered. And then literally, I'm glad I held, th I made all of the money I lost back and some. That's, that's mind blowing to me because I was like, damn, this shit got ugly fast. So, I mean, the, what just happened over these last couple of days, it's, it's hideous. Uh, it's good, both good and bad. Again, that's why I'm like, I don't know how I feel. I can't complain. It's benefiting me. But, you know, again, I had a setup for October. It didn't materialize till a couple days later. But at the end of the day, it is, uh, it, there, there is a lot going on here. You have a lot of opportunity. And even then, you know, everybody is setting their sights now, these final two months of the year. You're a real one. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And, you know, real recognize real, especially the Chad man. That's what it's built off of. So, amen. On Hedera H bar. I don't, I don't know about H bar. What drew your attention to it? Yeah, I don't even look. I can't even pull it up, bro. Sorry. ASML TSM. They'll, I mean, TSM is going to be tied to the China stuff, but sadly, when it comes to chip makers, you better do your research on each one of them because individually, they've all just been a mixed ass bag. Some good, some bad, some better than not. Some segments better. Again, like AMD still struggled a little bit. Don't forget that. But there again, that a, that that data center segment, and that was good. But then, like if you have silicone, anything, you you clapped silicone carbonite or whatever. That sound like a that sound like an Italian pasta. Can I get a silicone carbonide with sausage, please, and Alfredo? Thank you. Roku's running up again. More volume. Wait, wait a minute. We have Roku. I didn't think about it. Arc is fucking Roku, huh? Mm -mm. In fact, Josh doesn't ban me with my contrarian shit. Proves he's a real one. Yeah, you just got to be nice to people. That's it. You've gotten in like four different Chad beefs. That's all. That's all. As long as you just say your contrarian shit without being like, you stupid and idiots. That's all you got to do. Just don't say all oh, you people and how you, that's it. Other than that, amen, man. I think, you know, you've, you've provided great insight at the same time. Nothing wrong with the contrarian at all, ever. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. Just stay in the game. But yeah, we have Roku through Arc. Another 100K sell. They get mad at me. I'm working on it. Hey, man, you and me both. You and me both, bro. You and me both. You know, it's always something. And again, it does it. It's something you'll 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 learn. You can improve on. But like, look at the world that we live in. You got people being militarized and hyped up at every corner. So <laughs> I understand. I understand that. That's why understanding it goes a long way answered your lagging uh did i answer what was the question you had i think i might have yeah asml i did i said just watch i say you have to watch every chip maker on an individual basis because after this earnings some are better than not some have different weaknesses and strengths but at this point you know i, I like tsm i like the asia exposure with how things have sold off but tsm still has premium but you know determining a chip maker it, it does boil down to a how they recently have, you know, how they have actually played out. Square getting Raul. DraftKings isn't. So DraftKings up, Roku up, a couple. Estee Lauder's on the low. Oh, yeah, where's EW? Mm. All right, another green shoot on the spy, literally after the bonds take a little dump there. Royal Caribbean alters cruise lines to skip Israel. So oil, I mean, oil, it's either going to rip from here or it's going to die. So, again, we have a gain on that play by a little bit. So we either get past the 82s and have some fun, or if it rejects here, it's going to be a straight line down. Bob is on the high once again.
why do we forget how uh, weak the first earnings reports were? Because there was a lot of good earnings afterwards. So I was telling you guys every morning that, you know, a lot of people were asking like, wait, wait, why are we still kind of weak? And I would explain. I was like, dude, you just had a bunch of bad earnings in the morning. The beat rate for the first half of earnings pretty much up until the last couple of days the beat rate was below average. It was in the 70s. So now after the last 48 hours of earnings and the ones that have beat, we are now sitting at an 88% beat rate. So now the it is flipped pretty much. So we most of the earnings in the beginning were bad. That, that was factual. They were underperforming. We were underperforming seasonally, even on average. And now the amount of beats has, has started to rise once again. And now it's not as bad of an earnings season. Last 48, so many guide downs. But then a lot of good ones that guided up. That's like every morning, you know, we're reading a lot of these earnings. But there was there was a lot that happened in the last couple of days. And it did change the, the metrics of everything. Why did bonds recover? It was a pow it started with Powell and the market insinuating that he is done raising rates. Then it was, and it got a little bit of a boost from weak data at the beginning of the week, and then today's non-farms coming in weaker. That was the the dagger, and then we had other soft economic data, but it actually pulled the bonds the other way, which is probably the unique factor. Morgan again, banks again on the high. I think we might be able to go up a little more if that continues, but then bonds are going down. But again, I think financially sensitive. That is good. Bostic speaking, I don't know. I kind of. I'm scared, but I feel like Bostic is going to pump this shit out of the market naturally. Yeah, DraftKings running again. You got Morgan Stanley there too. I think even Netflix into the high. Microsoft trying to do it. But yeah, Netflix has been hugging the highs here. Mm. What is that? Coney, not Sony? Yeah, DraftKings killed. DraftKings already moved 3% in the last hour or so. CRISPR on the high. Remember, they had a good day not too long ago. I feel like all of these ARC names have to be running. The Bostic. The Bostic bump. The Bostic bonds. Japanese government to deliver 65 million additional aids for civilians in Gaza. Why doesn't Japan give... And Wait a minute. Oh, they want the inflation, though. That makes so much sense. I'm like, why are they not giving any money? And then they could just print money for free forever, and they have for the last decade. But well, then it makes sense. They need the inflation. Stand by on Bostic. He's finishing his long TLT executions. No, he's not. It's the person who handles his stuff that he didn't know about. That's who's doing it, Okay. Gosh, just be a little bit more correct. Okay, he didn't know again for the third, second time. It don't matter, just but it, was, it wasn't him. It was somebody else, it was the guy who manages his stuff. Gosh, CRISPR. That's a, again, once again, another high there, back to back. I put, dude, y'all don't. I don't think it, it hit headlines yesterday, but like, why was Pelosi coming after RFK, bro? Like, what the hell? Like, it's actually insane. Disney into the highs. Yeah, you haven't heard anything from Pelosi. You haven't even heard a play from Pelosi. Like, that's crazy. And then she's like, yeah, RFK is a threat. She said, independent parties are a threat to democracy. <laughs> NVIDIA is on the high still. So, again, we're a little higher. I'm telling you, some of those banks moving up, I think that's a bigger signal. It's not all the banks. One of the banks isn't doing that good. There has to be, I think, Bank of America. A couple of the banks, they're just they're not moving the same way. That's why XLF's not at the high. But like I was telling you earlier, you know, this financial relief, it's, it's going to help out a lot. So we are working up even Airbnb on another high. Airbnb has to be higher than earnings now, right? Yeah. So we'll see. 
And then 81, that's oil. Let's check SPX. I haven't done anything in the long term. Nah, man. I'm still in the gulag. Don't worry. I think five more days now, hopefully. Please tell me that's misinformation. Even Pelosi should be smarter than that. I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not under the impression it is misinformation. Again, I could probably find you the link for it, but she was speaking at some conference yesterday, and she brought up you know, the threat of independent parties. And I, I pretty, I, I even asked, I was like, who's she talking about? And I assume she's talking about RFK. Yeah. So yeah, it's not, there you go. You can search it up. I Maybe I use different keywords, but Pelosi bashes no labels as perilous to our democracy and threat to Biden. So she said on Thursday, eviscerated the centrist group, no labels, and their attempts to mount a third party presidential bid. So who's no labels? So maybe there's a group called no labels then. Maybe she wasn't talking about RFK. But again, she said something about that. Is it RFK? If that's him, then yeah, there you go. It's a political party. So what's your label? No labels. Huh? So what do you guys go by? No labels. So what's your label? Our label is no labels. So your label is literally no labels then? So you don't you don't like to labor, label it? So what's your label? But then you're no label? So you want us to write no label as your label. Okay. <laughs> no ceilings. <laughs> no labels. <laughs> new, new, new high. Not really. 4355. Five. Again, right below the level, 4357. We've waited. This feels like those other days, though. Again, we're honing in on Euro clothes. This would have been your old Euro clothes, but still got another hour. New stance on Redfin? No. <laughs> it's been almost 12 months, and my same shit still applies. <laughs> Do not buy this stock unless it goes below three. And until it shows three, just don't touch it. That's all. And then sell covered calls if you got it, and that's it. Just, you don't even don't don't even think about it too much. If that don't say three, you hit four thirty nine. That wasn't three. Then nope. Then there you go. And there you go. Just wait. Just wait. That's all. Otherwise, you know, just do your thing. Twenty one. You want three dollar Redfin, three seventy, three sixty, three forty. I forgot. I got it at one of those prices, but yeah, I just said don't buy. It. We bought it and we killed it. And I just said I would not chase it. And I'm glad. And I hope you effing listen to me, because again, we bought it here. We bought it at the low threes, and then it rocketed up. And you know, again, as the year was going nuts, and everyone's like, should we buy it at ten? Should we buy it at nine? I said don't buy it till it goes back to three. No matter what price it was at, I said, do not buy it unless it goes to three. And that's it hasn't gone there yet. And we sold covered calls. It was great. But I wouldn't, you know, Redfin was like an extreme value play. It was really risky. And we just, we hit it at the perfect price. But unfortunately, it's not, uh, you know, like, I, I wouldn't really try to chase it. So, yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Mm-mm. I have not closed the covered call. No. I, sh I, I wish I rolled it over. We would have made even more. But uh, no, I still have it. But that's what allowed me. Even when we were up at like $4, I was still up now 100% uh, with how we purchased it. Because again, we got a decent amount on the covered callback. So like one more year of Redfin, if it rallies up and I sell one more covered call, 
we're going to get all of our Redfin for free. Uh, meaning we're going to have collected all of our investment back in covered calls. And then we just have all of the equity just sitting there. So that's why I'm just chilling on it. And I like I'm saying, you make your money off the buy. In that case, just the low price is what helped you on it. AstraZeneca plans for phase three Zibotentin combo trial underway. I would not buy Redfin here, no. And then Netflix levels, uh, I think 438 is the next level to the high. 437, 438, if you get above here, you open up to 445. If you can't get above, uh, what's it called, 438, then we, we hug back to like the uh, 430, pretty much 429, where we started today. Redfin did bad on earnings. I don't know why they're up so much. What is Redfin? Have you ever heard of a uh, bluefin? It's a tuna. So like bluefin tuna. Some would even say it's a very fast fish, the Ferrari of the sea. Uh, it's very expensive when you go to sushi restaurants. Bluefin tuna is considered a delicacy or toro, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. But uh, either way, the uh, bluefin is for fish and then redfin is for real estate. How do they make sense? They don't, but I just never want you to forget. So now you're never going to forget because I explained it with bluefin tuna. And now when you hear redfin, I hope you naturally think of tuna, but also a real estate company called Redfin. Uh, so they you, you probably heard of them. It's like Zillow. You can find houses. They have a brokerage, all that good stuff. But yeah, Redfin. Makes sense, I know. I got you, bro. I see <laughs> long tail tuna. Ugh. Mm. I would I would try Redfin. That's the th that's the thing. That's, that's how you know I'm kind of stupid. Because like if someone at the restaurant was like, "You want to try Redfin?" I'd be like, "Yeah, let me get a Redfin. I'm down." But it'd probably be fake. Redfin was down because fear, up because pause. Yeah, but they reported yesterday and their earnings was just not good. But hey, maybe in a, a pausing environment, they do good. You saw it when, I mean, Redfin has the ability to move. But like I said, just out of pure safety for the portfolio, you know, I'm glad because, you know, if we get any bounce here, even towards the end of the year, any of the names we bought, we, we bought them when they were low. So it's easier to recover on those. And then any of those other names, you know, once you get them good and they run, you know, it, it does its thing. So like I'm saying, Redfin, I just, I wouldn't chase because I, although it can move, you know, just you want a cheaper price. You're still in Tesla calls. Are they hitting or what? They're just at 220. All right, oil's above 82 now. So hold up. We might get that also. Again, like I was telling you, we either die at 82 or not, but if we could get above here, I think we might be able to get up to like 8250ish, 82.60. So let's see, oil's starting to run now. Bonds kind of calmed down. Spy's been doing a little bit better there as financials have recovered. We've been all witnessing that here. MP Dubs. Let's go, young bond man. Mm. Okay, spy still working its way up. Video up twelve since a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's a lot of things though. A lot of things have moved wickedly. This is the biggest week of the year now. Again, we were questioning it yesterday, but like, dude, if you guys have you pulled up a weekly chart? It's hideous. What is this? Oh, that's MCL. Look at that. Bro, you have not had a week like this. I mean, I guess maybe in... That was like July. This is like most hated rally candle. The only other time you saw a weekly candle this big, bro. A green shoot like that was literally last November, last July, and then last May, bro. Again, every time around 4,200... And then financial conditions and then all of that. 
Hopefully it's just not this move. That would be the killer thing. That's why we dip by by the dip. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm glad we have our long term. And then again, some of the swing trades, they came back, which was good. But that was messy. <laughs> that wasn't. I'm telling you, bro, that was very painful. I, I'm glad to get it all back. But I was like, damn, son, you know what you just went through was was horrendous. Uh, so even if so, if you held again, I mean, it was the sad part is it was how many how many days ago were we just having people complain about the long term? And again, I mean, you've you've recovered all of that back too. That's the insanity of all of it. But it's like you've, you know, we just had these discussions. You know, what you just saw was wicked. Co-founder of DraftKings about to go on Bloomy. All right, I sold the MCL. I did point four, forty bucks on it. I was like around. We were down seventy at one point, but like forty is where it held to the downside. I like that range. Disney. It's crazy how the market quickly brushes off risk, which is exactly why you should always hold the long term. Because, again, you could go three months of going down and then in five days make up a month and a half of that. And that's that's literally the whole point. That's the that's why they say the market timing fallacy, because there's there's differences of like if you took a portfolio and then you excluded the biggest market moving days then you would your your portfolio over 30 years, 10 years it's it's completely different. So that's literally what what's kind of been going on for the most part here. You know, that's why you always like the one day out of the market when it does rip, that's where you can make up half of everything, which is nuts to think about. Mm. At 10k to invest, what would you buy? It's things that are still low. And things that haven't gone up too much in the last couple of days. So your risk right now of like seeing the market, the good part is that there's still names that are low. There's still names that I bought this month that are still trading lower. That's your advantage. But then the bad part is that, you know, you want to invest now. You have all this money and then stocks just move like 10% in the last week or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So the problem is you could buy something today, but like if it has any any bit of relief the other way, you could be down 5 10% real quick, unfortunately. Mm. We did the same thing. I I said the same thing. I I mean, we're going to find out. I think this time was a little bit better and worse at the same time, and we still have uncertainty. We're not out of the clear just yet, but again, I mean, I, I literally was just saying, like, dude, we had people getting mad about their long term. Again, it just it happens once every year the market goes down. You know, some people are like, oh, should I sell out? Should I get out? And I told you, just make up your mind the 50-50 point. When I had the discussion, we were, we were at four. It was the first time we hit 4,200, a little bit before that. It was on this date, like right around here. I was telling you to speak now or forever hold your peace. So you're up since then, actually, now. But because people, I said 4,200, this is the make it or break it. But, you know, in general, a lot of people were just, it, it was easy to get fearful. But we were talking about how literally what happened last October and how usually every one of the moments where there is trouble, that's where, you know, something, an opportunity is born out of. Mm -mm. But don't get too much FOMO yet. You're not, like I said, we're not out of the clear. Let's 
Yeah, so the Redfin covered call, that's in January 24. House passes 14 billion Israel aid. Again, bonds are, markets moving a lot better than bonds right now. I think it's because the banks are still climbing. Caesar's on the high. That's another travel name on the high today. The next event is uh, absolutely nothing. Just the final earnings and then your next set of data. Uh, but honestly, just kind of coming into the end of the year. So next week, uh, you're going to get Fed speakers, I would say. China data, then Tuesday, Red Book, more Fed speakers, couple of bond, bond auctions and how the bonds trade. That'll probably be the big one. And then you have Fed Powell next week. So that's November 8th, Wednesday. So that's it. We could pretty, AKA, you could loosen conditions until November 8th. And if they loosen too much, Powell beats us with a stick. And then if not, we, we kind of do our thing, 21, do your thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. I'm selling big winners in the long term. I don't like to sell. That's If you haven't noticed, that's like my fatal flaw and fatal advantage. That's where people love me and hate me for it. Uh, because, again, we've had a tremendous plays that have rocketed and we didn't sell and they came back down. Again, we still own them to their, our, this day and they, are, they still have a home in our portfolio and they make up their own little segment, which I appreciate. But at the same time, too, there's other names where it's like, again, I'm glad we never sold Abivi. I'm glad we never sold Coca-Cola, even Altria, with even how it's moved, all the dividends you've gotten on it. And again, it's just like if we sold early, we would have gotten out of a lot of different things and not built a portfolio where we could sell cover calls and have opportunity for the future. So it depends. But the general idea is, is make your plan and commit to it. But I do think, you know, if they are good, solid names, especially if they're winners, that's how I've made, again, I held my winners and I held on for dear life and that paid off, especially if they're good. So, I mean, if you really think they have future, it could go a long way, but I'm a big fan of just holding. So I, if I'm not here, it's simple. You got to really understand it. You've already watched me for several years but when I make my mind up, I act on minimum 10 years. That's all you got to do. So don't if you don't want to hold for 10 years, why are you even buying it? I'm not here to try to trap you into holding. I'm trying to stop you from buying shit you don't really want. Oh, come on, baby. Bonds coming down, equities up. Very interesting. Do you get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Because it's super, it's not to stop you from doing anything except don't buy shit you don't want. Like really, if you if you cannot say 10 years, I'm going to hold that, I want that, then just don't buy it. That's all, trade it. Don't put it in your damn long term. That's fine. I'm not, but there's no, like, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to your future self or whatever. But it's very simple. Because if it's like, hey, I, I do believe in this for the long term. I want, I think this company can change the world. You only thought it was going to change the world for one day, two days, one year, two years. No, it's like that, like for real, it's like you want to give it time, but it's like at the very least, if you're going to buy it, act as if you cannot change your mind for 10 years. And if you don't feel that way, you don't feel that confident, you don't just don't buy it. And that will, will save you a lot of this, this issue. And then again, go get 5% on your cash. Hmm. The trap is getting weird here. Again, bonds down once again on the long end. Uh, 10 years not moving as much. And then Shy is still doing great, which is the crazy part. But interesting to see. Equ equities are in la-la land now. Again, we have, what, what, under an hour to Euro close? 45 minutes? DraftKings new entrance may grow overall betting market. DraftKings. Arc on the high too. UAL as well. That's coming back. Is him yet? Ever been in terms of the content and the quality of the gameplay. So I really feel like the future yep. is bright in terms of sports viewership. By the way, Taylor Swift uh, isn't hurting the NFL viewership either, bringing huh, some new true, people true. in. And 
Yeah, so yeah. that's a, when, just when you thought you, you had the, you, you couldn't think of a new way that she could unlock an audience for somebody, there she goes. So uh, I'm sure the NFL is enjoying yeah. that. She's not, I understand she's not going to be in Frankfurt, though, Germany, for the game this weekend. No. I, that, that's, as much as, that's as much as I know. But, but all the other games, maybe. She's, she's an extra boost. Um, while we've been talking, the stock's up a little bit more, so that certainly helps as well. Maybe this is, this is part of the reality TV story as well. Maybe that's what we could enjoy, too. Uh, Jason, great to talk with you. The stock's up nearly 13% as we speak. Jason Robbins of DraftKings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Taylor Swift. Thank you for having the influence. me is everywhere. What, what was the show called again? Love is Blind. I'm not talking about that. That's no. the one that we should. You have a reader. You read that prompter. <laughs> <laughs> it's about cricket. Saudi Arabia expressing an interest in buying a multi-million dollar stake in the IPL, the Indian Premier League. If you, I, th that is a fantastic thing to watch. I, I, honestly, amazing. If you want to watch some great sport, the IPL. The Kingdom proposing investing as much as $5 billion in the IPL to help lead the expansion into other countries. That would obviously follow recent investments into professional football, golf, wrestling, I understand, as well, is on that list, too. Anyway, is, but love is blind. I love is blind. I guess the reason is, though, why? Like, is it, is it an image thing? Is it truly a moneymaker for Saudi Arabia? I mean, I'm, I'm really trying to, but they're putting so much money into it. Anyway, that's a different conversation. The, the relationship between the, relationship between the, the, between the Gulf and, and the Indian subcontinent is a really strong one as well. That one in I terms of makes make sense, particularly point. with cricket. But anyway, yeah. that's a different conversation. Cricket, they want your teams. All right, Chattadonia, you're making some moves here. I don't know how much you like it or not. Again, bonds near the low, which is ironic. But a lot of things ripping out to the high. The squeeze may be back on. Again, I think even Cart just rocketed up. There was DraftKings, a lot of those earlier names. So you are still moving quite a bit. Where, where's Redfin Tuna? Redfin Tuna is still up. Again, Tesla. Tesla's at the low. You have NVIDIA killing it. AMD and chip makers. Carvana, NVIDIA again with another high. And then even ARC is running. So 43.60, four point. This would have been a new high if we didn't wick. Remember, the wick was off of the good data. So that was the, uh, it was the good data that softened up and then we somehow went down off of it. I sold out of oil, but that one's hitting another high now. You want me to play Pump It Up? Yeah, you want me to play? No! It's been one week. You just had the biggest week of the year. Calm down, sir. Calm down. I told you, from now until 4,600, you better get your prayer right life with the Lord. You better get it right with the Lord, okay? That's the only song y'all getting. Y'all need hymns. Y'all need prayer and hymns that, that you actually make it up to 4,600 and that we get you. Okay, that's just prayers is all you get for now until then. Until then is prayers. So, amen, amen. Mm-hmm. Is this the Santa rally? A lot of people are going to want it to be the start of it. But for now, this is just the rally off of extremely tight conditions finally calming down. And we need to know when the conditions are going to tighten again. But for the most part, you have a lot of room to move until conditions are retightened. So that's why we, we just got to keep monitoring it. Like we've said, every data event, everything you've had this week was an opportunity to destroy you. And you dodged all of those bullets. So like I even just said here, you're not going to get too much next week, but you have Powell on the 8th. So by Wednesday of next week, if conditions loosen too much, Powell is going to have an opportunity to tighten or loosen those conditions and bonds once again. So keep that in mind. Google's on the high now. I haven't really seen no big tech except for like Netflix hit the high. So you are starting to get some. Again, Amazon's not up there. Is Apple? No, Apple's pinned. Microsoft wants to, but Google, Netflix, I don't know about Meta. They're not at the high. Google and Netflix are the ones moving here. So again, you're even getting a little bit of big tech. A lot of those smaller cap runners are the big earnings beats that are still continuing. They're doing it. And then just a lot of chips too. NASDAQ up 1.2, SPY 1.0, Dow Jones 0.7, and Russell up 2.9. So two points off of hitting a new high. Again, 43.87, I believe. Oh, three, eight, seven on the mother in blood now. Okay. 
Yeah, that's your next level to the upside if we could get above there. All right, where are the bonds? TLT is the only thing that's being suspicious. And, and IEF. The bonds are being weird on that from here to here, and then we're going to close on Euro in 30 minutes now. Mm. Again, UAL at the high, MP dub. I mean, yo, we're getting above 5.5 five, five, five to even 6, but it's crazy. We even had a four handle not too long ago. Tesla's going lower though. So like we've been talking about here, it's not it's not uniform of what's moving and it's not what you would think. There's been uh, some weird earnings effects too. Mm -hmm. TLT is up 6 is funny. Nothing has changed with demand, only difference is supply. Or I think it's the reverse. I think nothing has changed with supply. All of that supply hits next week, even if it was less than we thought or not. It's like that's still $500 billion that's hitting. Uh, but then the demand has increased. If you haven't noticed, this last five days has just been people talking about, no, 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 don't buy bonds, don't buy bonds, don't buy bonds, to now they're like, maybe it's getting attractive. And now if Powell, if you think Powell is going to not raise, it's raising demand. So if anything, I think supply is the same, and then this is all just – this is demand-driven, but the problem is you know, that demand could be met with supply, and, and maybe it's not enough. So the, you need people to want an appetite for bonds and keep buying them hand over fist over the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, if we go back, that bond supply may you know show that it's not as hot as we think. But then again, if you now Powell pauses and you're coming into 2024 and now you really think Powell is fully paused and is not going to raise rates, I mean, what do you think about long-term rate expectations? Now might be a good time to secure your 5% bond. Again, three weeks ago, they were telling you that's a bad idea. So, But now you are you are reacting to what this whole entire week. Like we said, you had many bullets. We They all ended up turning out good somehow. Not really. It's just all rigged. What? The data? What? Revision? Mm. So still holding. You're back to 4360. Oh, I was thinking 4350. So not bad, though. You made some progress again. You got Euro close in 35 minutes. Tesla's low-key kind of flushing right now. It's only up 0.45, but could go negative. And then I think Google's still running. Mm. Dude, Tesla. And then carts came back up to 20. Cart moves like insanity, bro. The daily candles on cart are insane. But that's I wanted that breakout. Well, money Monday. Money Monday, bro. I, that's the thing. If we now close this green this week, are we going to have a green Monday? <laughs> every Monday has been green and every Friday has been red. Now you've gotten every... I think every day this week has, is going to close green. That's insane. Again, five days in a row. Not only did... I don't... You rarely see that. Every day of the stock market is about to close green. And then not only that, it's like the progress that it made. Not only is it sizable, but it's like consecutive back-to-back -back green days. Your Monday through Friday, every day has been a green day. Also not on my bingo card. Stars is laying off over 10% of staff exiting the UK. Is that Para or WBD? No real. Again, those are all still up too. Even Disney up 2.2. 
once you hit rock bottom, let's hope you go up. Well, that's the thing. Again, if I asked you last Friday if this was the rock bottom, uh, there was people, millions of dollars would have bet that it was going lower. Literally. That's the crazy part. If I took you back to last Friday, you know, it's kind of nutty to think about. So, you know, that, that. so it's not like we hit rock bottom. You were at a place where people were like, oh, shit, we could drop, we could do the same thing again just to go back to exactly where we were one year ago, exactly in one year. So, I yeah, I, I do think uh, rock bottom is either perception, and, I mean, you can use the chart too, but it was, uh, you know, definitely, definitely not rock bottom, but that's why the, the flip – and what you've seen, and again, the bonds, the the bonds don't underestimate what the bonds have done to you this year and their impact. You know, uh, it's you guys are lucky that we focus on it a lot. But like, if I, I could only imagine if if I didn't understand what bonds were doing to the market, this this could have looked so insane. But you know, the, that pressure and what happened in real world effects was just nuts to think about. So, but for the most part. I don't think we bounced off the bottom yet. I'm still a little worried, but it is setting up for, again, nice green. This is what I was expecting in October. Maybe it was just, again, one month delayed and then started off just a couple days after the new month. But it is because of all of the events and mainly, primarily, because of bonds chilling out. So, yes. Oh, Ricardis, baby. What's up? Richard Lewis has updated his name. To Ricardus, it's what I use on platforms. Happy Friday, that's it. He's making it known the new name saying Ricardus. Oh, no. <laughs> Happy Friday, baby. Ricardus. <laughs> Tesla's going lower. Ricardus. Mm-mm. Yeah, a little ticker change. He just announced changing the ticker. <clears throat> Tesla, NVIDIA. The sharpest moves are the counter trend. Well, this was wild. I mean... Whatever we're getting now, I mean, ever you didn't realize it till the last two days. Yesterday, bro, but like when was the last time you had multiple gaps on the chart? The only other time I could think of this was COVID. Literally. When are you gapping up? And look at this. This looked like my teeth. This ain't supposed to have this gap right here, bro. This is pre-braces. When does it look like? Usually it looked like the market got on braces. You don't gap up multiple days in a row of just not touching each other on the candles. Again, I I think the only other time I've seen that would have probably been, co like, again, even most hated rally, that didn't even happen. You guys understand that, right? You had big candles, but, like, you were starting low and moving. Dude, these are gaps. So forever in the name of the charts, you're going to look at these, and it's, it's just it's going to be on just gigantic gaps. I think it was COVID. That was the only other time. I got to do the daily. Literally. So it was the worst three months since the only other time. Oh, no, that was just gaps down. You didn't even do it during COVID, bro. Like you'd have a couple of like you'd have it every other day. Like here where you had those launches. You see what I'm saying? But even then they would connect. Then you would start to get the gaps a lot more or less, but wicked, dude. Or was it November? Yeah, here. That November 2020, you kind of had it. Yeah, right here. One, two. This candle somehow touched. Yeah, leading into the November rally. It was November 2020. That was the last time I've seen any chart that looks like this shit. Which, again, I guess you've had the worst three months since 2020 and now it is November it's easier to see the gap downs than up yeah that's what I'm saying it's just 
whatever this was, like it kind of blindsided everybody. Like I said, I I was positioned for bullishness. I thought it was going to happen in October, but at the end of the day, like you were just, all right, we need progress, right? But I'm like, two days later, it's been so fast. You have quickly now just turned this into something you really haven't seen in a, in a long time. But there's still a lot of other lingering factors. So we'll see how that trauma plays into this. Man. And don't forget, election next year. Congratulations. So very similar setup to November of 2020 now. Even just, I'm, I'm going off the gap ups, but my goodness. How's Burry short? I'm I don't know if he's still up on it now, but I'm sure those last couple of days changed things. Dude, it's 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 insane. Again, even to see a lot of these plays come back that quickly, uh, but it's it's been a this move has been something something of a mix of a lot of fear to just I don't even know if the relief I still like I said, I still think what Powell said was hawkish. <laughs> I didn't like uh, I didn't like it the same way Nikki T did, but overall, I mean, it's still just the, the amount of optimism that has came from massive fear. Again, last time we saw that was a couple years ago. Or the PayPal. Did that one hit? I don't Again, they thanked me for it, but I don't know if that one actually hit. The arc was a good hit, though. Yeah, I'm still down on the PayPal one, unfortunately. So fawkish. That fake hawk. We get to hear from him on Wednesday, though. So we'll see. Highs leading into year. We got 30 more minutes, or 24. That's the crazy part. Europe's not even closed, bro. It's Friday. You don't even have Euro closed yet, believe it or not. So welcome. And then, bon again, bonds have already done a ton here today. And we're still like again they that that was good and the market liked it but they came back up. I don't like this. I want the I want them to hold four five and lower. But maybe maybe we save this for next week if we don't go any lower than here today. If anything below four five next week could be good. But I am I would like to see that today. That would just get everybody excited. I feel like I'm not short on the Jap. I'm uh, I'm I'm long on it. The JPY. I think. Yeah, I'm still down on it, though. Came back a lot, though, actually. We were down a lot more, but, you know, still I'm down overall, too, because that's a rollover. Mm -mm. How many people lost money holding Bill? You just don't like me, huh? Yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's here to shame me over B-I-L-L. -L. I'll take the, listen, if you want to, Blame me. I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? But it's not what you think happened. I promise you. <laughs> Bill, the other Bill was act, was literally the best trade of the year. No, hands down. No matter any way you cut it, even with S&P barely, like we're like 9, 10% now. And you didn't have to deal with any of the swings. I mean, unless you wanted NVIDIA at the bottom. That was, that was good. But yeah. Do you take supplements or pre-workout? Not anymore. I used to, you know, we used to have our own pre-workout. And then I slowly weaned off of that. And I haven't been drinking caffeine lately. So lately I just go on. I left the gym early yesterday. I had to poop. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Again, my schedule got messed around. That's why, like, we even, uh, we did the, uh, what's it called? We did the watch list a little later. But uh, I, uh, I was at the gym, bro. And I was getting my workout in. And then, like, Dude, I just started getting the bubble guts. And I was like, oh, man. And then, like, dude, I, said, I, I was, like, halfway through my, my workout. I had, to, I had to back out. I had to leave. I had to leave. 
Uh huh. I had yeah, and I just I had to go. Mm hmm. So, I say as long as I don't have to poop, I have I have good energy. As long as my poop don't hold me back, that's literally the link between my energy. It's so weird, I know, but yeah. Yeah, I like the live watch list. I did one I think last week or two weeks ago too. It's a nice little addition. That way, if I you know if I'm flexible on the watch list schedule a little bit, if I have to do other things, it uh, it's nice. I liked it. It's fun. It's a different vibe. Uh, you know, it's good if you're there because then you know I I think it opens up the door for some questions on all of it, and then I I hope it gives the recap for the people who need it as well too. Especially when a lot of things have been happening. What this has been such a wild week, bro. It's crazy. You found one in Vegas, Anytime Fitness. They have private restrooms and showers. You could legit relax and drop one comfy. I'm still kind of nervous about taking dumps in public places, but I feel. I'm not saying I haven't before, but I feel. I feel a good gym, a good gym gym with a shower. Mm -hmm. Arm pop. Again, I watched those IPOs. I'm already in cart. That one just fluctuates. I'm going up a dollar, down, back down. Yeah, I see it's moving all over. But again, some of those might be able to move. Big commerce on the high. You just got here. Yeah, it's weird. It's a weird question. Somebody was asking me about the energy and other things. So. I was just answering the question, but welcome. Like, like the video, like the video, say what's up, show some love. I hope you're having a good Friday. Honestly, I, I think everybody should be having a good Friday unless you shorted it. But, and again, I under, I understand the shorts too. Remember they, they, they bullied me earlier in the year. So I, I, I already got whipsawed by that. So, but either way, it's still just. A very wicked week we have gone through. Even the month, everything. It's so hype. Like I told you, y'all better get excited. Y'all better get excited. No matter what, remember, always opportunity gets born in these events. And sure enough, I mean, you're you're starting to see markets you haven't seen in a couple years. So fourth, we still haven't hit that high. Maybe we're going to have to wait till Euro close. 20 minutes still, but you're two points off of that. That's the high from the ISM services. Bookings on the high. Hold up. Wasn't booking down? Yeah, bookings already recovered. Mm. Mm. Dude, it's a $5 spread on booking. <laughs> oh, booking. Yeah, booking went red to green. Again, it's catching up with Expedia and all of those. Again, you're going to get Uber and some of those next week too. Any reversal? There can be, but I, you're not going to go red. Maybe by next week you'll get like a real reversal if the bond volatility comes back and you can't hold it but like even today even if we drop i don't think you're going red i just i i just today was a good day it is non-farms and we've been confused by them and they've been tricky at other points but i really just don't think uh again you've had a lot of good things happen here uh, all throughout the week and then you know how the setup is you have bearish you have some of the most bearish people uh, again bank of america michael hartnett talking about going long and just now it's just you've got you've dodged a lot of fucking bullets, man. It's insane. No, even the war headlines again. It's not even a. It's the war headlines should not be too detrimental. I have Disney in the long term. Yes. Again, we bought a lot of things. They even they went down this month 
uh, some names that we picked up in the long term. But, like, again, you see it here. It's just however the next couple of months play. Some of them are doing better. Some are right at break even. But all of your money comes back. And then it's like if we will be set up with size for any anything in the long term if it rallies. That's what you got to realize. You may not like, you know, and be like, why are you buy him out here? Why? But just every rally we come into, we're coming into with more size than the last one. Just don't ever forget that. That's why what I said, talk to me in 10 years about it. Uh, but, and again, you feel it on the downside too, but it's also just in general, you know, a lot of long-term names waiting on them. Some are coming back. Some have came back, some haven't, but we're going to be riding that out through regardless. And then we're going to take our deposit and hold it. I do want to buy some other stuff, but hopefully if we already start rallying before I have access to the account, then there you go. Mega crash. You're not the only one. This could be the final breath. Again, you just saw what the yield curve did and all of that. Uh, but the sad part is the this could be the last gasp of air, but this could last anywhere from four months to a year, a year and eight months. Why? Because that's how other situations played out. It's been 10 years since you said this. You were right. I'm, what are you talking about? Mm -mm. Uh, Disney is very good. Very, very good. So no, and no, it could happen both. I mean, you're more likely for end of the year rally now if this holds up, but see what Powell says next week. Uh, but other than that, though, you know, we'll see. Anything could happen. Josh giving the pump it up people a glimmer of hope. It's there. I mean, it's not, again, I mean, it's not like, look at, look at, you see what just happened there, but you need those bonds. I'm still skeptical of the bond market. That's the, th like I've been telling you for a long time, you know, is all of this shit fun sometimes? Sure. But like, fuck the equities. I don't care. The bond market is where the answers are. And, and quite frankly, that's the thing that could, it's not as stable. Again, markets will go up 500 points down. That's not stable to begin with, but we need to make sure these rallies and, you know, the points, the bond, like, like again, the four, five, the four, two, five, we could telegraph this because it's so important. And this is the slow moving factor that we need to work itself out. So <clears throat> again, this goes down, your, your stocks are going to rally. Same thing with the yield curve and all that. Again, we look up the two. Like I told you guys just the other day, I'm sure you see it today. Uh, it's actually not even in, un, uh, flattening as much or steepening uh, or inverting, excuse me. But once that starts inverting, once yields, this is going to give us relief every time. But if the bonds still pose the same threat they posed the last couple of months, enjoy this shit while it lasts. But it's not there. But at the same time, if this is... The bonds can you say, OK, we're done doing this bullshit for the year and things calm down and Powell and everyone else is supportive. Your pump it up is back on the table. So I, I 10 year below four is fine, but all I for stability's sake and, and I hope it makes sense. I want four five to four two five. If you st if you hug between four five and four two five between now and the end of the year, you can hold up the market. Why? Because rates are still high, you still keep tightening, conditions don't ease too much, and then they're one, one and a quarter higher than last year, and now it's now you get to really do higher for longer. You see what I'm saying? That's why 4.5 to 4.2, that is a reasonable range of tightening conditions while, while at the same time not loosening them up too much. That is where I think that's the sweet spot I think we could fall into, get a little relief as long as the bonds calm down from there. But if they don't, if they stay above four or five, your problem, you're still in problem land. And again, if it goes below four, two, five, you enter problem land again. Why? Because then the yields start dropping so fast, conditions ease up, Powell may not like it, or at that point, everybody's buying into a recession because we're collapsing. So. Four five to four two five is kind of a sweet spot, I would say, that I'm looking for in the short term to determine how this shit holds up.
there are two more. Well, there's one more Fed meeting. There's December, and it has a SEP, but there's two more sets of data. That's the best part about it. You got two more CPIs, two more non-farms, uh, and then you have one more Powell. But then you get Powell on Wednesday, and now you just got a new high. 4365, again, 4387, uh, or I think 73. That's the next level we want, and then 87. Yeah, Disney's going up. Even Apple, man, back to the 0.86. My goodness. Uh, Bank's still killing it. Yeah, Goldman's up 3 4. KRE, they're not doing as much. Bonds are staying chill, though. Government shutdown, I mean, it could become an issue on the 17th, but I, I do I think they're going to punt till January, especially with the speaker already on board for that. Mm. I'm getting gray hair. That's good. Gray hair is fine. I lose my hair. You know, my hairline has been gone. He's been missing for a while now. I've been looking for the uh, my hairline longer than I've been searching for yield, believe it or not. So... You know, if you if the hair's turning gray, that sounds like good news to me. That sounds like the entire reason why we bounced. Because you're like, wait a minute, my hair is changing. And the market's like, hey, man, you could have lost your hair. Now it's gray. Now you got wisdom. <sighs> oh, Landon, that's fucking Goldilocks. Bring that. Sh yeah, buy it. Nah, you buy it when it's higher, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> You're a redhead, so you'll never get gray hair? Oh, man. That's crazy. What's it like? What's it like being a redhead? Is it as is it as unique as they say? Isn't it like a small portion of the popu population is redheaded? 4365. Caterpillar's on the low. There's, actually, they just went green to red. Spy's still working its way up here. Googly, Netflix, Goldman, any of the other leaders, they're just killing it. That's not true. Oh, man. Wow. Dollars lower, too. That's crazy. So that means the ISM services, bro, you really did drop 10 cents off of that. That's nutty. Bro, the dollar's murdered today. The dollar's down 1%. SWTX on the low. You're getting a little cheek lay there from the top. Thank you for making the market go up. I tried my best, man. I hope it helped. I hope it helped. Your grandma lived till 85. She had a full red hair to hair. That's kind of hype. That's it. You guys got red beards? Whoa. You should do Riz videos like Goose Wayne. Who's that? <laughs> Somebody said that the other day, but what? Oh, whoa. Yeah, bro. This is this is how my... I think this is how my hair is going to start looking. I might have to do that. Oh, man. I thought I was going to be the one who made it look cool. But yeah, I am going to start looking like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm I was debate I'm going to have to do this off top and then I'm but I'm I I was saying I'm going to keep the curly hair on the sides. You know what I'm saying? Mhm. Mm you do a gold digger prank. I'd kind of be down, bro. It's been a while since I did a prank video. I don't know if it'd be as well received. DKS, Dick Sporting Goods, pop. 2% on the candle, I think. I can't calculate it because I don't know how much it was up earlier. DKS, pop. Pop at the highs. How about Bitcoin on the high? Yeah. Big Five Sporting Goods, no, that's not it. 
Mm-hmm. Like Bozo the Clown. Yeah. My my girlfriend said sometimes I look like the dude from The Simpsons. Sideshow Bob. I think because I get like I get like my hair just get crazy. And then sometimes my head, my hair will get like dreaded without because it just I don't brush it sometimes and it just gets awful. Arc is hitting a high. Mm hmm. All righty. Again, I don't have a headline on DKS. If you see anything, let me know. Go Mr. Clean. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I feel like my my hair is just like a symbol. It's a symbol of like, one, I'm not Sam Bankman, even though it looks like it, but I just love it. Now, nothing says, <laughs> nothing tells you how I feel about everything, about Amor Fati until you look at my hair. You know, because that's it. It's my symbol of life and freedom. That's the way I view it. It's just like, uh-huh. It's just beautiful. I just let it flow. You could tell you, like, do you have a job? Do you do something? What is wrong? Why do you look like that? Are you confident like that? You seem confident like that. I'm confused. Rate hike odds arc. That means no rate hike. Well, yeah, that's why we bought it. Mm-hmm. I was there, but you get used to it. We'll see. I still got time. I just, time keeps on slipping, you know? Into the hairline. Yeah, I don't have any news on D on DKS. What do you think about Sam's sentence? Uh, we didn't talk about it. I mean, I heard 100 years possible. It's like 20 years of charge, but he's still going to get like a... I, I still don't think it's going to be a, it might, I think it's going to sound shocking, but I feel like he's going to be out on the streets in like four to five years or running some weird crypto thing from prison. Just, I just want the list of the bankruptcies. That's all that matters. Again, uh, in a weird way, Sam did wrong. He messed with a lot of people. He fucked with society and culture. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, all that matters is that the the list from the bankruptcy court, if they're not going to reveal to us the creditors, uh, you know, is there is there really justice? You know what I'm saying? Like, it seems uh, it seems like you're you know, they're giving you the the head on the stake, but they're not giving you, uh, you know, the, the the evidence or the autopsy of the actual crime and what went down. So unfortunately, I I still I don't think there is justice until uh, we know who the creditors were. I heard he may not even get jail. I think he has to get minimum ten years, but like I'm saying, I think I think he'll get let out pretty early. Four three six six. You hit a new high on that, so you're slightly working up. Another high on Netflix. Remember, Ford was running up earlier, but they calmed down. Mm. He's in twenty five years easily. We'll see. Some people say you have to serve minimum like eighty percent of federal time, so. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe he helps the government out like five years into his sentence. He helps them. He partners up with Bill Gates to develop the world's ultimate cucumber. And then they let him out early for good behavior. Yeah, maybe Biden pardons him. Yeah, I'm telling you what he did, what this young man did to cucumbers. I'm telling you, the advancements he made for all of, all of us to enjoy, 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 enjoy a fake cucumber. I'm telling you, he deserved to be free. It's an injustice what we did to this man. All right. All right, good. Thank you. What's his name? Solomon? You're free to go, Solomon. I meant Sal. Sal. What the fuck's his name? Sal, the one with the guy with the curly hair. Fuck it. Anyways. Bill is on the high, not the bill you think. 
I can't believe it. My man came in here today just like, fuck you, Josh. You just lost everybody money on Bill. You piece of shit, Josh. So much for stable. Man, so much for spell check. Damn it. Maybe we should have made it clear. Y'all ready to go. We're locked and loaded. And this is how we have two wars. <laughs> Y'all ain't even down to y'all. Uh, y'all really down with the misunderstanding, hella quick too. You're like, fuck it, run it, end him. All right, still working up. Did oil keep going? I wonder if oil came up with this move. No, it came back down. We got out perfectly. I'm down. Beautiful. Four, three, six, seven. Sam's it's a they it's not the one I showed you so that one everybody was putting around that was fake the one where he looks like Brad Pitt that's not actually real I think the real court drawing he looked like a fucking uh he looked like a how you say uh Smeagol mm -hmm. MP dubs. All right. I need to go to the potty. Netflix. You guys know we're up on Netflix too. We have $10 a share now. From down $70 a share to up 10. I know. It's sound. I'm still holding it too. That's the wicked part. But my goodness. My goodness. But now I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I love you. God bless you. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. See you in a little bit story all over the world, but also some European earnings feeding into it. Kind of countering that, and the other side is the geopolitical risk story, and the Israel-Hamas war has been impacting Brent crude, which is kind of the global benchmark for oil, separate from WTI. We're down 4% on the week. We've seen yields come down a little as well. The German 10-year burn 2.63% off 20 basis points over the course of the week, and euro-dollar, the euro up 1.6% against the dollar. It's been a fun week. We've been showing you European markets because of the time difference this time of year but that's it and those european markets then as fun as they are have been dictated in large part by macroeconomic policy making over here in the united states and of course a lot of that has to do with the fed yesterday well on wednesday indeed but also what's happening in terms of the data the rich data we're getting and the cooling that we're getting in the macro economy here in the u.s from a jobs perspective the goldilocks scenario is on the stocks they rise here in technology we're up nasdaq 100 1.3 percent basically best week for the big benchmarks since last year. So clearly a desire to be getting back into some of these stocks that have been sold off. I'm looking at two-year yields, as you'll see, currently dipping down. In fact, across the board, we've seen bonds rallying, yields falling, as we anticipate a less hawkish Fed. I'm also looking at what's happening in the world of Bitcoin. And actually, interestingly, even though we've got a weaker dollar, significantly weaker dollar, we're still seeing Bitcoin just to the downside. That seems to be a read across more on what's happening in the world of court decisions around Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX, the guilty verdict, Ed. Yeah, and that is the biggest story of the day, one of the biggest stories of the year, and we'll get back to it. Sam Bankman-Fried convicted of a massive fraud that led to the collapse of the FTX exchange, follows a month-long trial where we heard from Sam Bankman-Fried himself, from some of his closest friends and confidants. We want to go back and look at how the trial played out with Christine Adams, partner at Adams, Dirk and Kamenstein, who has over 25 years of experience as a former federal prosecutor specializing in SEC investigation and white-collar crimes. Our reporter earlier in the program painted the picture. She was in the courtroom the moment that the verdict was read out was the verdict and the seven guilty counts that came a surprise to you honestly no i was a bit surprised that the verdict came so rapidly but i think everyone who was watching this trial with some background and expertise saw this ship sinking rapidly uh, it was clear that Sam Bankman Fried's testimony was going to be what it ended up being a Hail Mary pass that was not successful. Uh, there, 
really wasn't a question when the government kept things so simple and just simply showed that Sam Bankman Freed said one thing and oh, did no, entirely no. another, and that his image That's how they was drew him? a ruse as part of this he don't whole look like that. cryptocurrency fraud. They still drew. No, I saw Christine. Uh, the lead headline. Of I don't know what's legit or not. faces decades in prison they after Swift us. guilty. Bro, they won't tell us. I'm telling. I don't think we're ever gonna know how they re how, what the real drawing was like. And they don't want you to, because once you know what they really drew his ass like, then you're going to realize, like, no, no, that don't make any sense. Stop being, man, that's crazy, bro. I can't, even if I put the puppy filter, I don't even, I can't even look that good after looking like that. That make no damn sense, bro. He should have gotten to the cosmetic industry, not crypto. He would have killed it. Show me that before and after. Sam Bankman would have been selling better than Ozempic. This makes no sense. Mm-mm. Yeah, people of the future, they're never going to have, and they're going to scrub all the cucumber pictures off the internet, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's bank. Well, you're hitting new highs all the while here. So, Chad, welcome to the squeeze. I mean, you sh we knew this from the morning. You had your little opportunity. The bonds, again, they're still up, you know, just all stacking on everything. Redfin's running. I mean, now it's just more buybacks. We do get Powell next week, but... Uh, it is Euro close in six minutes. We still have so much time. That's the crazy part. But now you're about to enter Euro close. You're at the high again, 4370 to 4373. That's a little bit of a baby level. We got to get past there, and then we will be good to go. MP dubs even. Let's see. KRE. If that could come back up, that could lift up a lot too. Bank of America warns of banking industry deposit delays. The fuck that mean, Bank of America? Why are you putting it out on CNN? <laughs> Euro close. Oh, wait, I'm tripping. I read it. I thought it said 26, not 36. My bad. Yeah, Euro close was five minutes ago. I am tripping. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm tripping. I thought it said 26. So we're at 36 or 35. Hmm. As long as TLT does not go lower, that'll be good. Redfin's running right now, which is r funny as hell to me. Again, they're earning every time it's had bad earnings. I think it rallied. Didn't that happen last time? I think this earnings was bad in July, and then it rallied. There was one of these, and I was like, "What is happening? That's insane." It's up fifty percent from its low, and even Snapchat's higher than their earnings, and they didn't do too. Ho they did good, but they blamed. Damn Israel, which is weird. Again, still near the highs. Again, Netflix is doing great. China plays would be next. Those came, those didn't come up as much. So we're still going to have to wait for them to get the green light. Yeah, the Zillow news. Mm -mm. You could have got away with saying you were testing the chat. Oh, I could have. Yeah. Mm. The offer you countered 650. I don't know how bad do you want the property. You could tell him the uh you could tell him the what's it called. The other unit's not permitted. You know, it gets harder to sell by. It just, it all depends on the, the competition you have there. So, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to the wire? There's no way that all came out, did it? Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. No way. So you just had a dump of, of like, of analyst upgrades, downgrades, maintain, JP Moore. You guys saw that, right? No, that was real though. It wasn't falling behind again. That was just all all of those were released at twelve thirty seven. So again, just BMO Capital, JP Morgan, City, RBC. So you're hearing from analyst. We got wacky on the junk. Hmm. But I don't think you're getting any crazy moves off of it. 
Mm. They all just shorted. Well, there was a lot of shorts coming into this. That is part, again, one of the reasons people have been bringing up, even for this craziness here. Again, the CTAs and uh, even, I think, like hedge funds, they were down. It was like two standard deviations short uh, literally as a couple of days ago, which is wild to think about. Mm. Weird cart that came back down. Amazon. The TLT pattern. I mean, this is a, it's good to get a vertical. We haven't had a vertical off the bonds in a while. I want to say since SVB. Yeah, SVB was the last time the bonds went vertical like this and like gapped up and held. So you, know, you might get a little bit more volatility, but again, if that could hold up, that could be great. The question, though, is what base does it form at? Like what, what range is it going to chill at? Roku again on the high. Any random plays? I don't know. Can I? I Wait, I don't know. Can I log into my TD still? Yeah, 8.30 p.m. Uh, random plays, I think, but not really. Again, we had a lot of expirations. Your Nikolai, your SoFi, but no. Random plays, been hurt. Still has cash. It has mostly cash, but everything else, not so much. Will you add more capital to the random place? Uh, there's there's still 800 bucks in it, so that's eight more weeks, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe we end it with the options. There was, a, again, that Tesla would have saved us, but I sold it off too early. I was saying I, I thought it could have, but it was uh, we only gave me like 300 off that. They closed that like plus 1,000, I think. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. But the long term is forever killing it, man. It's crazy when you look at the two and you see the difference. Yeah. Honestly, this wasn't even a shake, even for the small long term. I don't know. Can I log into Schwab? No, I can't until Monday. So this will be our last time viewing it on TD Ameritrade, Chad. You know that? This will be your last time viewing the law. I wish I had the other one. Uh, but that's already in the limbo. I have it in the other. I could like kind of show you it. Uh, I have to get you the screenshot, but yeah. Mm hmm. So that's it, man. This was since we started it. We began October 8th, 2019. So that's like, what? Is that four years now? Yeah, this will be our fourth year. On the Almost on the dot. One month behind. Goodbye. This is our friend. We still have him. He's still the journey continues. The journey will continue. And he is going to carry on. It will now be on Schwab. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's not, not a graduation song. We got evicted, bro. The fuck you mean? <laughs> they, I got evicted. I got my, they, they tied up my other funds. I was trying to move out. Then they stole my U-Haul. And I said, cancel the U-Haul, cancel the U-Haul. They are like, too late, too late. It's already in freight. It's already in shipment. Oh, too late. Can't do anything. Now you got to wait. Now you got to wait. You got until November 3rd to get the, out of here. I'm sorry, no exceptions. Oh, you had time. I'm, they gave me a 30-day, 60-day notice. They pinned it on everything. They said, get the F out of here. This ain't no graduation. I got evicted. I didn't even want to leave, bro. I, do you think I wanted to leave? This was an eviction at its finest. This was eviction at its finest, bro. Mm-hmm. You should download data. Uh, maybe. I already I have all my statements. I did that already for everything else. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I don't think, I mean, as long as everything's in there, we'll be good. It'll be good.
Yeah, bro, the dollar dump is wicked, but market's starting to come down. That's your first bigger candle since the morning here. Again, uh, you already had Euro close, and don't you have Kashkari coming on here? Again, Bank of America appears related to automated clearing house. Love in the law term. Thank you for everything, Josh. Amen. Amen. You let that expire. What happens? No, I, I made a Schwab account, so I moved the other one. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it now, so I could still see my whole positions for the long term. But again, they're just it has to like fully populate. And again, because I, I was going to transfer everything. So you should remember all of these names. This is all today. This is your long term. This is the big account. It's like the small one. So I had that one moved over. I'm having issues with that. It just it takes more time than I expected. But then since once I realized it was going to take that much time and everything, I made a Schwab account so I could transfer the other two accounts just because I was like, this isn't it wasn't feasible for me to do it. So either way, I'm walking away with the Schwab account. Uh, that's the moral of the story. I may be down and put them all towards E-Trade, but E-Trade kind of pissed me off with this little process already. But then again, we'll see. We'll play with both and see which one we like. Yeah, you have till today to do it, I think. Today is your final day. Otherwise, they're going to mail you a check and close your account. And then if you have the wrong mailing address, you're fucked. <laughs> so make sure, make sure you have it all there. Mom, I told my sister to do it because I can't do it for her. Uh, but I told her to do it. But this is this is mom's account. This is mom's long term right here. It's already moved, but it's not like fully moved. So I could see my positions, but they have not completed the full transaction yet. And then the other ones, I didn't initiate those yet because after seeing how long this was going to take, I was like, yeah. No, it's not for everybody that has TD. It's if you were part of the, uh, if you've been notified as part of the recent uh the recent like round of people they're sending over All right, ten year little weird candle. I was at the top private biomedical organizations in the company. They said they expect the industry to grow six to eight percent. Do you think that's good? It depends, but it's decent. It, you'd have to look into the last couple years and base them up against that, but at the same time, uh it is uh like a lot of people, six to eight, isn't necessarily that good right now because inflation is high, interest rates are high. That That's kind of break even if you think about it. So it all depends, though. All depends relative to the relative industry and, and how they've done lately. <clears throat> Ball stick. You're going to get Fed Kishkari. Again, I don't know what time specifically. It's already November, bro. You guys realize that, right? Your next holiday is Thanksgiving. You guys do know that, right? Militant attack killed 16 Pakistan soldiers in Southwest. Mm -mm. Veterans Day. Do we get the day off? Is the market closed? Let's 
Last. I'm looking at the Fed website right now. I still can't believe it's November. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. And then you got Bostick coming up. Uh, what? You got Michael Barr today, too? You had Michael Barr in the morning. You have him today. I got to see where Kashkari is speaking. In a leadership discussion at the Economic Club of Minnesota. So we might not even be able to get it live. I don't know. Lately, there's been a lot of Fed meetings that they've been keeping for pay-per-view. What? what? Events. Calendar. Leadership discussion. Oh, he's with CNN anchor Poppy Harlow. Need to contact the organizer. It's on Eventbrite? Dude, it's literally... I was just joking around. It's pay-per-view, bro. What the fuck? So if you want to listen to the Federal Reserve, you have to join an event like it's fucking Taylor Swift. But the Fed listens, they say. But you can't listen. <laughs> Interesting. Register. It's not on YouTube anymore. Yeah, I don't think they're going to. Well, even then, usually, like, if it's at these events, they stream them. I mean, most of the time, listen, I didn't know they monetize the Fed speakers like that. I guess it makes sense, but uh, I don't I can't even buy a ticket. <laughs> like I'm down to buy a ticket, but that's still a little weird, but still I don't even think I could I could buy it. It says they have no upcoming events. They're just doing it on there. So I don't know. <coughs> the troll to hold the watch. Well, this hold, I think generally, I mean, we could give up a little bit. Maybe we go a little higher here. Things have been very squeezy, but I do. I think we're going to close green. I think we're going to have five days of green this week. It's going to set a little weekly record here. And then, you know, we'll see what the bonds do if they want to break below four or five today or want to do it next week. But we have Powell on Wednesday. Unless any of these Fed speakers want to just say something crazy out of pocket. But I don't know. Dollars down 1% today. It's been a while since you've seen the dollar wreck like that. And again, it looks like those squeeze days in terms, every little red candle instantly gets eaten up. Microsoft's on the high now. They were kind of chilling a little earlier. Mm. LHK. Oh, we did not do push-ups. No. Let's do it. I'm down a stretch. We're a little late, but get your ass up, Chad. We've been behind. The market's been going good. A lot to focus on. And we were early today. So get beside your desk. Do 10 push-ups. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It doesn't matter. Just get the body moving. Okay, I'm going to do my back stretches, my shoulders. You know, make sure the rotator cuff good. My legs in front of you, chest to the sun. Flex the core. Tuck the hips in. Boom, baby. Just start looking good. You're looking good already. You look better than the market right now. Look at rebound. You need a rebound. Like the market rebound, rebound your spine. Sit up straight. There you go. And breathe in a little bit. Go. Breathe in, breathe out. So relax the jaw. Go. Now one more time. Breathe in, but on the way out, you're going to do the dragon breath. Go. Then breathe out with your tongue out. Go. Just like that. 
friends. Boom. Boom. Ooh, oh, I forgot I did back. Ooh, I did back in biceps yesterday. Is the tongue out necessary? Yeah, he's dragon breath. No, it really does. It's actually like, uh, it's the, it moves the muscles in your like mouth and jaw. Like, ah, you don't feel it? Like, ah, open your mouth and go, ah, and then open your mouth with your tongue out and, and you don't feel it? Ah, 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 it's good for you. You got to relax the jaw, man. A lot of tension. A lot of tension. I got to resist Tansei too. Yeah, DraftKings keeps going. I'm doing the resistance. It was good, man. Helps Jaws clinched all day. I know it happens more than you think. More than you think. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Couple more stretches will be good. It will be good. And then Spy is still holding up. I see DraftKings on the high ticker so much today. It's still going. Maybe even Bonds. I think Microsoft's interesting with all of it. All right, we good. We good. Net is blowing my mind. Dude, that thing wasn't it clapped. I would did that one hit? We were talking about that one being a good one. I thought they went down afterwards and then they rocketed up. But I don't know if twelve percent was two standard deviations. But if they hold up from here, any of these could get really crazy. I'm surprised PayPal's not moving up more. That one could have been better. That went hard. Let's see, two standard deviations. Do, 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 do. What was it at yesterday? It was at 56. I don't know what it was pricing in. Uh, it kind of went up. I don't think those leaps would have, the out of the monies that I would have got, I don't think they would have hit. Yeah, not so much. Do you know if any margin are being transferred to Schwab the same way? I think it is. I don't think you're going to have an issue with that. I think if you wanted to uh, transfer it to like E-Trade or something, you would have to, it would have to be like, you'd have to be having cash, I think. I don't think you could hold a, a margin position. What am I doing this weekend? You asking me now? We haven't even had. We just barely had Euro close. Uh, I got a couple of plans. A couple of plans. Going to chill. Go out a little bit. You know, going to go party because the market went up five days in a row. Not really. I'm going to get a game of 2K in. You know, hang out with the parents. You know, do your thing, 21. Do your thing. Real estate. Actually, not as much real estate, uh, believe it or not. So kind of cool. Four three six. We're just again the next level is forty three seventy to forty three seventy three. I believe forty three seventy three is the main one, but we also got a little bit of weird volatility leading into it. Net is going up again. DraftKings now running AMD as everything else. Some more, some more than others, but some of those like earlier. Square was the one that didn't get it. Square and PayPal, but DraftKings up 16 now. That was only up like, what, 9 in the morning, I think, or 12? It's still moving a lot extra. Power on the high, Wayfair. Again, you got Net as well, too. Oh, VKTX. Oh, shit. I forgot about that one. So that one came back to green, even after the shitty earnings.
out of real estate. I mean, real estate's been great for me. I mean, it's not, hasn't been bad. The only thing that hasn't been good is that, you know, my, uh, like activity is just lower. Like, again, I'm not buying as many houses. I'm not flipping as many houses, but you know, as far as like a fixed real estate portfolio, I mean, my worry isn't in funding, like, you know, the loans and all that shit. So I'm chilling. It's been great. We talked about my Airbnbs yesterday. Uh, they're booked. They're a little less booked by now uh, than I was any of the last two or three years. The Airbnbs are actually, you know, it's still, I'm already 50% booked for November <clears throat> every weekend. Again, one of my Airbnbs is fully booked already, even to the end of the year. But for the most part, uh, real estate's been chill. Again, I've been, I've been, I've been taking it chill. SPXS, I have seen it. There's a lot. You've seen even SPXEW. So there's a lot of different SPX indexes that you could pull up. ACAM on the high. Goldman again. Let's see financials. The Euro close by did work. Now we still have the other three and a half hours after getting all of that data from not too long ago. I don't do I do marketing? No, not for the Airbnbs. I just there I've had them for a long time so like I don't know it's just I think it's I I get hooked up by Airbnb. I price good, low cleaning fees, super host. Like I think I have like over 200 reviews or some shit. So it's just it it goes a long way, but I haven't like I don't advertise it on a like a separate Instagram or anything like that. Will Netflix get low? I think Netflix, uh, right now, Netflix is testing its next level. Again, like 435 to 438 for Netflix. That could open up the door to like 440s and 450s. Otherwise, it'll get trapped here 433 to like 420. And then Spy is about to hit another high here. So, again, it's about 30 minutes exactly since Euro close. MPW, not really today. It just uh, we talked about it a couple days ago. I think everybody's under the same impression. It's gonna move with rates, uh, you know. As if so, right now, would I buy more of it? Not necessarily right now, but if rates recover, I'm expecting MPW to recover with it. And then you know they hopefully management doesn't mess things up or rates get better before then. Bill Ark is still going up. Spy new highs. Baker Hughes rig count 496 versus uh, 504 previous. Interesting. And then Bonds, 10 years catching a bid. Spy literally going higher now. Everything's ripping. Net still going up. DraftKings 4369. So watch. If it's slow at 4370, maybe that'll be the level. But 4373, that's the real money spot. That's exactly where we're trying to get to right here. 4373 means every single downside gap has been filled. You still have these gaps on the way down, but literally uh, this is a big level. Again, and we spent a lot of time here, I think even in the past too. Any at last time we were around here, remember it? It was that 4370. This was on the first drop. This is where we bounced off of August. So remember August was bad and then we bounced halfway through. It was around this price. UWMC, it's a little bit higher, I think, than when we uh, took the tax loss one year ago. So, like, pretty much same price after 12 months. But yeah, MPW, uh, just wait for interest rates if they stabilize or not. Mm -hmm. VKTX, this one got clapped and now it came back. Interesting. So, one of the bios. Mm hmm. I wonder what they're going to do. A 
Let's see. There's a couple of biotech plays we still have. So VKTX, that one came back. Again, their earnings was not good at all, but they had that weird little recovery. This is just their first pop. Goldman on the high. That's it. Win. Oh, yeah. Caesars did good. Damn. Win's up. To, okay. That's. I thought I said it was up 8%. They crazy. And DVA. Redfin came down a little bit. So, again, all those other runners, they're still holding good. DraftKings, net, all of that. Ten years trying to make a bid. We just hit a new high on the SPY. That Abby Vi on the low. And 4.36954. Half a point below that right now. The Vita up two. That's kind of a, a little vertical, if anything. That one's kind of going straight up. Where is it? I don't see anything on it. DVA? Yeah. DeVita. No, it's old. <coughs> Two-year dropping hard. That's good. Again, the 10-year is going too. The two-year, I think, was one of the bigger winners. It moved smaller than the other ones, but given the fact that the two-year don't really move like that, uh, it's, it's, it means a lot in terms of both policy and how people are feeling in the market. House passes bill on Iran oil sanctions. Guild on the high again. More of those biotechs. XLVs up there. Staples 0.5. Uh, financials into the high. I think that second half of this little Euro close rally, I think it was all financials. Yesterday, DeVita unveils new research to improve care and quality. During annual American Society of Nephrology. Hmm. I know you said Redfin needs to come down, but isn't it decent to get them when they're valued at 500 million? Everyone I know uses them. Well, that was my logic again when it was a lot lower, and I, again I think at that price it was it was worth less. But you just have to be careful. It does make sense. Your logic makes sense. But the fact is, this thing can move 50, 20% in a day. So if you're willing to make a 10-year decision on that and you like it here and you think this will be the lowest it'll go in 10 years and you're confident in that, then, I mean, feel free then to, to, to grab it now. But like I've said, I just buying it any higher than we paid for it, <clears throat> it was a losing strategy all year. Like you had your moments maybe, but if you're trying to buy it and hold it, you need it to be sustained. So it's up to you. We spend too much time talking about Redfin. No, you're just the Uber bear on real estate and you get mad about it. Does that seem more likely? I think so. I think so. I think we've answered like two questions today about it. <laughs> You picked up some yesterday. You're deciding to trade out. Well, that's the thing. Y'all need a. If it wasn't a long-term decision, I think y'all just got to figure out what's a long-term decision or not. You know, that's why I think a lot of people are. If you're going to see FOMO. The only way you're going to justify FOMO is, is literally through that. Oh, there it is. It showed up. Ha ha. Contributor to CNBC. Thank God. Fortune magazine and the Wall Street. All right, you got a Fed voter. He's usually bullish. I mean, let's see what he says about what just happened here. We're pleased to have him making an appearance here today. Uh, Neil Kashkari uh, is chairman of the Economic Club of Minnesota. 
He took office as president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis on January 1st, 2016. In this role, he serves on the Federal, uh, federal Open Market Committee, bringing the North Ninth District perspective to monetary policy discussions in Washington, D.C. In addition to his responsibilities as a uh, monetary policy maker, Neil oversees all operations of the bank, including supervision and regulation, treasury services, and payment services. Neil leads the uh, the bank in many in, in leads the bank bank's many initiatives. I'm stumbling because there isn't a light here. Just so you know. <laughs> um, among Thanks them, for that. Uh, he was instrumental in establishing the Opportunity and Inclusion Growth Overstock Institute, just got news. Whose mission is to ensure Somebody said they're ringing the, the bell. Class research, that world class research, research helps to improve the economic Substantial insider of all purchases. That was what I saw from Poppy yesterday. Poppy Harlow will be moderating today and participant as well. Uh, Poppy is a Minnesota native and co-anchors CNN This Morning, weekday mornings from 6 to 9 p.m. a.m. I wish it was p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can work on that. Thank you. <laughs> um, alongside with uh, Phil Mattingly, she impacts her... Poppy, her like P-O-P-P-Y, not P-A-P-I. world's top business you know, we got and a, CEOs. We have a diverse she set of chads in here. Supreme Court Justice, <laughs> uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I said Ginsburg, Poppy. Canadian Prime Minister what? Justin Trudeau. No, P-O-P-P-Y. And moderated two CNN presidential like a, like a poppy halls. plant. She's been nominated like the Americans for used Emmy to destroy the Middle East. throughout her career. Not and like her reporting a has poppy. won numerous industry awards. Without further ado, Poppy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Man, fuck you guys. Now I can't unhear it. Now I just sound like a white lady saying, okay, Thank Poppy. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> for coming. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Bill. It's so nice. Why'd y'all have home. to say that? As long as I am gone. I can't unhear it now. <laughs> and thanks to everyone who's been so warm in their welcome. Um, I love this topic. I care deeply about this topic. I have, I've never been a business leader, I've always been a journalist. Um, I came this close to being a lawyer, maybe one day, went back to law school a couple of years ago, but I've been fascinated by leadership. And I've seen and experienced um, and witnessed through all the interviews I've done how critical strong leadership is, moral, ethical leadership, and how detrimental not having that can be. So thank you both for having this conversation. Um, I'm fascinated by the fact that Neil, you met Bill and really wanted to talk to him deeply about this. And Bill, I'm glad you have the book. I just got to read this. It's a fantastic book, Me True too. North. And my friend and one of our CNN contributors, David Gergen, writes at the beginning right. of the book, this book can help us find our way. If individual leaders can recognize when they have drifted away from True North and make successful course corrections, as Bill George argues, nations can as well. Surely authentic leadership beats what we have now. What is someone's true north? It's who you are. It's your essence. It's basically you, the beliefs you have, the values you are raised with, and the principles you lead by. And if you can be clear about those things and stay on course, and then find where do you find joy and fulfillment in your life? Is it through your work? Is it, I hope you find that kind of joy in your work. By the way, welcome back to Minnesota. We're delighted Thank to have you. you, a Lake of the Isles person. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it, it really is, that's your essence. And I think the problem is that people, when they go out into the so-called real world, there are so many pressures and seductions that sometimes people get caught up in those mm -hmm. and think they can get, a, get ahead quickly, violate the rules, no one will know and they go off course. And they don't, when you see people getting in financial, in, in ethical and legal trouble, they didn't start out doing, they started out here making some deviations and they get on that slippery slope and they go down that. So I think it's important to be grounded in who you are before you go out and try to change the world. I don't think you can have an impact on the world until you have a clear sense of yourself and who you are and bring that self-awareness. Neil, why did you, why were you so intrigued 
by Bill and wanting to have more deep conversations with him on this when you met him? What was it? It was, I have seen throughout the course of my career, multiple instances of people I thought were highly ethical leaders who lost their way. And I didn't understand it. Like, I just could not have pictured this person doing that. And so when I saw Bill, we met socially through mutual friends, I kind of pulled him aside and I'm said, I'm just picturing this a to me. dude eating a and cucumber he had right now. in his own career when he's doing <laughs> the same thing. I never uh, saw it you know, coming. The fear is, I consider I myself imagine. to be a highly ethical person. If this other person could lose their way, maybe any of us could lose our way. Mm -hmm. And how do you guard against that and protect yourself from that? So that's what drew me to Bill. And we dove into this conversation, and then it also dawned on me, I think a lot of other people would be interested in having this conversation too, and that's what led to us having this discussion here today with you. And we are going to open it up for questions really throughout, so if you have one, please raise your hand and the microphones will come to you. We can do it at the end, but we can also do it throughout as well. I, I, I want to stick with you for a moment, because for those of you who have not read the, and you should read, the 2009 profile on Neil in the Washington Post, after he ran TARP for this country and helped save us and then led uh, the Fed through, through COVID here, now dealing with inflation, you literally went to the woods. You went to the woods, you had run for governor of California, and you went to the woods and you had five, four goals. Build a shed, <laughs> chop wood, lose 20 pounds, and help with Hank's book, Hank being Hank Paulson. But I think in essence there, you also sort of found yourself again. Is that right? I mean, I realized what drew me to public policy was the, a chance to make a contribution, to hopefully make a dif difference, hopefully a positive difference. I always say to people, if you want to help 1,000 people, donate to a charity. That's really important. Do that. If you want to help a million people, you can only do that by improving the public policy of the nation, the state, the city, the world. And so that's what drew me to public policy. And I think spending time in the woods, so to speak, uh, helped me re focus my energy on, hey, how can I make a contribution, hopefully for the better? And you built that shed. Built that shed, lost that the shed. weight, then gained the weight, then lost the weight again. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I thought she Bro, said, and then you built Helped that shit. Yeah. She said shed. Bill, you've been having a lot of It was about the forest story. She did not say, and then you built that shit. No, she says shed. Our perked up when shed. Jamie Dimon said in the, the bank's third built quarter earnings, shed. quote, this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about all those things together, what the war between Israel and Hamas, uh, the war on Ukraine, Taiwan, China, inflation, the great resignation, the return to work, or a lot of people don't want to return to work. What are CEOs telling you about this moment, and how are you advising them? They, and frankly I, have never seen a time of multiple intersecting crises. You just listed half a dozen of them. They affect you. You can say, oh, Russia, Ukraine, that doesn't affect us. No, it does. And anyone who has any knowledge of history know how these skinks and spool out of control, certainly in the Middle East. And so uh, I think the CEOs, I was just with a group of very large company CEOs in, in Paris. We put together a program uh, for them that we get together twice a year. You said and Russia, they Ukraine, are so important. they're very concerned about the situation. That's why things so, spiral really they fast they in the Middle it, East. They're not going to solve these things. But then their companies have to do the right thing. I like thing. his they hair, though. They have to stay the course. This dude, like, 97, and, uh, he got a better hairline than I do. crises and trying to adapt. So up, today, man. as a leader, you have to be very adaptable. You can't just have a fixed plan uh, and have, well, we got a five-year strategy we're following. You actually have to be very adaptable. You have to know where you're going, keep your vision clear. But you have to adapt very quickly to changing. And I've never seen a time when they move so quickly. Yeah. Uh, and so you need to stay abreast of those things. The problem is, by the way, a lot of people who come into top leadership roles are trained for the internal roles, but they aren't trained for what's going on around them. Bob Chappick at Disney was not sensitive to these things. That's why he lost his job. And, Do you uh, want to talk about the Disney example anymore? Because I think that's yeah, interesting. I mean, Bob, well, Bob Iger leaves, Chappick comes in, and then DeSantis and Florida, and then what? Well, it starts, though. He took $580 million in tax subsidies from the governor of Florida. So he has some culpability there. You don't do that. You know, it's a two-way street. When you sit down with the governor and he gives you certain concessions, you, you've got to fulfill those. And he said, uh, but he came in to off say, I'll never comment on anything outside of Disney. And then, of course, I think you're all aware of the parental rights and education bill, which has been dubbed Don't Say Gay. 
but he didn't stand behind his gay employees. And needless to say, Disney has a lot of gay employees in them, so they started protesting. And then he changed the position in midstream. So as a leader, I think Neil's got to know what he stands for going in. He can't, oh my gosh, I think I'll change my, my, mm -hmm. my values and my position on this. I think you have to be clear about you know, what you... One thing that is clear, before Bob Iger came back to run Disney in that moment, Bob Iger actually came out and was very clear yeah. in his statement. He did. So, um, but, Neil, let's take ESG as an example, okay? Kathy Kennedy is trying to kill me. Readers believed slash believe in, okay? And then they put their money toward it, their strategy, their public statements, and then there's been a bit of a backlash. Well, I think they need to make the case of First of all, let's say you're an asset manager. It's not your money that you're investing. You are investing your client's money, and you need to be transparent with them about what their objectives are and, what, and how you're going to invest that money. So to me, if not in that specific example, it's not getting out in front of your clients. It's not your agenda. It's their money. Mm -hmm. You need to be in communication with them. And I think if you tie back to who your constituents are, who you're working for, and make sure that they are in alignment with what you're doing, that's ultimately the protection that you need because it's their money. They're the ones who should be making the decisions. And if you're, if you're investing the way your clients are telling you to invest, then you should be able to look anybody in the eye and say, you know, I'm doing my job. How important is admitting mistakes? And let's take the Fed as an example. How did the we Fed? We never make mistakes. You have, you have made mistakes. <laughs> Rose-colored glasses. How did the Fed, Neil, miss such persistent high inflation. I think everyone wishes they could forget the word transient. Transitory. Transitory. Trans Thank you. Transitory. For... You're welcome. <laughs> See, I already forgot it. But transitory, right? And it wasn't yeah. just you guys. It was no. the administration as well. What did you learn from that miss that guides how you move forward? Yeah. Well, great. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. We missed on transitory. By the way, not just we. I did. I was one who affirmatively said, I think this inflation is going to be short-lived. It's going to fall back down. Therefore, let's not overreact. That was obviously wrong now. So a, a bunch of stuff has happened. One is the pandemic was unlike anything any of us had ever experienced. Yep. The shutting of the economy, but also the reopening of the economy. You also had waves of COVID, and then you had Russia invading Ukraine all at the same time. Nonetheless, we got it wrong. So one thing I tried to do is when I do make a mistake, and I do make mistakes, I try to be very disciplined about owning it not just in my own head, but publicly. So I published an essay a year and a half ago mm -hmm. where I came out and said, I got it wrong. Here's what I got wrong. Here's what I looked at. Here's what I've learned from it. I, I can't promise you I'm not going to make mistakes in the future, and we're not. We want to minimize the mistakes, but even more importantly, we want to identify them early so that we can adjust and then not double down on this misbegotten path that we've been on. So. I, Again, we're going to do our very best. Every one of my colleagues is doing their very best to understand the dynamics driving the economy. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to make mistakes, but we need to own it so that we can learn from it and not repeat those mistakes. I know you can't tell us everything, but can you take us inside the room at the Fed when you, when you said, I got this wrong, and hopefully your fellow central bankers um, conceded such as well? What's that? What is what are those conversations like, and how do they help you now? Because what you decide impacts all of us. Well, I mean, I think it's over, hopefully what we're left with is overwhelming humility, which is we didn't understand the dynamics of COVID. We never lived through it before. There was so much uncertainty around the reopening of the economy. Now there continues to be great uncertainty about how financial markets are responding. So right now, right now there's a lot of focus on the, the Treasury yield curve and what's driving some of the moves in the yield curve. Mm -hmm. If anybody tells you definitively that they know exactly what's driving that, mm -hmm. be very suspect, because <laughs> none of us knows for sure. And so, you know, in, we'll all have our various theories, but the big takeaway is none of us knows for sure, so let's not bet on any one explanation, because yeah. we might get that wrong. Bill. I think this is a great example. Uh, we all make mistakes. And I think as a leader, the first thing we have to do is own our mistakes. I wrote a book a few years ago after the banking crisis of mm -hmm. 2008 and 2009. Uh, and the first lesson about leading in crisis is face reality, starting with yourself. Mm -hmm. And reality changes. You know, no one is clairvoyant. You don't know exactly what's going to happen with COVID. You don't know exactly what's going to happen with all these events. You didn't predict Russia was going to invade Ukraine, I'll bet. 
but then when you see it changing, you have to be adaptable. That's why I say, as a leader, but you have to say, we got it wrong. I think it's very courageous that you do it. I know a lot of leaders that won't admit their mistakes, and what happens then is they start covering up their mistakes. Those are the ones sometimes go to jail because they, yeah. they, they, maybe if they admitted the first mistake, they could have uh, gotten you, out of it. You, it's so important. You teach this in your courses, right. right? And you have a pretty poignant example of your time at Medtronic on admitting mistakes. Well, I came to Medtronic. I was still chief operating officer, and we had to reorganize the globe. And I wanted to have a president of Europe promoted a very competent person come from a subsidiary. Uh, to President Europe, very powerful position in the company, and he had all the qualifications you could hope for. Six months after I appointed him, our general counsel comes to the door and said, Bill, can I call up our chief auditor? That's not the norm. And he, they showed me he'd been running a bribery fund on behalf of Italian doctors for 24 years, but the four years were on Medtronic's watch. So firing him was the easy thing for me. Called him over from Belgium, said, you know, you have to leave. He accused me of imposing European ethic, or American ethics on Europeans, but anyway, nonetheless. <laughs> Uh, I said, no, no, John, these are, Ameri these are Medtronic ethics. Beat our standards. You violated our standards, not, not some kind of American. But then going to the board of directors, the executive committee, and I was the new kid on the block, and then going out publicly. We went right away the same day to the SEC and said, wait, can we come down and see you and talk about this? Because here's what we found. And fortunately, you know, it was, it could have very easily been a Foreign Corrupt Practice Act violation. Mm -hmm. They, in the end, they did not hold us. They held, they You're a little bit lower than when we popped above it, here. Uh, because they said you self-reported right away. Oh, yeah, nothing has happened. Kashkari yeah, barely even talked. You have to face that. But if we had tried to say, well, let's not talk about this. We don't want anyone to know. It could have gotten I much I kept worse. up the bonds and spy here but to see because, again, um, there was a gap from here. In March of 2002, Neil, uh, reminded people of a letter that Abraham Lincoln wrote to General Grant. This is from July 13th, huh. 1863. My dear General, I write this now as a grateful acknowledgement for the almost inestimable service you have done to this country. I wish to say a word further. When you turned northward, east of Big Black, I feared it was a mistake. I now wish to make the personal acknowledgement that you were right and I was wrong. Yours very truly, Abraham Lincoln. Wow. How do you bring that up? Well, uh, those, of, <clears throat> those of you who know me know I'm a little bit of a history junkie. <laughs> and the thing about Lincoln that just amazes me is if Abraham, I mean, he, it, Ulysses S. Grant knew that Lincoln wanted him to do something else. They both knew it. But Grant went out of his way to say, I want to acknowledge for the record that you were right and I was wrong. And so that's like my great reminder. I'm not Abraham Lincoln. You're not Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but if Abraham Lincoln could go out on the record and say, you were right and I was wrong, then you know what? So can we. Uh, and so that's just a <laughs> reminder that I always say to myself, if he, if he could do this in this situation, why can't I have the courage mm -hmm. to do that? And so I love that letter. When I, I mean, it's a famous letter, but I, stum it was a, I stumbled upon it. And it was like, wow, yeah. how cool is that? I love it, too. I think it's interesting how much Abraham Lincoln has been referred to in the last, you know, especially yes. in the Republican Party. Um, in, in the last, especially couple of years, it's, we should we should pay attention. Bill, you you wrote this great um, piece ten years ago, more than ten years ago. Why leaders lose their way, and in it, you say that every leader needs to ask themselves two fundamental questions: Why do I want to leave, and what's the purpose of my leadership? Right. Why are those two questions so important in helping leaders not lose their way? Well, if you're leading for money, fame, and power. You're going the wrong way, and you can get yourself in very deep trouble. OK, you will do well financially if your organization does well. Uh, and you know, fame is very fleeting. You can be you know, Jack Welch, the greatest leader of my time, and now you know, he's, his people are questioning him. And you know, if it's all about power, you're, you, our job in leadership is not to have power over other people. It's to empower people who work with us, because they can do so much more when they feel empowered. And I think if you need clarity of purpose, why are you doing this? So, uh, uh, Poppy, Pop, yeah, I actually left a great company, Honeywell, to join Medtronic because the purpose was making money. 
And yeah, I believe I, we've been in a lot of business and know how to make money, but that can't be your sole purpose. And so we went to Medtronic and our purpose was restoring people to full life and health. And we actually measured it by how many seconds does it take till another person's health is restored by a Medtronic product. So I think you need to have clarity about that before you take on the leadership role. Because if you don't find that, then you're liable to, to go the wrong way. And I've seen way too many people get caught up in themselves and think they're so great and I'm, I'm responsible for all this success when they've got a huge organization underneath them. Let's talk about a couple of examples. One, I would go back to your time on the board of Goldman with Rajat Gupta, former head of McKinsey, was found um, convicted of securities fraud. In you thought this was Jamie Dimon? Book, he still Jamie don't sound like this. His innocence. Jamie's hella what aggressive. What did you learn from that experience? And then let's Jamie talk about Bankman. the conviction of Sam Bankman Freed just late yesterday. Uh, I would love to. Uh, <laughs> Rajat Gupta is a great guy. I looked up to him as a leader. We were on two boards together. I helped recruit him the Goldman Sachs board. He helped me get on the World Economic Forum board. And he was a leader I looked up to. And I'm sitting next to him in the Goldman boards. Now, I had no idea that 16 seconds after this very critical meeting where we had the most inside information that Warren Buffett was going to invest $10 billion in Goldman Sachs and the stock had been on a rapid decline this is September when everything was going, you know, about two weeks after Lehman failed and, you know, we're going to be next. And so, and, you know, the fact of that was highly inside information. There's no one that wouldn't argue that was inside. So he called someone who, a well-known inside trader that Goldman wouldn't do business with, and Raja Jaratnam, who, you know, invested uh, a lot of money, <laughs> tens of millions of dollars, just before the market closed. And, but it was very sad to see this happen. He's a good, he was a good person, but he got caught up in the money. And it's on the record, he was worth $120 million uh, when he graduated, he uh, retired from McKinsey in his early 60s. As I said, most of us can kind of scrape through to the end with $120 million in our pockets. <laughs> but he wanted to be a billionaire. And he got caught up in that, and that unique, he wanted to be in that unique circle of billionaires. So uh, I thought it's sad. Uh, Sam Bankman Freed's in a different class. He actually never did anything that he, to achieve success. He conned a lot of people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just like to read a statement from the U.S. Attorney. Damn, Sam Bankman Freed, oh, he already had that ready one of the to biggest go. financial frauds in American history, okay? Designed to make him king of crypto. But here's the thing. Players like Sam Bankman Freed may be new, but this kind of fraud, this kind of corruption is as old as time, and we have no patience for it. So my question for all of us is how do we get caught up in this thing? He's playing with other people's money. I don't think any of it was his own money. And his firm got up to, I think, 32 billion, or his personal wealth got up to 32 billion. Of course, it's all gone now. But, you know, why do people invest in him? They're pretty, pretty sophisticated investors that invested behind him. Is it FOMO? What, what's causing us to do that? And but we got to realize these people are all outside the system. The Fed hey, I'll tell you is what. one of the strongest. You give us the list of who regulators. invested. I with them all the time the Maybe I can really come back good, with an answer. They're really tough. They can frustrate the heck out of you. If you could just uh, get me that list, no, we could buy, thing, we could get know, to the bottom it. of this, sir. They did a lot of good I don't know how much of a priority this, this is to you. Today, I think you can look at it. The banks being, the regulated banks are actually very healthy. And if we do go into recession, I feel pretty confident they're going to come through it very strong. But we're investing in people outside the system. And frankly, Neil could comment on this if he wants to. I can't find any benefit for crypto. You always have to ask if you got a new product, we got a new product, what's the benefit to people who are going to use it? And the only benefit I can find is money laundering because you, you, can, you can't trace the transactions. Well, you can trace. <laughs> to whom? Uh, the, the criminals. <laughs> do, is, do you agree with that assessment? There, there are some big names on Wall Street who agree with Bill. There's a lot who, who don't. Uh, I, for six, seven years now, I've been asking if anybody to give me one example of a legitimate financial use that is solved by crypto. I've yet to hear anybody. Uh, one person told me, this is a true story, one person told me, oh, he did a transaction he couldn't do any other way and he was trying to buy arms from an arms dealer in Germany to send to Ukraine uh, because his bank wouldn't wire the money to the and arms dealer. And because they were going to Ukraine, he was saying it's justified. It's justified, but yeah. it's not legal for an American to buy arms across border to send it, even to an that, ally. That is correct. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't want to say it's not possible That's that a new any example. utility, any actual I'm usefulness to society right could come from so, crypto. Gosh, I don't want to out. rule out that possibility. But I also cannot rule out that Usually he says he's never found an example. But can I also ask you, given the conviction of Sam Bankman-Fried, 
um, I think it begs the question of Washington and regulators and what does this mean now? Because frankly, you know, something is the Wild West when it's allowed to be the Wild West, when regulators are behind other actors in the space. So what does this mean for regulation, for markets, for other Sam Bankman Freeds, for other crypto firms? I mean, my, I think the SEC has a lot of power in protecting investors from fraudsters. Whether you're selling a bridge in Florida or you're selling magic beans, I think a lot of this should be under the auspices of the SEC to say, hey, we're here but for are they a security investor or not? That's the protection. Question, uh, well, right? yeah, I think a lot of them are securities. Um, but you know, that's a good question. I know the SEC Easy is trying to be high. aggressive and some of this stuff is being litigated. Yeah, but as you said, this type of fraud is, you know, Sam Bankman Fried's not the only one. Theranos, another great example. Mm -hmm. We work, I mean, I, no, not to pick on you on behalf of all of your colleagues. On the media, the we're, media used, we're used to it. The, but the media has a role here. I mean, they hoist I, these folks up fair. like they're heroes. They put them on the cover of Fortune, the next you know, great genius, mm -hmm. and there's nothing there. That, that's totally fair. I think it begs the Fortune <laughs> state to do our own introspection. Not just on that, look at George Santos. There was you know, two small papers in Long Island that had been waving the flag on this before the election, right? And it's incumbent on us in the media especially national media, too. A absolutely. It's on, it's on all Everybody, of us. Everybody, yeah. For sure. Um, I want to ask about your experiences when leaders go astray. TLT uh, on the low. So the 10-year, that's not going two, higher, but TLT, the long end, is giving it up and out. Yeah, well, the, the Fed president examples were a couple of Fed colleagues were trading stocks. <laughs> um, I mean, it was just shocking because nobody what do you had mean? to Bostick did it twice. Stocks. He's like, about I mean, to you speak. Don't to, you know what I mean? If somebody had come to me and said, fucking hey, shocking. you should be careful First that time some colleagues shocking. might be trading stocks, I would have the said, fucking, that's second absurd. Time, I mean, of course we're not plan. trading stocks. <laughs> and so, um, the, you know, I give the media credit. The media asked questions. Let me see your financial disclosures. The Wall Street Journal broke the story, and it led to uh, big changes. And so that's another example of I just can't explain it. I cannot explain how... Uh, somebody I in can't the explain how it in happened in twice would possibly think that that was okay to be trading stocks twice um, and that's why Please, I said, Bill, for context help me, help me understand state media you know, and don't ban me standard, for saying it upon your introspection role, your of not be saying the truth <laughs> ethical standards they have to be above reproach everyone's watching every time Neil does it you know yeah. People are watching everything yeah. he does yeah. in, in a role like he's in. If you're a CEO, everyone's watching. So, you know, you need to set a higher standard for, for yourself. And we, we, when we, we have a lot of, we've had like 400 major CEOs come through our programs at Harvard in small groups of 12 each. That's one thing we talk about. Are your standards above reproach? Is there anything, you know, and how are you going to ensure they are? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be watched to everything and you set the standard for your organization. Like it or not, and some of them don't like it, by the way. But you are the you are the image of the organization, mm -hmm. and it's so important that you set that standard and you maintain it. And it sounds like I'm being purer than, but no, that's your job. That's not being pure. That is your job. And that goes back to the question: Why do you want to lead? Really deeply. It does. Look yeah. in the mirror and ask yourself that question. Yeah. And if it's about you, then you're probably doing the wrong thing. If it's about building a great organization that can affect human lives, that's wonderful. And so. Yeah, I think that's what, <laughs> you have to be clear about that. And by the way, there are a lot of financial people, a lot of bankers in this room. Let me make a strong comment. Next to healthcare, banking's probably the most noble profession because we can't do anything without fuel in our tanks. It gives us the fuel in our tanks. It enables yes, everything I'll else. I don't know, man. Like, like, I'm down if you want to, enables but like, to I'll know. Expand businesses, <laughs> enables us to to protect our funds and then hopefully grow them. Honestly, so man, everybody charging like IT.8% so or APR, bro, it's noble. Even though, like, opinion. different religions have like literally said no banking because <laughs> of what happens when you lend money. Honestly, it's number two, though, next to saving your life through medicine. I want to dig into that more, but are there any questions at this point? I have a lot. Questions, raise your hand. Okay. No. Uh, if you do, okay. And then it call. Yes, I raised right my there. hand. And we're gonna bring, uh, microphone's coming to you, Sri. We're gonna run. If you, microphone's coming. If you could just stand up, if you don't mind, oh, just so everyone can see. I you. mean, tell us your it name. It sounded like they, they were sounding good in the like early, early yeah. with like this. This, this, this try, try got a little while. The mic's right there, Sri. This is Sri Zahir. I'm Sri Zahir. I was Noble formerly dean banking. of the Carlton School of Management, and I'm 
still a faculty member there, and I'm also a life trustee of Hamilton College. So I disagree with you, Bill, apart from healthcare and banking, I think education yes. right, is May right up there. Maybe. But, <laughs> maybe, decide, maybe. I don't know, man. Um, higher education is always I'm been telling you, man, nothing like a fucking banker. Together, you know what they openly, did for me in my disagree life. with each other, but respectfully. And yeah, man, at the fuck end of a the teacher. Day, like, each other. Those are the clearly values more that noble bankers in this world. Right now, they sacrificed their so life to raise up that higher rates education institutions shit, across you know? the country are having enormous <laughs> I can't trouble. He said that. The leaders. In trying to you know that sounded good when he to, said it too. You know, At least to him, he was again. like, "Oh yeah." So much unrest on oh yeah. Around the Middle he East, thought he was like, "You know, saving lives—that's number one." But and so, what nah, advice would you give leaders in terms of how banking. to <laughs> bring, you know, some sense of calm mm -hmm. and respect? And this idea, this Rousseau-like idea, that you can disagree vehemently. But you have to, at the end of the day, you know, support each other. More That's like what bankers for. think they're How nobility. do you reinforce that? <gasps> I feel strongly that as a leader of a great educational institution, which I work at one, um, you've got to get out in front of these issues and make a statement. Because there are many people on your campus with different points of view. Okay, let me get right into the controversial issue. Well, Harvard is the poster child for this yes, right now. Yes. Hamas. Okay. And I came out on Saturday night with a statement on LinkedIn this, and Twitter. This is going to be X. good. <laughs> but, uh, he just said well, Bay King was said, number two in you know, Noble. Now he's talking about Israel and the Hamas and Palestine. Hamas let's, let's and listen. you have to have empathy for the Israeli people. But at the same time, you're going to have empathy for the Palestinian people. They live in terrible conditions. And so I'm not going to get into the battle of all the de details, but I think you have to say we stand, you know, on behalf. And we're opposed on our campus to any form of anti-Semitism or Islamophobia. What? And by the way, if you come to my classroom and you make an anti-Semitic statement or mm -hmm. you say all Muslims are terrorists, you're gone. You're out of there. You know, you can't, you can't stay, whether you're a CEO or you're an MBA. Bill, why have a number of, and I'm not grouping them together, why have a number of college and university presidents fumbled on this recently? Free speech. And I believe in free speech. But there aren't there limits to free of speech? Of course, the Supreme Don't Court we have has... standards relative to free speech? You can't yes. say things, you know? The Supreme Court has made clear yeah, there you, are limits you to free can't, speech. You know, I just feel like we have to say free speech doesn't mean you can say anything that's hurtful to anyone. And particularly, you know, when you make statements to an individual about whole groups of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I think, I feel pretty strong about this, sorry, but uh, I think you really have to stand up and be counted and get ahead of it. And yeah, there are going to be students on your campus, just like they're at Harvard, pro-Palestinian groups, pro-Israeli groups, Israeli donors pulling out. I think she made a beautiful statement, Claudine Gay, about five days later. I wish she'd gotten out on Sunday morning. You guys and won't understand it until you risky. understand yeah, banking is, is noble. But you know what we stand for. Yeah. By the way, you have to know a priori what you stand for. Neil said about how he personally feels about one particular issue that some people would consider in the gray area, trading stocks as a Fred president. But he's clear about that. That's why you need the clarity about twice. your values in advance. The same because Fed under pressure, did the same you thing may twice. Start to vacillate they caught him and then he did it again. No, if mm -hmm. you're he said clear the same about it, then exact excuse. This is what our institution stands for. Sorry. Period. No, my Sorry husband quotes there. Alice in Wonderland a lot to me, and he <laughs> said, "Well, here's the quote: um, If you don't know where you're going, it yeah. doesn't matter what path you take yeah. to get there." Any road will get you there. That's right. There you go. And uh, any other questions as we continue? Yes, right Thank here you, in the back. Good question, Tree. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, the media, are we putting too much pressure and expectations on the media to find issues as leaders? I wonder if someone's going to ask sector. like a left field the stock market already, question. You know, experiencing just Somebody usually right does. Now economically. And the model someone's going to be like, Kashkari, are you going to race? Going forward. Can we get your name too and who you oh, represent? Eric and Mitchell thank you for standing up for the media. <laughs> Go ahead. Eric Mitchell, that's strategic business coach, consulting. Thank you. Okay. It's an interesting question, Neil. I don't know if you want to address it, but are our, our business circumstances as media writ large, should that really have an impact on our job? Well, think of it this way. Think of the two examples we spoke about a few moments ago. Is it realistic to expect the media to do all the vetting work of all congressional candidates? There are a lot of congressional, 400 plus members of Congress every two years. That's a big burden to expect the media. But I will say, contrast that with the media's role in promoting uh, Elizabeth Holmes, Sam Bankman-Fried, 
you know, it's one thing to say you're, you're not responsible for doing all the vetting. It's another thing to put them on the cover of your magazines and say these are heroes a, of the future. They had uh, it. And so I think <laughs> they had one of Sam Bankman at, least at a New York be. Times so, I conference. Agree with you, Neil. But I also that was a thousand a ticket for the media after a lot of these things out he already he went bust. Otherwise, that we would never know about it. The media what? were not doing some form of investigative journalism and knowing. You could take the away the first articles on. for the so, first yeah, five years, sir. What about wrong. after but they found out he was a criminal and, <laughs> and then they still proceeded There's established media to shine him in a favorable light. Become an author right today. So we walk out of here and just publish on X and you can get away with saying anything you want, and they've now removed all the constraints to what you say, and it could be a total, the exact opposite of what Neil just said. And, you know, that's the problem is, you know, it's not vetted. Who's who's yeah. Where's the editor checking what the, that, that's, you, you get checked, <laughs> right? Of course, I mean, I'll just give you an example, and this is why I will, you know, look, I, I still believe, and maybe call me, you know, Pollyannish, but I still believe some of our best days are ahead of us, and invigorated and excited for our new leadership at CNN, just a couple weeks ago, Mark Thompson took over. You'll know him for running the BBC and turning around the New York Times. You know, and I do believe there is that future ahead because there is not only a desire, but a need for accuracy and truth and right. facts for, for actually for our society to operate and to function. So here's one example. Um, the other night, I was going to bed and I was on Twitter and I saw something tweeted out that was video on a college campus of what looked like violence in a student protest. So I sent it to our overnight editor and I said, hey, can we vet around. this so when I wake up at three in the morning, we can know if we can use it on the show. I wake up to a long note from him and standards and practices and the road that overnight had spent the time to say, we believe this is edited, we advise you, you can't use it, let's not use it, da 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 da. I didn't use it on the show. That's what we go through before right. you see something on CNN this morning. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. I make mistakes, we make mistakes. But that is what we can do as media and what we have to do, and that's what you're not getting with a lot of... But that's why when you get it wrong, it just looks purposeful. At the same time, I find a huge <laughs> um, advantage to society for... Like, yeah, we I tweeted him and we asked him if it's Twitter legit. He said, nah, so we ain't use that it. That call my attention that I had yeah. missed before, that I think we need to be covering. I hear voices that I don't hear in Brooklyn, New York, where I live, or when I'm home here. So there's an advantage, but it has to be checked, is what I would say yeah, to that. The checking is critical. I mean, think about... The President of the United States is flying to Israel, okay, in the midst of the crisis, and there's a bomb that goes off on a supposed Gaza 52 hospital. Doordash, actually hit the parking lot, and it's attributed to the Israelis. It turned out it was not the Israelis. By some. But meanwhile, it was wrongly attributed by wrongly some. Wrongly attributed. But meanwhile, some. right, the Egyptian president <laughs> has called off the summit with the President of the United States. This is an important summit. In Jordan, it didn't and, happen. And with the head of the PLO. Yeah. And these were in Jordan, and Jordan called it off too. And so it shows how these misleading sources, without being checked, uh, we have to. I mean, we have to be. U.S. Right, Supreme first. Court decides legality have, of federal so ban hard. on I, firearm I'm bump stocks. Yeah. One of the people I've been working closely with is, uh, is Almar Latour. Coinbase gets uh, Supreme Court review on Journal Dogecoin and sweepstakes CEO suit. Dow Jones, and he came in saying, "We're going to, we are going to only print the truth. That is what we're going to do now." Our editorial pages are the opinion of the owner of the newspaper, so that's something else, and you can debate about that. Yeah. But the, he has at least tried to hold to that standard. And, and there I is think, value to, I think, what the, I read the editorials every morning. I think there's value to right. opinion, too. But they are that. opinions. That's and right. It, it's got a name on the opinion. That's right. You shouldn't publish news, that's right. which is really an opinion. <laughs> uh, as I ask other questions, I want to ask you about Washington, because in that same profile from 2009, they were asking you, will you go back to D.C.? And you said, at that point, there's nowhere else you can have such a large impact for better or worse. Do you still think that's true today? Well, I think it's true, just policy in general. That's what drew me to jump at the chance to join the Fed, to try to hopefully make a positive influence on pu important public policy issues, whether that's in Washington or at, in St. Paul here in Minnesota or a city council. I think you can have positive change. You can advance big ideas and, and help things get better. Washington's not broken. Washington has challenges, uh, which we are all very, very well aware of. Uh, but I do think in times of crisis, our democracy can function very, very well. I think the bigger challenge for our democracy is functioning when we're not in crisis. Uh, that's a great really? point. Wow. That's, a, that's a great point. So uh, can ahead, I just Bill. comment on the business community, which takes its sits with some of these scoundrels? 
But let me say, I think a lot of leaders in the business I'm community not, not are extraordinary, most of all the ones I know are extraordinarily ethical today and really trying hard to do the right thing and are willing to speak out on issues. I'll give you an example. Somebody I've worked closely with, Chip Berg, who is CEO of Levi mm -hmm. Strauss for the last 11 years. He was concerned a few years ago uh, that his, his customers, young girls uh, who wear jeans, uh, were scared. And so he came out very strongly on behalf of gun safety. That's Not right. gun what? control, but gun safety. <laughs> it's actually, yeah. His and he, daughter has asked Levi's a lot ain't of just for life. You got it. Like, and and I know his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> but He's like the young girl. Then he came out who all wear just Levi's. before the Supreme Court decision on Roe versus Wade, and weapon. he said abortion <laughs> is a business issue. Now, he hadn't gotten into the morality, and some of you are going to feel on opposite sides of that. But at least he took a stand on behalf of Levi Strauss that we're concerned about women and our employees. Over you know, 60% of the people we employ are women. We have to be concerned for them. Mm -hmm. Just Chip, to, Chip I'm just saying some people do have guns? courage to get out or and is make, this about abortion? make statements, I'm so confused uh, which now. I admire. And I realize these are controversial, and some of you will take umbrage at this, but that's no, okay. I'm just confused, dog. I have this debate at home over the dinner table with my husband a lot on is that the role of businesses? Is it, it works? Yeah, is this I mean, about genes? <laughs> I've fuck? covered him <laughs> deeply as a as Yeah, leader. wait a minute. And it also, and his business continues to thrive. I think you saw the same thing with Howard Schultz at Starbucks. There are others AMD that would take keeps the running. that you know, it has the opportunity. Spy so could die here, but again, it's business. just been holding it, every single time. Antithetical to Still got a lot of time remaining, at least two hours. Responsibility to our least. shareholders. I would two say hours, you better minutes. know who your employees are and your customers are. In Disney, they didn't back their employees. I think you better know that. Uh, I happen to know the CEO of AB InBev that owns Bud Light, and that yeah. was something five levels down, and I think they regret that. They kind of led with their chin, and you can make your own position about this, but I know they regret that ever happened. Now, take a really complex one right here in our town. We can go right to it. Sure. Our largest corporation, a company called Target, some of you may have shopped there, had a really difficult talking situation. About everything, Target huh? has been the most, let's be blunt, the most gay-friendly company in town, very public about it, very supportive of their LGBTQ plus community, and nationally they've become known that way, and then they had the Pride Collection after the 11th year of the Pride Collection, and they're having employees physically get beaten up. So, um, did you talk to Brian, Brian was Cornell on TV? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he was on TV. It's a very difficult, nuanced mm -hmm. situation. He was on TV yesterday saying, "I felt I had to protect my employees." Here you have two competing interests, both of which are value. Mm -hmm. And I felt he said I had to protect my employees, so he pulled back some. And they, hard, hard decisions, leaders. That's have what I'm to saying. Make. You get hit with these. Yes, right here. And just tell us your name and. And where are you from? My name is uh, Kofi Bruce. I work at General Mills. And uh, thank you for your comments, Neil, Bill, uh, Poppy. I, I would just want to pick up on that last Poppy. discussion there, because I, I think it's really interesting. And it's kind of the challenge of the moment for, for many of us in leadership roles in business, which is there, there's the weight of expectations of the people and the organizations you serve to speak out on so many issues these days as, as leaders, and kind of what's the framework that each of you think about on when, when you wait in, and maybe when you don't? Um, because there's, there's risk either way. Not waiting in has consequences as much as um, sometimes uh, waiting in mm -hmm. uh, proactively does. So how do you think about that? What kind of, what, what are the other factors you weigh? And Bill, you started to, to lay out a few of them, but I uh, would love to hear each of you kind of reflect on that. I'm happy coming. You want to go first? Uh, very briefly, um, for me at the Minneapolis Fed, I think the, the standard is weigh in. Make it count when you weigh in. If you want to weigh, if you want to weigh in every day on something, that's all you're going to do. You'll be weighing in every day because there's, there's stuff happening around the world that somebody in your organization cares about. So we weighed in at the Minneapolis Fed very strongly, and I gave very direct comments when George Floyd was murdered mm -hmm. a couple of days later. Uh, and I had members of the media taken aback and said, we've never seen a Federal Reserve president that stark in my comments and calling out the racism that I saw. And I said, Overstock running. Uh, I don't think we, we got a headline here. yet from whatever that this was, but big candle on our overstock into the highs. This affecting so many of our, our friends, our neighbors, our staff, our colleagues. Uh, I have to weigh in. That was a clear case of, yes, it's the right thing to weigh in and do it strongly with what we believe in. Uh, and then it's just... I, I, I don't have a clean answer. It's just you got to pick your spots and you weigh in when it really counts. 
uh, and that one was an, uh, was an obvious one uh, where it really, really counted. I would say thank you. I appreciate that example. It's a great example. I would say, again, we talk about purpose, Poppy. It starts with your company's purpose and its values. And if this reads on your purpose, if it's a healthcare issue, Medtronic's got to have a position on it. But it doesn't have to have a position on everything. And so, you know, like I have great empathy for the Uyghurs in China. I've visited with them. But that's not my issue. And so as a leader, I'm not going to be commenting on that. So I think you have to decide, does this read on my purpose? So the examples the genes I Genes and the guns and the not safe and the... <laughs> and, you know, frankly, he said none of my employees system. care about the working labor camps in China. Employees. So That's why I use that nuance. I, just, example I don't have any comments on me on behalf of Medtronic. I would just push to your Thank great you. question. I, you know, just eating General Mills cereal last night, right? We talk about when with Howard Schultz at Starbucks, it's they're a coffee company. But he was one of the first ones to come out and talk about social issues, to take on race. Some of the things backfired on their business. Yep. When it's not about the core uh, product of your company, when do you, how do you decide when to speak on it? And I think Neil makes a great point that if you say something on everything, people don't listen as much. Right. That's a, it's a difficult question that leaders have to ask themselves. Yeah. Do you no, have I think advice? you can't just take on everything. You know, I, I, I really agree with you. I think, but I think, again, it, it's got to be what's really important to you. And I use the example also of George Floyd's murder. If you're a CEO in Minneapolis, you had mm -hmm. to have a position. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you actually had to go take a much harder look at what's happening with your black employees and other yeah. BIPOC employees. Maybe their lives are not the same as everyone else. Maybe you need to understand. Yeah. You haven't fully understood that in depth. I remember Ed Bastian of Delta. Yeah. I remember his Northwest Airlines that a great when I was thing? a kid here um, coming on with me, you know, talking about the changes that Delta was making after reflecting on on that, for, for example. Other questions? By the way, he had one of the great statements, Poppy. Delta's values yeah. are not for sale. Yep, I think we have to go pretty soon, is that right? We have one more question before we get to that question, because I'm a journalist, and the media has to ask questions on the news, <laughs> Neil. A couple of quick questions for you just on the economy. We just saw the jobs report, 150,000 jobs added. Still, though, there's a question of, is it yeah, enough there you go, baby. for the Fed to be able to stop? That's the sponsor. Rates. They say you better ask them four morning. specific uh, uh, questions. Uh, it's one, one job report. The last three months, we're averaging around 250000 a month. This so watch suggests here. that the labor market is slowing, uh, which we're looking for. Um, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Gives us more comfort that the economy is moving back into balance. It's all good but things. I don't want to overreact Wait till he says job. something negative. But Jerome Powell said yesterday officials may not, essentially said, may not need, may not need to raise rates more. But it seemed like the market shrugged, shrugged that off in essence. And we saw a slide in Treasury yields. And if this persists, could it force the Fed to move more nimbly and consider another rate hike? You know, the, um, we just have to keep watching the data. Keep watching the labor market data like today keep watching the wage data, keep watching the actual inflation data. Our forecasting, if just to, in case you haven't noticed, our forecasting hasn't been that great in the last few years. Uh, and so uh, we just need to keep watching the actual data to see are we actually getting making enough progress to get inflation down to our 2% target. So uh, it's too soon to, to call. One more news question for you, and then let's get the mic to the whoever is going to ask the last question. I love how they Stan that in there. hedge fund giant about Janet Yellen, just a couple of days ago, quote, Janet Yellen, I guess, uh, because of myopia or whatever, was they issuing two-year treasuries at That's 15 funny. basis points. Ask him points, about the jobs. Issued 10 years and then at ask 70 him about basis Janet points Yellen, or 30 years at 180 basis points. I literally think if you go back to Alexander Ham Hamilton, this represents the biggest blunder in the history of the treasury. I have no idea why she has not been called out on it. She has no right to be in that job. Janet Yellen responded last night to my colleague, uh, Aaron Burnett, and I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond. Um, you know, it's Treasury's job to decide how they fund themselves, but I'm going to make an observation. In my experience, every time there's a new administration or a new Treasury secretary, they look at the Treasury yields and say, oh my gosh, it's so attractive, we want to extend the debt. And then they start to do that, and then they talk to bond market experts, and they realize there's limit to depth at these various yields. And it's, it's to simply say, well, they could have taken all these two-year issuance and issued it at 10 years, the price <laughs> would have moved and the yields would have moved. And so it's just um, it's a very simplistic analysis that Mr. Druckenmiller gave. And so uh, uh, I don't share his perspective. Okay. Last question right so here. Hi. Yes. 
Good afternoon. Uh, My name it. is Naivetya Bartley. Okay. I'm a student at Carlson School in Humphrey <laughs> School. Entire quote. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insight. Um, we did touch base on the you ESG space it. in the leadership <laughs> area in ESG realm. Uh, however, I do want to know, like, what's your take on the governance side of the ESG realm? Okay, you're about to hit uh, a high. Nvidia is going crazy. Again, he just you know, said the jobs report was good. Uh, uh, that's about students, it. He didn't really say much, if ESG, anything. Everybody's space. liking the thank jobs you. report, so making a move up. This is nine points from the bottom almost. Governance. Again, I mean, we I still haven't hit the 4370s yet. Been about leadership, which is really about governance, and yep. the, you know, governance is the application of some of these leadership principles. And so, um, I mean, I, I could turn to Bill on strategies on how to boards of directors are organized to you know maximize uh, the benefit for the shareholders and for the employees and whatnot. But clearly, governance is really important, and it comes back to true north, comes back to values, comes back to what is the mission of your organization, Bill. Absolutely. I mean, again, uh, we need strong governance, we need smart boards of directors, and we need people in strong positions of leadership, and there needs to be clarity about that. But remember, a board member has the future of the organization in their hands, and if it goes under, like Silicon Valley Bank did, shame on the board members. They have a responsibility to preserve, protect, and make important decisions about the future of that institution. It's not just about <laughs> he does the leadership. Life it's not just about earnings per share. They have that. And so I think if every board member in a nonprofit felt the same way, for profits, uh, is, and people that serve on academic boards as well, it's very important. Thank you all. What a, what a delightful and important conversation. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Bill. Great and job. thank you thank to the you. Economic Club of Minnesota. Thank you, Poppy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Welcome to the Panda Fest. My goodness. So he literally, they waited till the final end. They were they were having a lot of fun talking. And then they asked the final economic questions about the jobs report. He just said it was good, man. I don't, I don't even think it showed up there. He said it's helpful, but they don't want to overreact to one jobs report. That's what he said. That's the, that's the quote. So it sounded good. He tempered it a little bit, but... That, that was we listened to that whole thing just for that final quote. That was about it. Again, it was moving a little bit during there. But again, the main story today has been that jobs report. If you don't want the jobs report, it was Apple, good and bad, depending on how you want to break it down. But then also Powell on the day before that in a week filled with dodging bullets, man. I think we need to listen to Matrix because that's what the the market dodged every bullet that was thrown at it this week. So we're still seeing the final culmination here on Friday. Again, it looked like Raul was trying to show up, but literally you just went one point off of the high right there. So we got two hours remaining, though, Chad. Two hours remaining. NASDAQ up 1.3, SPY 1.1, and the Dow Jones up by 0.8. Russell 2.72. Wow, looking great. Looking great. You say SPY triple top puts here. Hey, man, we'll see. We will see. We will see. I think no matter what, we're going to chill out for the rest. It's kind of been chill all day. I mean, you've gotten a little bit of emotions considering how many things have happened. But just next week and then we even get Powell next week. We'll see what he says. Oh, another short in the chat. They're getting short, baby. Well, good luck. Good luck, boys. Good luck. The market is a wild one. No, it's just even then. It's right now we could hug the level, stay it, we could break out, we could die. I mean, that's what every single the reds were a lot bigger than yesterday on your way down, but you know, you are getting that melt up. I still can't believe the I'm gonna call it the braces, bro. It looked like I can't believe this the gaps. So we will see. <clears throat> Can we get a philo about living in the moment? Well, it's important, but I'm a big man of the future. But that's exactly what you're, uh, you know, it's paradoxical because I love the long term and I love the future. But if you remember the philo that we just had, that was on uh, Memento Mori. That's literally exactly. There you go. Look, even on YouTube. Oh, hey, man. Amen. Amen. So definitely we have discussed it, but I don't, I don't know if it'll sound weird, but, you know, living in the moment, uh, just don't forget the reminder. We all die. You know, you are going to die one day, you know, and if you want it in a more practical way, I'll give you something more practical. I don't I don't know if you want practical. Maybe you want it more motivational. Maybe you I don't know what you're looking for, but 
I'll just tell you practical is that you are only here for a limited amount of time. That's it. You are here for a finite time. You have finite resources. Some Sometimes you have a lot of resources. Sometimes you don't. But at the end of the day, your time. You are here for a limited time. Yes, it sounds like exactly. They, they FOMO you to buy stuff because of a limited time only. But that is the general uh, nature of of all of it. It's in how you use your time and what you do. But you got to be careful because like memento mori, I mean, you'd be like, well, shit, if I'm going to die tomorrow, then like, why am I going to go to the gym? So, you know, you do need to appreciate the future to a degree. But uh, that's why I'm saying just you have a limited amount of time to do something that you are that you are here to do. Like, or at least at the end of the day, you're going to live this life and you had X amount of time. X amount of resources, opportunity, failure, whatever it may be. But it's like, you know, what did that culminate to? Did it allow you to like reach your full potential? I think that's the uh, the mind experiment experiment that they say. They say like if you imagine when you die, you don't believe in God, you don't believe heaven, hell. Let's let's throw that out the window. Right. Let's just say you die. And when you die, you meet the version of yourself that like you could have that you could have been. That's it. It was just you maxed out. You're my, you're my player, but maxed out. That's it. That's all. And all you do is meet that person, and then you see what you could have been in that time frame versus what you chose to do with that. And then that's it. That's the afterlife. That's <laughs> that's the the mind theory to think about. So, and if that's the case, you know, it's just again, it's damn, it's down to uh, appreciating. You know, you are here for a limited amount of time. You could do a lot. You have the potential. But you have to actually like, you know, are you going to do something with it? But that that is momentum mori. Mm -hmm. No wonder the VIX is crushed. You're telling me we're a contract with the unknown expiration? No, I'm saying you do have an expiration. So that's your that's your incentive to live in the moment. You know, you are you are lit, you're here for a limited time. You got to do so, like and and you had a mission. You may not know the mission, but then that's the other thing. You ain't hear that one. I think I told you that one. That was uh Miles Monroe. That's the other thing he said. Miles that's uh he's I don't I don't he didn't say the other stuff, but he was saying how <laughs> if you knew you know the destination but if you knew the plan, you wouldn't be down. So that's the thing. Like, like God will show you the the destination. God will tell you stuff. You have. You are destined to do this. You're destined. You know. Again, you all have a dream. Think about it. You're all, all so weird, right? All of us. Like, I'm a weirdo. I ended up here. You guys listen to a lot of of what I've said, thoughts and moments. But like, imagine all of your life events that led up to your dreams, your desires. Some of us have very similar ones. We have different ones, man. We got a guy in the chat. He's he's taking care of tigers right now. Like how did, like what sparked that? Like that's a different personality. Some of you are coders, engineers. Like think about it. You all have something, right? Like where, where did that, well, you have a, a dream, a destination. If not, I encourage you to get one, but there is something about you or at one point in your life or right, even right now, you, you constantly think about it. So think about that in that sense of like, you know the destination, but if you knew the plan, you wouldn't, you would give up on the destination. That's the general idea. So God will tell you the plan, but if he told, he, he or he told, he'll give you the destination, the dream, but if he told you the plan, you'd be like, no, nah, I'm good, God. I'm good. I'm killing the market. That's amazing. If I have that much power, bro, you should tell me next time. I'm going to go get me a put if those work anymore. But, yeah, I don't think I'm killing anything. I think the market, there's a reason. There's something on the screen right now that should leave you open to movement on the day. There's something that you're seeing here. The bonds. Uh, and then, but do you see was you, you're close? You're, you're in the right neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Think about it. It's overlaid with the spy. There you go. You got it. The divergence. There's a little bit of a gap. So again, it, 
the last couple of days, there's still a lot going on, generally speaking. We just want that the, the bonds to like calm down, and they're kind of doing that. Overstock's still going. That one's on the high. But there is a little bit of gap since that, that one time. Remember when we were looking at it? I was actually, you were there. You were with me. Remember, we were looking at this one right here. It started to go down, and we were getting excited. The market was going up with that, but then the bonds, they didn't they didn't go any lower than that, and they kind of chilled. And then the market was able to run up here. So if anything, I would just I would keep this in mind. So you've got a couple of options. Either market comes down to the bonds, or the bonds are going to rip by the end of the day. Maybe it closes with a gap, too, but I think the, the first two options seems reasonable. So... But like I'm saying, generally speaking, this is a good day. It's a strong day. It's a, it's a, it's one of the strongest weeks in a while. So again, I was expecting this to happen earlier, but you know, you just came out with a bang here. But I would definitely say, you know, where this is going to be, the price within a couple of points. I mean, I'm not trying to predict that for the day, but that's it, man. It's just you got good news. Things are good, and you're going to take that into next week. We hear from Powell on Wednesday, a lot of other Fed speakers, and then we'll see if the bonds could keep holding. Odd I think the day I'm holding stuff too. Again, I have a lot of things that came up. I'm even profitable on certain names too, but I am, uh, I even myself, I am going to, I'm planning to hold some of these here. I realize you just paraphrased the ends justifies the means. No, no one said anything about justifying anything. It's just saying if you did know the path to things, you are more likely to uh, give up uh, when it's all said and done. So that's why, you know, you don't know how things are going to play, but that's why it goes it's hand in hand with you're here for a limited amount of time. So if you knew what it would be, I mean, that that would change a lot of motivations. But it's a good interpretation. I mean, if, uh, I would say if you, we talk ends justifies me, we're going to get into a whole nother realm of philo, baby. It can. I mean, maybe there's some utilitarianist in here. There's other moral theories. You heard it different while you deal with evil children. <laughs> I mean, I mean, kids are pretty crazy, though, I feel. Mm. Well, uh, I hope it, I mean, hey, somebody asked. Somebody asked. We were talking about a lot, like I'm saying. I think today it's chill for now. Things are good. We'll get a little. Maybe things get exciting. We don't have anything else on the schedule. I was considering playing oil again, doing a double dip. I'm glad we closed out of that. That was nice. We flipped it from here, went down, got up, got out, and now it's chilling. But I don't know if it's going to move too much into the end of the day. But you got a nice little opportunity for movement, but you also have an hour and 50 minutes. So, you know, still got some time. But generally speaking, we have gotten the, the main course out of the way, and it was good. NVO or Lily next week? I don't know. GPCR kept going up. Remember we had that one? This was even during all of August. This one kept going up, or October. I saw that one, that one a little too early. Thing in spy calls. I mean, I'm I'm not doing anything. I'm just holding what I already did. Some positions came up, some recovered a lot of the losses. So that's where uh you know that's kind of I'm just writing these out. And like I said, you know, I'm gonna wait till they go up here, depending on how November plays out. Well, you know, we'll take some gains. I mean, if this could turn really good, uh, we'll see how those tax losses end up playing out. But uh, for them, it may actually end up not having to. We'll see if we could just net it out and then get everything good. Maybe we do even better, but uh, it's going to be uh, just chilling. So but I got a couple of names. Again, like I said, some barely down, some down uh, a lot more. But then I already have some positions now already in the green, but I'm not cutting them too early this time around. Especially, again, if we get this momentum the next couple of weeks, we'll we'll find out. But not adding anything. 2K later, maybe. I'm think, I mean, again, because last time, depending on how we do it, 
uh it'll mess with the uh with the after hours so we'll see but yeah i'll be i'll be here after hours it's friday baby it's friday on a wild week my goodness again even last friday too i was like i know chad i know it's been a wild week a wild week last friday was ended and it's crazy to think this is the note you're ending this friday on I'm still in the rad, yeah. That one's going to be a stain. A stain on the record. Again, that's why once we find out, let's see where we're at towards November. Everything else, I mean, if that one has to hold or not, we're going to find out in the grand scope. But I did realize those covered calls. So I got to take care of that, lot, that gain on there. But for the most part, still chilling. And again, I think if we could get a nice quarter here towards the end. Maybe we'll see if uh, whatever the hell happens. It's, it's already, I'm just, I'm already blown away by the, the size of these moves already. So if we keep doing this towards the end of the year, man, it's going to get wicked. <laughs> 200 points in five days, every day green. And then literally for what, two weeks in a row, you had only two green days and went down that same 200 points. Rad to 100. Inshallah. I mean, if we get lucky on the court proceeding, but I doubt it. But then again, I mean, if the crackheads come out, we'll see how this next couple. Again, Powell's pausing. We'll see. You need MPC Josh right now? Why? Just, just go on TikTok, man. Just go on TikTok. Mm, thanks for the roses. All the banks are sound and resilient. All the banks are sound and resilient. Mm, thanks for the roses. You're funny. You're funny. You're funny. You're fun. You're, 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 you're. Mm. You got sent the BK papers? What do they say? I think I got to go check my mailbox. All the banks are sound and resilient. You didn't read it. You lay off. <laughs> Israeli military says one of its aircraft hit an ambulance identified as being used by Hamas unit. A number of Hamas operatives killed in the strike. You're invited to my wedding. Do I send it to your TF Gmail? Yeah, is it? It's in California, right? You live in Cali. That's cool. I'm either gonna wear like a Kanye West mask, or you're not gonna have any photos at your wedding. I don't know if you're down with that. Is this catalytic converter? It's in Brazil. Uh, can I attend through Zoom? I don't think I'm gonna go to Brazil, bro. I've never been to Brazil in my life. Why are you doing it in Brazil, man? Uh, we just had a mini Philo. I'll get you a bodyguard. It's not the bodyguard. I think it's probably like, what, like 10 hours travel time or something? I think that's the only downside. All the banks are sound and resilient. Thanks for the roses. All the banks are sound and resilient. Yeah, DraftKings did amazing. They did amazing. Mm -mm. I don't know, man. You want? I could. Let's. What time is it? Eleven seventeen. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. I got a great one, man. I got a great one. Madonna. Powell speaks non Wednesday. Yes. Josh is about to be itching to shorten a video again. Nah, I'm chill, bro. I'm chill. I'm gonna ride my end of the year wave in either direction. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm I still like the long term. 
I'm going to chill a little bit, and then I'm going to keep and maybe just just watch the yen and pow. I'm going to be relaxing and let the long-term do long-term things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then market, I mean, we're right near the high right now. couple of things, but I, I might have something better for you. There you go. You got it. You got it, baby. Chatadonia. A lot's been happening this week. It's been every week, man. We've had so much to talk about. You know that. We have so much to talk about. So, Chatadonia, here's the deal, my friends. Here is the deal. Your philo today. It is about enjoying the weekend. Uh, but above all else, it is about stamina. And it is about understanding how your mind can affect you in so many ways, even your rest, your performance, and so many things. But it, it boils down to just some, some simple things to understand, okay? Your nature, you are a natural human. Remember what I told you guys yesterday? You go look at the soil, go look at the plants. You guys are like mushrooms, bamboo, generally speaking. Most plants, you go look at the soil, even the soil, na by nature, there's a reason for the seasons. Ha-ha. <laughs> seasons shift. Soil's growing. Time for growing. Time for not growing. Rest. Get nutrients. Get back up. Grow again. It doesn't just go 24-7. There is always seasons. So I hope you learn from the seasons. But it was a, there's a really cool story. There was something that, that it really stood out. And I was like, man, that's actually pretty trippy to think about. There's the story of Elijah. We don't know the story of Elijah. I've told you it many times, actually. He's the one prophet dude. He goes, he's like, all your prophets are fake. He starts clowning them. He starts doing just a bunch of things. This is Old Testament, so you got more miracles and stuff. But... He goes and does all of this stuff, right? Defeats 450 prophets, something like that. 1v1 one, one 450, bro. No hesitation. And then he gets scared because Jezebel. Some of you have met Jezebel, but I'm talking about the one in the Bible story here. that You, you probably met her in spirit. <laughs> but one girl says she's going to kill him. Right? And then he, he gets like super sad. And then he goes and runs away. And then you know where he runs? He goes to just find a tree. He just goes, sits under the tree and just says, he's just there to die. That was his plan. Oh, man. That's wicked. It's wicked. Spy's going up a little bit. So tell me, bro. If you just defeated 450 people, 1v450... You just got like a crazy big W. And then somebody threatened you. <laughs> and said, by the time the sun comes up, I'm going to make sure you are dead. I probably they vowed to it. And then what would you, would you just go under a tree and be like, okay, he's done. I want to, I want to die. Does that sound possible? You said, bro, is tweaking. Maybe. I don't know. You tell me. Has, has there ever been a point in your life you did something really, really good, really extraordinary? And then shortly thereafter, an event that probably was not even comparable to what you just did? Oh, man. And then all of a sudden... 
you wanted to, you were like, oh, I just, it's better if I did nothing now. Oh, man. Stop playing with me, Chad. <laughs> See, but it's funny, though, because I like it. It's not, that's not the main point. That's not the main story. The story I thought was very interesting. Because, again, I know this story. I've read this. Again, I've told you. I've given you Elijah, Elisha. We've talked about. I've given you Philos on this. We've talked about this a lot. If not, feel free to read. This is like 1 Kings 19, I believe. Or like a little bit before that. Like 17 or 16. You could go read all the story. Uh, you could get through it. But you, you've heard this story. But the interesting part is how, like, the response one, it's like God, at, like he hears a voice from God. Like these are one of the very few instances you have God asking man a question that I guess at least recorded within the Bible. It's not too often God asks a question because that's not really God-like if you think about it because it's, it's omniscient. Why would you ask a question? But he asks him, what are you doing here? So that he'd realize, hopefully on his own accord, that he doesn't belong there. But how do you think he gets him... What was the remedy? It's really funny. What do you think the remedy was? Besides God saying, what are you doing here? Some of you know the story. You don't don't answer. Let, we'll see what everybody thinks what it is. A little bit of Raul. Don't worry. Mark is not going anywhere. Mm. What did he do? Young Elijah. God asked him a question. Guy wants the wins, big W. What was the remedy? He gives him food and tells him to go to bed. Yeah, we know all the story. Go read it. We know the story of what all the other things he does. Everything else, again, even before, every, you know, he's about to do a lot of things. He tells him to eat, puts him to bed, and the angel, he hears a voice, goes to bed, sleeps, and eats. Wakes up, hears the voice again, goes to bed, puts him to bed, and he eats and sleeps. <laughs> it's a crazy part. It's a crazy, like, literally, you could, it's, it's a wild concept to think about. It was a human problem. The only thing he needed was a it was a it was a human solution, believe it or not. So the first thing before this guy again, he's already done miracles. It's, isn't that funny? This is the guy who's like lighting things on fire, performing miracles, doing all this, and then when he's like, "Oh man, I can't take this anymore. I want to die and exhaust," he literally just tells him what, he gives him food and tells him sleep, and then he goes on. And you know why he tells him that too? That's the funny part. Oh, overstock ripping. There you go, 9%. I've moved up almost 50 cents since we last talked about it. But he literally just said, like, why are you worried? That's how the, the funny part about all of it. The guy just, the basic sustainment, sustenance as a human had somebody incredible thinking so insanely. To the point where he was like, man, I'm going to die. He was worried about something. He didn't even, he was so worried, so tired, everything. He didn't even realize the time had already passed. Lady says she's going to get him by noon. It's already noon. So the whole point is, it's kind of wild how like your mind again will make you think certain things and basic literally. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of rest. Hopefully in your mind. I hope you don't feel bad about it too. Maybe sometimes, maybe some of you guys probably feel bad sometimes resting, but this is why I say every weekend you got to enjoy a lot of this. You play a very, very wild game every single day. So just think about it for a sec. 
So think about it for a sec. And I think you should have a good weekend. And regardless, you know, don't underestimate clearing your head. Get some, make sure you have some food, get some sleep. Add it all. Oh, it doesn't matter how much you worry. It will not add one second to your life. And so you could get ready to do some big things and do some amazing things afterwards. So Chattadonia, I think the market is liking that too, a couple of names, but that's your little baby mini Philo. I'm going to leave you with that and take that to the bank. I was going to say that as your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Make sure you guys are subscribed. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on that video. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate costs. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, too. You can do that, too, if you want. I need to go to the bathroom. I don't know. Maybe I give you need some F F350. Spies going up. Would you like F350? I think that that might be what you need. Mm hmm. I don't know. You could do some F-350. I don't know. You want cribs? You want F-350? I don't know. Anything? I'll give you F-350. Okay. DJ Angel on the track. Fucking EV Gas tank still on empty But I'ma keep on driving all week Think I just missed my exit A Prius wanna let me merge My driving got my girlfriend stressing Screaming in my ear like a bird Told her Why they driving in the slow lane If they ain't going slow, mate I used to say the same thing when they were slow up in the fast lane Now we're Kia trying to pass me Think a Nissan almost crashed me I'm just trying to make a lane change Now I'm late and I got road rage yeah. Know that I'm a F-350 I don't drive a fucking EV Gas tank still on empty But I'm gonna keep on driving all week I think I just missed my exit a Prius when they let me mad My driving got my girlfriend stressing Screaming in my ear like a bird Wherever I said, carpool is fast I Hasn't seen the 405 It took me 30 minutes Just to go a mile I came to California For the women in the vibe But all I saw was Tesla. And girls who look like guys Now I love everybody I'm just saying I'm surprised All these different people But none of them can drive Only in my F-350 I don't drive a fucking EV Gas tank still on empty But I'm gonna keep on driving all week Think I just missed my exit. I pray it's when they let me mad. Loaning on my F 350. I don't drive a fucking EV. Gas tank still on empty. But I'm gonna keep on driving all week. I think I just missed my exit. I pray it's when they let me mad. My driving got my girlfriend stressing. Screaming in my ear like a bird They said they waited an hour to charge I know Amazing Amazing That's it man, it's 11.32 An hour and a half left To wrap up the wildest week of the year which I think was preceded by the wildest three months of the year. But my God, actually, no, we had SVB, you had Banks crap, you had a lot of things, actually. Mm hmm. 
Mm hmm. Where the years are not disappointed. I'm glad, man. I'm glad, baby. Do not be afraid. It's written 365 times, baby. A reminder each day. Zero coincidence. You are blessed, loved, called, and protected. Joshua 1 9, finger to the sky, lead in faith. Tell him, Trey. Uh, amen, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> Bro, and just good vibes, bro, for real. I hope and rest with all of it, man, and just get ready. I mean, some everybody, I hope you all get excited. It's a new year, new season. You've came this far. I don't think you all arrived here for no reason. Oh, my goodness. Numbers revised? No, no, no. We had revisions today, but they were in your favor, depending on how you want to look at it. But then again, it highlights the point that everything has changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Time for a new level. Any level. I'll accept any level. At any whatever whatever his will. Let thy will be done. Amen. That's the the I'm telling you, that's and seek wisdom. I, oh, y'all better be reading them Proverbs every day. It's the what? It's the third day of November. You got the third day of November, bro. So it's like you should be on Proverbs three minimum. If you want to try it, like I said. I said it last time. If you want to try it. That's it. Mikey even said, Mike, I was playing 2K and Mikey was like, oh, yeah, I'm on day day, day four of prom. I'm like, what? I was like, you got it. You He's like, oh, so let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. I like it. It's a good one. You're going to hear wisdom, man. Wisdom. Wisdom gives ideas. Wisdom is a friend. It's amazing. Mm -mm. Amen. Bible study. We got the Bible study afterwards. We're going to be here for a little bit. I don't know how long, though, because I'm really tempted to play 2K. I kind of want to play 2K now. I'm real. I'm I'm done with the market again. I've I've kind of already I made my, my mind up like a month ago, so I'm still just riding it out. But I, I don't think we're going to get anything. Even Powell's talking right now, but he is not uh, talking about uh, uh, what's it called? He did not. He's not bringing up monetary policy. Yeah, dude, there's nothing. You're good for the day, man. You're good. It's been there. Get the new Call of Duty. I don't support war. You know, when there wasn't war, I'll play. But no, no Call of Duty. Not for me. <laughs> they already trained me when I was young. That's why I was really good with the battle rifle on Halo. Again, you know, original Black Ops, I, I would run it. But you know, just 2K for me, man. 2K for me, you know. Just tell me about Wembenyana. 38 points. Mm. I did not get any of you in the 2K. Someone said it earlier. They try to say, Josh, because of you, I got in the 2K. I'm like, no. No, don't blame me. You got in 2K because of their extensive marketing and because they want you to get it. I don't, don't let me. I'm not. Mm -mm, they ain't pay me to do that. I just, it's my, my awful gaming addiction that comes out once every like three to five years, two and a half to five years. It just depends. Still no Halo. You weren't there. You weren't there when we were running it. We ran it in 2020. We were running Halo during COVID days. That was a good time. You don't even really, sh I streamed it for like a week, but. I haven't been streaming. It just it gets harder. And then if I stream, I can't like it's just not the same game when I stream. It takes too long. It's just so is that if less if I solo run it, that's it. I'll do I literally I'll go before I I go on a drive, I'll just be like boop, boop, then I'm out, bro. Then I'm out. Mm -hmm. Josh Brady. They don't know, bro. Yeah, they don't know Josh Brady. We were calling Josh Brady before we were calling it Jerome Brady. They don't under they don't get it, bro. They don't get it. My girlfriend is starting the trip about 2K. She like just makes fun of me. She just like clowns on me. Like she's like making me feel like a real nerd. 
And then she was just like, she just says like, cause like sh if I start talking smack on the game, she'll like, no, because then like, I'll be like, I'll be talking smack to her and she'll be like, did you just play 2k? Mm hmm. Jealousy. Nah, it's not, it's not that deep. I don't think so, but cause she still, she lets me play. She do, she do her own thing, bro. But no, nah, it's just it comes out. Cause that's the other day. Remember I told you <laughs> I'm a very weird person. You guys remember the other time I told you and I was like, I went off on a kid on 2k and then he ended up quitting. And like, I was just like really rude to him. And like, he's just bothering me. I didn't mean to, but like, I felt bad afterwards. You guys remember that? It wasn't too long ago. And then you're one point from hitting a new high. Mm. Yeah, you remember that? Well, I felt really bad, but then there was a game like a week ago. And like, you know what? I let some dude have it. And I felt good about it. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I don't know. Whatever. What I felt good about it. I had no shame in it at all. Uh, he really deserved it too. And I was just like, you know, I I don't. I did not feel bad at all about it. So I just I did realize I was like, well, maybe some of them. Just some of them. He was less. He was more. He was more of a bully. So I did. I did not feel any any shame. You fell asleep playing 2K? The wife was at That's wild. That's a little... That's intense. I've never fell asleep playing a video game where my eyes just gave out and they're like, no, nah, man, we can't do this. <laughs> playing 2K. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how I could put it in the melody. What's, this, what, what's the song? How does the song go? Am I coming to me in my hand? I got my... I know that much. <laughs> it is. 2K is a very toxic game. It's worse than Call of Duty. And, like, the people are really bad. Like, they some people just really don't know how to play. And, like, I'm telling you, 2K is a crazy look on the real world of, like, humans that exist. Like, in just the status of our culture. 4370. So again, you have three more points. If it gets like epic, then we'll probably be going to the 4380s just like yesterday. Otherwise, watch if it slows down on the next three points, but that is then the next level here. But no, bro, I'm telling you, I've never seen a game because like, bro, if you just say one wrong thing, people won't even, they'll just leave their, they, they'll just like not play the game just so you're not happy. <laughs> It's the most pettiest shit I've ever witnessed in my life. It's it's actually like it's 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 mind blowing. It's mind blowing. It's scary it hasn't back tested. Well, I we were talking about something today and it's I think it's very unique and I don't know if you guys if I'm crazy, let me know. Let like please counter this if you think I'm being uh, dramatic, feel free to. But like we haven't seen this gap multi-day in a long ass time yes or no is it true exactly i'm trying not tell me it's not true that you've seen the braces before no 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 tell, i'm saying can you tell me that it's not true that we have seen a day where you had look at the gap multiple gaps on the exactly certainly mm-hmm that's exactly what i'm saying But no, I'm being dead serious, though. Like I said, that's why I put up a four-year today. But, like, the only other time I remember you having gaps was, like, that were this big. And it was just, like, boom, boom, boom. We're after selling off just in the same manner, literally half-ass bounce middle of October, sell the F off and dump into the end of the month, and then boop, 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 boop. The only time I saw that was November of 2020. So that's where I'm saying this part of this part of today where it's like it's wild it hasn't pulled back. I agree, but I don't know what it's going to do next. But literally this these like I dude, it's been a minute since you've had multiple consecutive like gap up days like that. 
Just it, it hasn't been since, since extreme volatility we've had something like that. So yeah, are we about to go nuclear? I don't know. It could either it could play out like like 2020, but at the same time, you know, in 2020 you didn't have bond yields doing this. I mean, maybe a little bit, but n nothing close to this nature. So we're gonna see again. Look at even TLT and kind of how it matches up. Obviously, you pull it on the one year, the gap is still big, but this this is already just mass, dude. Every chart just has the 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 gaps look at them the brace i'm calling it braces it needs braces now other every day of every year have braces now you like you haven't seen those gaps in a minute you've seen them on the way down you ain't seen them on the way up uh, again literally since here that 2020 same exact that's the only other time Timmy tweet. Timmy tweet is all always bullish. I, I'm. I don't know. I like Timmy a lot, bro. I like Nick Timmerhouse a lot, but I'm. I'm like. I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. And again, I'm benefiting immensely since T Timmy made that tweet. But at the end of the day, it's like I'm still kind of disappointed that he would do that, bro. <laughs> like in the like no less than a minute after his question is answered just tweet out a bullish interpretation to the answer that you just got. And then when literally every single word on the transcript was hawkish, m magnificent. Mm. So he, this is what he just tweeted two minutes ago. First came the bond market sell-off, now the cooling labor market evident in October. Both have helped usher the Federal Reserve historic interest rate hiking campaign closer and closer to a pedestrian end. So he's writing, just an update, but yeah, he's fueling the fire. Monday could sell off if the bonds, uh, you know, and the dollar have some issues. Uh, otherwise... I think the real chance for movement next week will be Wednesday on Jerome Powell. And then every day after, you know, Monday, Tuesday is going to be monitoring if we keep doing this. If we could still keep getting, you know, a lot of steam in bonds and bonds and holding up here, then there you go. You know, next level, we break above here. We're going to get back to, you know, where we're at middle of September. Mm-mm. I think that's what I'm saying. I think Timmy was a big part of turning. Timmy was the guy you needed. The analysts were already reading it bullish. Everybody wanted to be bullish right when they saw financial conditions. But Timmy was the voice of authority. And what? Well, right when he did, that's it. He just he unleashed the floodgates. Again, he's a leader in the space. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Everybody just said, yep, that's it. Pausing. And he's the one who kind of gave you the green light to allow the thinking. And again, a lot of people think he's the the mouthpiece for the Fed. So it's either he did that on his own or the Fed wanted it. But either way, very, very wild. Like, again, I mean, all these other days have been bigger than the day of the Fed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, look at that. That was like this was in we were here and then Timmy's tweet was right here. And ever there's been no looking back since then. The jaws are wide. We hit a new high, so hit a new high. Bond, that's been happening all day today. Literally every single time we've hit a high, the bonds would go lower. We'd hit a high, bonds would drop. You hit a high, bonds would go lower. We'd hit a high, we chilled here. Hit a high, bonds would hit a new low. And now we hit another high, bonds are going down here. Hmm. This run-up's not sustainable. 
I mean, it was the same. You know, the rundown was not sustainable either, too. <laughs> That's what we were saying. Like, if the you know, if the bonds kept going from middle of October at the same pace, you would have been at like 20 percent interest by middle of next year or something. It's something ridiculous. You would have just kept going. Again, we're going up two percent on the 10 year bond every every month and a half or, or literally one percent every month. It was actually crazy. You've been at like 17% by middle of next year. The last ad was Altria, I believe, to the long term. And that candle is still holding on. Again, bonds are going lower. But yeah, Altria, I think I got it at 42, though. But then we got our dividend and the drip. But good old faithful... Timmy's move was on par to Ackman covering his bond short. I'd say bigger in a weird way. He's the news, the narrative. Every Again, I told you it's the market bullying Powell. That's my first response. And then by by the time you have a, the next day, everyone's saying he's done pausing. That's, that's not what he said. That's everybody bullying it. And then based off the fact that they think he's restricted when it's all said and done. And then that was the comment that was being promoted or you know, being championed by by the Fed's mouthpiece. That's that's amazing. <laughs> VKTX, that one's still going up now. That one's good. Would it be possible for bonds stay range by while stocks rocket? Would it keep the bonds keep the stocks way down? Yes, I think the former or the the first part. I do think there is a range where bonds can stay elevated, but as long as they stop going higher and uncertain, then I do think that they can. Uh, uh, what's it called? I do think that the bonds can allow the market to go up, even though their the yield is high. That's what we've witnessed every year. After we've watched the bonds get destroyed, the bonds stabilize, then the market does its own thing. So the bonds will add weight, but as long as there's no bond volatility, then that I think will will be good. There's ARC. So ARC's hitting high too. Again, the market, those ARCs are doing very well now. And then 4371, you're getting a little active here. So 10, nine minutes till power hour. We're going to be at that 4373 if we get there. I mean, 4388 and then 4400 is what we'll be looking at. Where were we last time? We topped out at 438. Hold on. Let me put it up on here. So last time we topped out at 4394. So if we do get back to 4388, if we do break 4394, Next spot, 4402, 4400, and then work your way up, I think, like 25 points at a time. You think we'll ever see 10% yields on the 10-year again? It's possible. I mean, some people would love for this to be the bottom uh, or the top for this cycle, but then again, if inflation does reemerge in the next five to six years, uh and it comes in bad, and Powell still has yet to lower rates. Who knows? I mean, again, it's until the rates are low, start getting lowered. I don't, I don't think we could say that just yet. But your pause, like we said on the watch list yesterday, at the very least, a pause means no more higher from here. Doesn't mean you have to go lower, but at best case, the best case in the world, which would come with some negative consequences, you would get rates going lower. But at the very least, for now. We know rates aren't going higher from here unless, you know, other obvious factors start to reemerge. I'm thinking like the shorts, if we don't slow down, I'm, it's about to squeeze hard. You don't want to miss it. I'm confused. Are you want to short it or you want to buy it? 
I don't really trade chart patterns, no. I like the horizontal lines, though. Uh, they have, again, uh, every level, every day this week, I told you before it got there. And these are just based on, again, you know, we, we start these all of these levels going all the way back into 2020 even. You know, this is all just points we've been at. And like we've t I told you, 4,200, either Powell was going to bless the rally or not. The funny part, it wasn't even Powell. It was uh, it was Nick Timmerous blessing the rally instead. Mm, is PayPal on the high? Yeah, PayPal's going up. I don't know if Square is. Again, we have the ARC. And bonds are near the low, but spies are spies still just going. Again, it's ignoring it. Travel's still killing it. So, yeah, PayPal's moving more than Square. Uh, United. Again, we, I made up half of those losses already. I'm actually very happy about that. Hmm. Marvel. Yeah, Tesla again. Nice little rally the days leading into this. PayPal's still going. That one was interesting. 200 points in three days is wicked. All of this, man. The way down too, though, because remember, people were saying this was sustainable. This isn't sustainable on the way up. Bro, it wasn't sustainable on the way down. That's why... Even I think Powell was addressing financial conditions. So it's wild. Everything's flying. Some names are still at the high, though. You really have names that are just working their way up into the end of the day here. And they're looking great. So, again, it is a power hour in five minutes. You've already just hit another high. You're at that 430, 4372 again. This is where we expected it to slow down. But there's still a lot of upside. And a final, the final boss is at 43. Is at 430 or 4402, I think. The final boss would be where we dumped from the October rally that was not able to hold up. Why does the ES not have any gaps? I think because it's always trading most of the time, so it's not closed. That's so pretty much these moves are because of the futures. So like you didn't even have that in November. It looked exactly the same in 2020. It's because it's overnight. So we're just running up a one, two percent, then gapping up another half a percent and running another one percent <laughs> from wherever we open just three days in a row now. Hmm. We barely even dropped. I don't get why that was unsustainable. No, we did. We dropped a lot. Uh, you gave up. You gave up, I mean, half of the year in, in three months, I guess. You know, you spent a lot of... I guess it took you, I guess, three months to build it, three months to take it away, and then three days to get it back. But that was like what? It was almost... You were about 30 points shy of repeating this whole downturn. It just, this one was in a month while this was spread out over three. But, I mean, again, you do another 30 points in three, you're at the low. And then by next year, I mean, you would be, uh, you know, before you know it, after that, another 30 points, you're at you're, you're halfway to COVID lows. We will keep green Monday. I don't know. I think that one's going to be interesting, but... It depends on what we wake up to. However, every Green Monday that we've had so far, there was a lot of red. What happened to the war? It's still going on. I mean, it's still a lot of human suffering, and it's still a very negative real-world event, but the market... I don't think until unless oil gets affected or when oil gets affected, 
the market will react temporarily, but in the meantime, everybody's kind of over it. Yeah, you've already, re I mean, October, October's still red, so unfortunately, I still look like an idiot in the record books uh, for my uh, my seasonality bet, but you are now back to a, a positive from October and now, you know, getting back to the low of August. But we get, we get up here, then you're just, you're knocking on the doors once again of the higher levels. Wreck heard books. Tech is overvalued with AI hype. Changed my mind. I'll just better. Just there's value is very, very uh, subjective right now. <laughs> I just I think the best value is cash at five percent minimum. I just think you know you know that's it. Just listen to Powell. Powell don't want you to invest. But this next year again, if we do. This kind of feels like 1999. Again, the 1999, 2001 thing, you know, if the rates played out like 2001, the question is if the market will. But at this point, until we get more normalization, like, dude, the value, you just watch so many things go from worthless <clears throat> to three times the price and then lose 70% of that in 30 days, two weeks, and then regain. some of them regained it all back in three. So, you know, value is, I mean... It's very finicky right now. Mm, a divergence. Well, because the market's going up and the bonds are staying pinned. It doesn't have to close the gap for today. And if you're worried about the divergence, don't pull up the one-year chart of this because <laughs> that might freak you out. But for now, I mean, we'll see by the end of the day. But I, this just leaves open the opportunity that we could still see some some more bigger moves by the end of the day. And now it's Power Hour, baby. Welcome to Power Hour. After selling the market off every day for three months... They decided to buy it back in three days. <laughs> On the next episode of The Stock Market Hates You, traders realize value is bullshit, and it's all up to how people feel about Jerome Powell crack. Yes. <laughs> they're pausing! Even though they paused last time, now they paused again! That means they're pausing! They're pausing! <laughs> they were already paused. I think they're gonna pause again. <laughs> It was already paused. No, I think we were worried, though, after the pause and after that. <laughs> they bought it all. On the next episode of The Stock Market Hates You, in theaters everywhere, FOMO is everywhere. <laughs> Not really. No FOMO. No FOMO. Not really that FOMO. They never saw it coming. I think we see it happening. Powell had no idea. I think Powell knows what's going on. Why are they saying the opposite? I don't understand. Nick Timoros, the new main character. The stock market loves you. Only playing for long-term subscribers. In theaters, only for long-term subscribers. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Long term is like HBO Max, you know. You have to, you have, you know, you either that's if you want the stock market loves you, that's HBO Max subscribers. That's long term max subscribers, long term minimum ten year subscribers. Those are the only ones where the stock market loves you. Yeah, I have a feeling something bad is gonna happen over the weekend. Oh, in the ME? What's that? 
I thought you meant for the market. I'm like, I was about to say, if you were more, if you weren't that specific and you were like something bad is going to happen. I'm like, I've heard that every single weekend for the last two months. <laughs> oh, in the Middle East. Oh, I thought you meant Maine. Oh no, I don't know. I don't think it'll. I don't think it's gonna hit the market. I've heard that every day for the last two months now. Maybe a month, two first month was all about the market. The last three weeks have been in Middle East again. Every Friday at three in a row, we've been tripping out on. I feel like today we've had less Middle East headlines than any of the other Fridays. Yeah, a lot of bad. That's the whole point. A lot of bad things have happened. The market was reacting to a, for it for a little bit because the bonds were moving. But, you know, Dr. Kennedy or Mr. Kennedy wasn't lying. The world is on fire. <laughs> so it's like there's been a lot of problems and we've literally now you are hurtling the mount of the mountain of worry or the wall of worry. It's insane. It's not clear to all time highs. No, calm the F down. OK. This isn't good enough for you. What the hell's wrong with you? I haven't seen this in three years. Okay, calm down. I don't know about all-time highs, but this is a, you know, this is going to give you a little bit more of a rally here into the uh, end of the year, uh, unless until acted upon by equal or opposite force, a.k.a. Powell, or again, you know, more bond volatility. You need bond volatility to end. As long as bonds don't go higher from here, the next step is slightly lower and then just stopping the volatility. Was he really a doctor? I don't know. I feel like Senator Kennedy, he would be one of those people who would be a doctor. Does that, does that make sense? And he might, exactly, call me doctor. It's Dr. Kennedy. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you want to like downplay him, but then he just flex on you. Like, it's doctor to you, buddy. Exactly. That's a new high on the S&P. Thank you. For 390, Chattadonia. Oh, wait, that's on the ES. So I was like, what the? I was like, damn, we just rocketed. Talk about it. We still get, we need to get there, though. You need to get there on the uh, on the SPX. Again, if we get above here, still hit 473 real quick. So if we get above that, that'll be nice. A Dr. Kennedy single? I don't, I've never tried. I've never tried. Does your girl think you're crazy when she walks in doing these voice impressions? Honestly, I don't I don't know what she thinks, but I think she's lucky. <laughs> I think I'm hilarious, honestly. I feel like I entertain her. I feel like she gets very entertained, and that's it. At first, it was kind of weird, but, like, she loves the Biden voice now. now for the first couple months, she ain't get it. She's not... She's not from here. She don't know why, like, you know, the political stuff. She don't get it. But now she's like, she's, she's found the humor, man. She's found the humor. Mm. Yeah, she's used to it all. I think she's lucky, yeah. Again, that's why some people have said I'm a narcissist in the past. But then again, I mean, you know, I think we have a great, fruitful relationship. So, anyways. We're going up the queues. Where what do we where do we get out of this one at? I think that was last Friday. So I'm glad I got out of that one. But then still that this has all been a trip. Mm -mm. The kid with the Biden costume. Yeah, that was hilarious. It kind of gave me faith. I'm like, wow, the even like I didn't think kids understood, but they do. And then and then I thought about it. I was like, you can't fool the heart of a child like they that, that's all they see. Because then I, you got to think about it. What do I tell you guys all the time? I'm like the funniest president in my lifetime 
is George W. Bush. Because I was a kid and I just remember seeing how dumb he was. With no politics, no nothing aside, I was just like, this is the funniest thing ever. And then seeing how it like even played out in the history books, it's amazing. So that's how I was like, wow. This is, a, I was like, you know, the kids, I was like, they see it. They see everything. Like, you really can't fool the, the heart of a child when it's all said and done. You know, they, they got their own little common sense. And they, <laughs> that was the last costume I would have uh, expected from, like, kids, bro. But it's, it makes sense. It makes sense. Oh, a little Rahul. Woo! Mm-hmm. No? Little Rahul? I know somebody got excited. 4373. Three. Knock you right back down to the 4370. One point at a time. If you rise, it will fall, and the market makers waiting. Time after time. If you rise, it will fall. Oh, I'm done. Sell off in the last 15. It's not going to go red, though. Just, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been trying to jinx it all day. <laughs> I've been trying to help y'all out. I said it very confidently multiple times. This thing is not going red today, but, you know, that's it. That's it, man. That's a good song. Josh secretly has Cindy LaPair cassettes on his desk. Josh secretly didn't know she sang that song until you said that. But now I know. Now I know. If you really tried, we we could have got pump it up this morning. No. <laughs> this is what I tell you guys with making a deal. I don't know why y'all keep trying to refinance it like you Donald Trump yelling. Okay, calm down. I told you the last time I played it, I said, okay, if I play it, then the next level is 100 points higher. Y'all insisted. I insisted. We had a deal. Y'all keep trying to go back on it. We had a deal. Okay? I don't know if there was consideration, but we had a deal. No, there was. I gave you something for it. And in return, you were supposed to, to, to let us be in peace. You got 10-3 Palanter 18 debating on selling before close. Did they already report? I don't know if Palanter's a Friday earnings or not. But, I mean, I have a couple. There's some names might do their own thing. If it has earnings, it's going to be, yeah, if they already reported, I mean, you're just at the nature of, you're at the uh, mercy of the market. But uh, I said I didn't make any plays today. I'm up a lot, but I'm just holding whatever I, I was holding and set up with prior. Some were down, some came back, all of that. But. You know, it's borderline. If how do you feel about the rally and where you go forward from here? But then, if it is, uh, if it's on time, I mean, wait, the fuck are you saying though? Your contract expires today. You don't even have a choice, sir. Respectfully, oh, ten eleven. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, wait a minute, sir. You don't even have a choice. <laughs> you got to sell it, or you go sell it and buy another one. But ten eleven. Well, that's the thing. The only issue is that the market could still go higher. You could still fall out of the money in that time frame, and then Palantir keeps ripping. I would ghetto spread it, especially if you're up a lot. You know, are we hit new highs? Biden explaining build back. Yeah. Hey, Oscar, God bless. I heard, hey, Oscar, I heard you had a new kid. I'm going to make sure you pay taxes for that. Anyway, wait, wait, I'm just kidding. You get a benefit. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you know how we did it? Look at this. You know how we built our... Look at what happened. Spy's going down. But they won't keep us down. We invented the S&P. Okay, look. I want you to see it. You look at it. You see how... Look, this was from the top down. That doesn't work. So what we did, we built from the bottom up. That's how we were able to rally here. You guys were like, how come... How come the market won't go up? Because you were, you were starting from the top. We never... We don't do top down. We tried top down. Look at what happened in 2022. Come on, look, we did top down. Top down didn't work. It didn't, it didn't go to anywhere. I mean, we built from the bottom up. You bounce. That's what happened. Anyways, surprise coming down now. Some people getting excited. I'll see you in a little bit. Mm. 
Mm. Bull so confident. No, 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 no. Bro, you weren't saying any of these comments for three weeks. <laughs> Some of y'all really showed your hand in the last 48 hours. <laughs> I saw I saw comments I ain't seen in a minute, and I was like, why y'all getting so mad today all of a sudden? But it makes a lot of sense. But it's okay, man. It's okay. They were enjoying it, though. They enjoyed the downside. Again, that's why I said y'all need to be nice to each other. It's not bull or bear. I got in on, I got in, I got wrecked on both sides in all of this. And I got to benefit on both sides in all of this. So I just really hope you guys, you know, just there's no point of, of sending these these wild shots at, at imaginary enemies in here. If they, you know, don't exist and don't make enemies out of people. I'm upset. Don't be upset. If you are upset, I'm telling you, that's the only way you lose. Uh, <laughs> Dude. I got murdered the last couple of weeks, dude. That's why I'm like, I'm grateful that it came back. But at the end of the day, like, you know, there was, there was something that, and I'm may, I'm just a sicko, but at the same time, like, you know, especially on a trading aspect though, you have to be ready and locked in. And what I mean by that, it's something I told you a while ago. I said, you know, I'm ready. You, I'm ready to lose everything. And in, until you come to terms with that, it is going to fuck with you a little bit or you'll get emo. I'm not going to get emotional after making a decision, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, fuck it. I'm sorry. You may like it. You may like me for that. You may respect me for it. You may hate me for it. You may call it complacent, whatever you want. It's like, you know, you still got to do your work. You got to put in the effort and your diligence. Sometimes you're going to make good decisions and bad. But when it's all said and done, though, like you have to just be in it and don't don't get regret. And what I'm saying is like, I've seen a lot of emotions come out. That's the whole point is like, you know, if there wasn't emotions, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say people are regretting things, but it's like at that same time, you have to be able to, to handle that and lock that in just no matter what. So it will be good. Yeah. There was a, there's a very good, as I said, everybody gets their turn. So, but at the same time, like the emotions up and down, just don't underestimate how important. Like we were just talking about the mindset. Emotions will get you feeling hyped. Emotions, you could have a lot of power and you'll you'll feel the opposite. It has been wild. That's all I've been saying. I even agree that Powell didn't even say what the market thinks he said. However, again, that's why I said I'm kind of uh, offended by mixed Mr. Nikki T. It's been a while. And then that's why you get the long term too. No matter what. The long term was a part of all of this nonsense. Every month of the year, the long again, and then add it wherever we go from here, wherever the future leads, that's all you got to do, bro. That's all you got to do. You got strength. I think all of you have strength. And that's why what we were talking about today Make sure you get rest because you could be the strongest person in the world. You could have all the experience, uh, but depending, you know, you could go through certain things and they will drain you. And then you being tired, you know, that being tired will lead you to be more emotional and not controlling your mindset. You know that, right? You're, more, you're not. Why are you more emotional? Because you're tired. That's it. If you're telling me you're not naturally a B word, you know what I'm saying? And, and you're central tendency not talking standard deviations or fed stuff but like who you are as a person you are generally not overreactive you do not get you know what i'm saying then you are tired and and that's why no matter how strong you are too that's literally what the feel was you know you could go through certain things that's what i'm saying maybe go sleep get food take a break relax look at things take a step back come to terms with your decisions that you've made but then you have to be able to you know get your rest so that you could think but don't underestimate how emotions are feeding into a lot of this and again if you're going through a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot eventually the littlest emotion if you're tired will find a way to to fuck with your mindset and again i think mindset is the is a very big key to this again from the trading all the way down to the long term once again Mm. Is it evil? No one's talking evil. Go to bed. Relax. 
See what I'm saying? Or you got to make a decision. Like we've told you again, there was times you had to make a decision here, even coming into it. There was a lot of great opportunities. But at the end of the day, sleep, rest, eat, drink water, find a way to detach. I, I hope you could have forgiveness in your heart for God knows whatever it may be. But like, again, these are all things to to the point where I'm saying, hopefully come at this from a clear a clearer mind and relax a little bit no matter what again this is i'm telling uh, this is after getting destroyed for three months i'm telling you i had my plan with it again the the thing is you know i could i got emotional at certain times and i didn't like it again you saw me get emotional i sold out of a buyout already in the last three months i said fuck that uh, no we're sticking to whatever we plan again i made my decision i'm a hold i'm a ride even on the earnings plays and and again we're here i had a plan for october didn't play out but i put myself in again stuff that wasn't going to expire and and then we go but in even the long term but just don't get emotional trust me it's all fucked up it's been a very fucked up year when it's all said and done but emotions are are probably the thing that I think you could see the most at every single one of these corners from SVB to the beginning of the year to now even this. Does Hamas look at the gains in the U.S. market on a day like this and rationalize higher markets equals more aid? To be honest, I don't think Hamas looks at the stock market in the U.S. Maybe I'm rude and I'm being ignorant, but I think they're more concerned with slash CL. I think that's a fair assessment. I think that's what they look at uh, in terms of everything right now. Because that's where they get funding. That's where if they could get that thing to move... They could have more leverage, so on and so forth. 5K in long term or 5K towards real estate? How are you going to put the 5K towards real estate? So that's the beauty. You could put 5K. You could go get yield on it right now in bill, but then you could also, uh, <coughs> you could also, I mean, you could put it in something and just sell it when you need the real estate, when you want to get the real estate. But Unless you're like you got a good FHA deal, five thousand down or something like that, uh, I just I don't know if I would do like crowd sourced real estate if that's what you're thinking with five thousand. Love you too, Nick. Love you too. Be at peace, my brother. So you could get them back. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Just focus. You'll make good decisions, especially if you got in good plays. Even if they turned around, it's like. Don't forget that, but don't let the emotions knock you out. And then again, emotions, word to the long term, bro. Word to the long term. Mm. It was technically, it was another by the invasion. Since you brought it up, what do you think about crowdsource real estate? Exactly what I just said when I brought it up. <laughs> I don't think it's uh I don't think it's really good for small amounts of money and individual investors. It's usually not. So I don't I stay away from it. Even I tell you guys, uh, you know, I've had Chad's come to me again, Daniel specifically. I think that was a notable deal because he made good money on it, but he approached me with a house flipping deal. He found a good off market, he got it from work, and he was like, Hey, I wanna flip this, like I wanna do this, like do you wanna split it with me? And I was like, no, uh, there's no point in us splitting it. Because I said, I was like, do you need my money? Do you need me to give you money? He was like, no. I was like, okay, do you need me to find you people who could work on it? He said, no. He's like, my dad and the people I know out there. I was like, do you need my expertise in the area? Because I don't know shit about Chicago. And then he was like, no, I know everything about it. I was like, you don't need me to do it. Uh, <laughs> I was like, there's no point of us splitting 20 20 to $50,000 and, and, you know, going through the work and time. And so I'm like, you should just do it all yourself and then you should keep all the money. Uh, so you, that's why I like about real estate is like, you can make good amounts. It's very good, but I don't even, unless you have to early on in my real estate career, I did JVs. I did partnerships. Literally my first house flip was a result of a partnership. I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. However, it is still like, you know, once you start, if you have the resources for a deal, 
I would just do that and I wouldn't try to force, you know, like five thousand, ten thousand dollars into uh, a pot of 10, 15 investors or more when I would just, I would just go finesse a FHA multi-unit and, and then get that for five or 10 grand down and call it a day. Mm. No, we're not talking house hacking. <laughs> Yeah, what's up, TikTok? I want to show you guys house hacking and how you guys can hack the real estate market. So what you're going to do is you're going to buy a house and then you're going to move into that house. You're going to do this FHA loan, 3% down. You're going to get it for nothing. And then this is where the hack begins. You know that room that's there? Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to get somebody who's interested in that room. This is how you hack it. You get them to live in that room and depending on how many rooms you have, you can put them in those rooms and they will change you weed or I meant money, uh, but then they'll give you money and then you could go from there. And then but then then you house hack and then once they give you money, you're you don't pay for you to live in the house, but they live in the house with you and they pay to live in the house. We call it house hacking. Uh, isn't that just renting out your house? Well, that's the, if you want to say it like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, yeah, I don't know, man. No, it's a hack. <laughs> Sounds disruptive. So, yeah, that's that's my favorite. When TikTok started explaining renting out your house as house hacking, I lost it. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> that it comes, uh, maybe it comes, it comes second to when I genuinely had people asking me if they should not buy a real house and should buy NFT land, metaverse land. That was that one. That one's that one's hard to beat. That one's hard to beat. But you know, calling renting your house hacking that was that one got me. That one got me as number two. Twenty twenty one ruled. No, it wasn't, bro. Fucking a PS five was fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Fuck you say it, man. That's why a picture of a monkey was a hundred grand. It cost ten thousand dollars for a PlayStation, bro. Bro, PlayStation, bro, somebody gave you a PlayStation at market price. You were like, you turned into Smeagol from the ring. Like, oh my precious. Wow, you mean it? It's mine. It was, dude, that was crazy, bro. It was a crazy, crazy moment. You don't remember any of that? Weird. <laughs> oh, no, man. Oh, you're driving back, Orlando, from Miami? You're already coming back? Oh, you ain't partying in Miami? Stay for the night. Get dress coded when you want to go out. Like what? How's Elf not higher? I mean, safe to say it's a little smaller than you expected. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. I feel you though. Elf is definitely, you know, definitely smaller than I expected. Wow. So I look at my email. I kind of I need water and I or I need a poop. My stomach kind of hurt. This is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to end on behalf of uh, me and Tim Whitman. We are here to end all of this political ideology bullshit. We are not part of no labels, but we are here to end all of this left, right, 
I am no longer again. That's I'm telling you, we're done with this. No, no more Republican, Democrat, none of that. It's over, Chad. Because I'm going to present to you today your new 2024 political candidate, the best of both worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Donald Yellen. Why fight when we could come together? We took Janet Yellen and we took Donald Trump and we combined them. And now we have the ultimate political candidate. Mm hmm. Whatever you thought grandma couldn't do, Trump has it handled. Whatever you think daddy Trump was saying that, you know, shouldn't have really flew, you know, and, and there, you know, what I'm saying we need some more PR. But, you know, Mama Yellen got that covered. So, I'm just saying, you know, this is what y'all, I'm just, this is a great, great, just, I, I can't say it enough how great this alternative is and what this candidate means to me. Okay. <laughs> Donald J. Yellen, the J stands for jiggly. Okay. And, and that applies to both in so many ways. That's amazing. So, I hope you understand, but. We're going to be out on the campaign there, man. That's it. We've ended it all. <laughs> Donald J. Yellen. Ladies and gentlemen. Donald J. Yellen. Oh, Basim. Habibi. My man, God bless you. Oh, no. <laughs> you god bless you shout out to chad baby hope you're doing good man basim i hope you got a long term i hope that's a result of the long term mm -mm. what does a donald yellen sound like I, I i can't do the voice i can't i can't i don't know what it would sound like mm -mm. Ah, it's terrific i'm telling you yeah it's terrific it's that what we've done in our policy it's amazing what we're going to do, we're going to build a wall. It's a wall. It's not even a wall. It's going to be a, a minimum tax wall. We're going to have a minimum tax on all walls. That's what we're going to do. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. Nobody's done that. You know, it's, it's fine. I think China is good. It's a good, it's a good place. It's a bad place. It's a good place. Do you have any shrooms? I don't do shrooms, but I, I, I can sm smell them. I can could, I could, I could rub them on my pores. That's what I can. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. All right. On that note, maybe I'll go to the bathroom. I need a break after that, I think. See, I need water or something, man. Mm-hmm. Movers here and there. Follow you me on Instagram. At the train uh, Apple shares you. down about eight-tenths of a percent. We should point out it was on a four-day run heading into those earnings here, so still holding on to some pretty uh, significant gains on a weekly basis. But concerns here about the longer-term trajectory for this company, particularly if China turns out to be that soft spot that everybody seems to think it is. Look at Church and Dwight here. Of course, uh, this is a big consumer staples company, and uh, they gave some guidance here that, well, it was their old guidance. And there was a lot of concern as to why they didn't raise their guidance. And they talked, Katie, a lot of this about this idea of an increased marketing spend, which I assume means that they feel like they have to advertise more and maybe offer more promotions to get people to buy some of those products. And it just, again, speaks to this very punishing earnings season that we're in, where it needs to be a beat and a raise. You need to surpass expectations. Otherwise, you end up with a 7% downdraft. Well, let's take a look at two quick other ones. Cybersecurity company Fortinet having its worst day in quite some time. That was on the back of a very disappointing pointing earnings report and then you have Expedia having one of its best days in quite some time up almost 20 percent here uh, a lot of concerns here that the travel sector really was starting to deteriorate a sign maybe that that's not necessarily the case meanwhile we want to go down to Atlanta where our very own Michael McKee is standing by with an exclusive interview with the head of the Atlanta Federal Reserve Raphael Bostic We'd like to welcome everybody to Bloomberg Television and Radio Worldwide. We're happy to be joined by Rafael Bostic, who is the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, which, if you could see over my shoulder, is right over there. Uh, we thank you for coming into our offices, however, and uh, we thank you for warming it up from yesterday. I was a little chilly. Well, the pleasure is mine, and welcome <laughs> to Atlanta. You were the uh, first on the FOMC to say the economy didn't need any more rate increases. Did the jobs report today basically vindicate your view? 
Well, I wouldn't say vindicate. We're, this is a journey, and we're going to be on this journey for a while. What I will say is I'm pleased with the number. It came in, in a, at a level that is consistent with what my outlook has been, and it really tells me that our policies are really starting to work through the economy in a way that can help us get to our 2% target for inflation uh, with minimal pain is what I'm hoping for. Well, what drove the decision on Wednesday to leave rates unchanged? You came into the meeting with inflation up a little bit. The last jobs report was very strong. Consumer spending was very strong. And yet uh, everybody decided to go with the Bostic view and, and hold. Uh, what was behind the thinking there? Well, I, I, I'll tell you what was behind my thinking on this. You know, in addition to looking at the data, uh, I do a lot of on-the-ground intelligence, and it, it, in a period that was really unusual for me, everybody was saying the same thing, which is that things are slowing down, we are seeing the economy start to, quote, normalize is a thing that people have been saying relative to this, this, hot pre, this hot pandemic period. When I get unanimity on that, that tells me that there's something that's happening on the ground that is probably stronger than what I might see in the data. And then the data, even though they did come in very strong in September, if you looked over a longer term trend, it still said that the economy was moderating. And those two things together made me very comfortable with the notion that we still have time to like watch, be patient, uh, and be cautious and make sure that we understand the trends and don't overreact to any single data point. Well, barring some exogenous shock, would you say you're basically at the peak now that uh, you don't need to raise rates anymore? So what I would say is this. There are three possible outcomes. Either inflation is going to stall out in, the, in this trajectory, it's going to continue slow and steady, or it's going to go off a cliff. I have all of those possibilities in play, uh, and I'm going to stay on that. Today, my outlook is that we're going to stay on that slow and steady. And if we continue to do that, then I think where we are now will be sufficiently restrictive to get us to, to the 2% level for inflation. But there's still a lot that's going to happen. And between now and even the next meeting, we're going to get a couple of jobs numbers. So we're bullish. going to get a couple of readings back, for inflation. But now it's Boston. And that will tell us and give us more signals. But again, as market's to not really reacting. Again, look at the bonds, too. You mentioned too. talking to a lot of people in your district. Well, you're 10 points off the high. Are slowing down. Still Can a good you level. characterize that? Because not long ago, the question was, did the Fed go too far? And we're not just slowing. We're going to fall off a cliff, as you mentioned. Uh, and others are saying the soft landing narrative. Where do the business people see it? You know, the business people are in, a, in an area of moderation back to normal. They understand that they've gone through a period where they've had sales that are at levels that, frankly, they didn't expect. And the decline in those sales and that activity over time has come in slower than they expected. But it is continuing. And, and that's really the dynamic that, that really governs. You know, the thing that I think people need to just keep in mind is that through this pandemic period, through this high inflationary period, we've had exceptional demand. Consumers have been continuing to spend. And once that gets back to a normal level, uh, then we'll be back in, in a more normal environment where inflation will be at 2%. And so we needed to work through that. Uh, and another thing that's been quite interesting is that supply has really responded as well. We've seen labor force participation be much higher than I think I had my outlook for, for sure. And that's been another moderating force to help us uh, get to, the, to where we are today. A lot of questions uh, about long and variable lags, and maybe they're hitting the economy right now. You guys got the senior loan officer survey this week. Is credit still tightening the way it has been? Credit is definitely tight, and there is still stuff to happen there. We know that a lot of corporate bonds, for example, um, they were, they're about to reset. And those resets are going to come in at, at interest rate levels that are two or three percentage points higher than they were previously. And that's going to be a drag. I hear the same thing in commercial real estate, where there are a lot of people who are expecting some of these buildings to struggle to hit the valuations that were projected in the previous lower interest rate environment. And that's going to be some disruption as well. So there is still stuff that's going to come from our policy. But I think that ultimately will contribute to us getting ourselves to that 2% level and right now is really just let the time pass let's let the economy work through all of this and see where we are at, at that point well you and others at the Fed have made the case that uh, now that you're higher you can go longer that you'll leave rates at uh, this elevated level for quite some time you must have modeled out 
some idea of how long it would take at this level to bring inflation down to the target. So we have a projection. Like for me, I would say it's going to be in the second half of next year. Of course, that's still eight months from now, ten months from now. A lot's going to happen. So I don't try to get too precise and exactly it's going to be this meeting where something happens. But it is still a ways off and we still have a lot to watch and, 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 and um, monitor as we think about understanding how the economy is evolving. And you think the economy will do fine at this level of interest rates until that time? So fine is, you know, this very subjective word. I do think we can get to uh, inflation to the levels that are close to our target. Uh, without seeing a recession. I do not have a recession in my outlook, but I don't also see us growing continuously at you know, five and six percent you know, in the quarterly basis. We're going to be in sort of a slow, steady uh, growth that's methodical. Eight it ten won't months. be exciting a lot of folks, but it will be one that sort of is, uh, doesn't feature a lot of additional pain and disruption for American families. No recession, uh, but eight, Powell ten has months talked of about positive. growth needing to be either below uh, trend or potential, depending on the day. Uh, we discussed that at his news conference. But uh, do you see that as necessary, that it needs to come down significantly? And do you still believe that uh, an employment needs to go up significantly in order to bring inflation down? So I, I don't know. What I would say is this. There are many states of the world where we can get to inflation to where we need it to be, where we don't see a, a wholesale and widespread disruption. Part of that is how strong the supply side continues. I, I saw a report today that suggested that, so, that the supply chain disruptions are fully a thing of the past. We might actually be looking for additional supply to be able to fill in. If that happens, then you can get the strong growth, you can get the minimized unemployment, and still see the price level fall, the rate of the price level uh, increase and uh, decline. So that's what I'm hoping for. But of course, I've got to be ready and prepared for any kind of eventuality. And we'll just have to see how it plays out. Well, the, uh, the economy growth and especially unemployment have not performed as anticipated by the Fed going forward. So what is it that would get you to change your view of what needs to be done? Is it basically just watching inflation and whether it comes down or starts to go up again? So to me, there, there are two things, and I might add a third. But the first is just what's happening with the trajectory of inflation. If it continues to progress towards our 2% target, to me, that's a very positive sign that says, let's I don't let think he's a voter working, this time around, working. but the second he's like the first really, one given a criteria from the beginning of the pandemic is, is inflation expectations. Powell would never do this. And if we find right that now, consumers or businesses are really starting to feel like that long term level of inflation that's going to be the baseline is creeping up, if that's their expectation, we've got to act and we've got to take that uh, under control. But that's not what's happening right now. And, and the long run expectations have stayed relatively steady throughout the pandemic. And the short run expectations have fallen significantly. The third one that I'm looking at also is the wage level. And everyone's talking about this. To me, I think that is, uh, that's been a very welcome development in terms of how it's evolved. And that the, the, the businesses I talk to are saying, we are getting to a place where we're back to our old style. That, you know, the, the 10 and 15% increases in wages that we've had to do the last couple of years, they're not on the table, they're not necessary, and they're, I'm starting to hear more and more. The increase we're going to do this year is very similar to what we were doing in 2018 and 2019, and that's very welcome news. Well, you said uh, probably uh, see progress on inflation the second half of next year. So at that point, what do you do? Do, do you start looking at rate cuts? Well, I would say I'm, going to, I'm hoping and expecting to see inflation progress throughout th until the next year. Uh, and then we'd have to really start to think about, like, what's our long run neutral level? I don't think, I think we're in restrictive territory today. And as we get closer and closer to our target, we're going to have to think about moderating our, the level of our policy stance. Uh, but that's down the road. And, um, you know, I, I actually, it's interesting. I talked to a lot of business people, and they ask, like, how are you thinking about this? For me, 
if we're restrictive now, we can't wait till we're at exactly 2% to start reducing rates. It's got to be before that. But the dynamic in that precise moment will really depend on the context. So I can't say for with any degree of certainty exactly when that will happen. But as we get closer and closer uh, to that 2%, I think that'll be something that I'll have to take on board a lot more. Well, your background is in housing. And, and so this raises the question of what happens to housing. People do not want to sell a 7% uh, mortgage at this point and uh, take out one uh, and, and sell their 3%. So is housing basically in the dumper now for years to come? Well, I hope it's not years to come. But look, we've, we've, had, we've had an extraordinary period with incredibly low interest rates, and a lot of people were fortunate enough to be able to buy homes and get mortgages at those low rates. That is our reality. And there, so there is going to be some rebalancing that needs to happen, and that will happen over time. I don't think this is all going to happen in a six-month period, uh, but my, my objective right now is to get infl inflation under control so that our policy rates can get back to something that's lower than where it is now, and I'm hopeful that mortgage rates will follow that, and then we'll be back to a more normal housing market where people will transact and move and buy and sell as their life circumstance determines. Well, then, uh, a last question. When you get back to whatever normal is, should people expect it to be higher than in the last 10, 12 years? Uh, a higher interest rate, perhaps a little bit higher inflation rate, uh, maybe growth, a potential growth a little bit higher. Well, it, I would expect, yes, higher than the last 10 years. We've been basically been at zero. Zero, I don't think, is a reasonable long-run expectation for where our interest rate should be. So it'll be higher than that. Uh, but I really don't think inflation will be higher than, than our 2% target. We want to get there, uh, and that'll be the goal. And, and if we get to that level, I think that sets up the U.S. economy for pretty solid growth over the next several years. All right. Rafael Bostic, thank you very much, president of uh, the Atlanta Federal Reserve. We'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks there to uh, Michael McKee. Of course, a great interview there with the Atlanta Fed president, Rafael. All right, Bostic. He gave, he gave a little criteria. He was talking about inflation expectations. He said one more thing, but I don't even think the market reacted. He said inflation, 2%. He uh, said credit is tightening, and then more will happen on that front. But I don't know. It wasn't a – you were dropping before he came on, kind of moved around a little bit. If anything, I think towards the end of the day now, we only got 15 minutes remaining. He's very – he's always been bullish on, on all of it. Again, he said hold rates 8 to 10 more months. And then we'll see where things go. But he said, yeah, no no recession. No, nah, but just he has, I mean, if you've seen Bostick, sometimes the market, he'll say one of those bullish-ass comments. You've seen a 3% day because of Bostick or 2%. As, as weird as that sounds, it shouldn't have happened, but it did. It did happen. As, as weird. Oh, that's me. That's me. We only have 15 minutes left in the day. <clears throat> Can you go through your long term? Kind of. Uh, again, I'm a little limited. Maybe uh, if you guys wait till we uh, move to the whole Schwab thing and all of that, because it's like I have only access to one right now. Again, I sound like my check-ins and my savings, but nothing has changed. All I've done is add to it. So a couple, I think I posted on the YouTube uh, as of late. There should be something on the channel uh, with the latest like purchase of everything. Again, we grabbed MO, uh, and that's about it. But I have a deposit. Haven't done anything yet. And then we're in the process of migrating accounts. So once we get that out of the way, I'd love to go over the long term. It was a great year for the long term. Again, we made a couple of new additions and they didn't do too well. However, uh, we had a lot of uh, great progress from last year and the end of the year purchases. So I'm hoping it plays out the exact same. Again, we bought a couple stuff over the last couple of months. I mean, we're kind of near on the prices. I mean, Disney... Still good within earnings level. Again, PayPal, that one's down now. 3M, again, in the volume. But we got a good uh, a, a good range, a good price. I'm not really too, uh, too tripping out on some of these. But, you know, we're going to move some things around, and then we'll be good. Mm. Played the inky vid. Or after close. Maybe I've never I've never done that. I've done that, so it'd be new. It'd be new for my schedule. Every data point says recession. Every pundit says everything is fine. 
I mean, if you haven't noticed, everybody just flip flops into whichever direction has momentum. So again, there's that's why like I felt a certain way about the whole market this year, but even then, you could get whipsawed in in various ways. But at the end of the day, I mean, we there's a couple of things you could follow. It's just like I I really think if you don't want to have to get caught up in everything. Just pay attention to the bond market and what it really means and, and rates and why people are reacting how they are. And the yield curve, it's it's mysterious and it doesn't say a lot. But so far, you know, uninversion has been negative. I, and I think people can uh, I think you got a crash course lesson on that. But there's some broader factors you could follow that are still still pointing north more or less. Uh, but everything else, again, the data, soft data, hard data, it's it's there's a lot of. A lot of variance in everything. Mm -mm. AMD scam and bears. AMD does that every earnings. I'm telling you, we were talking about every time it's on earnings, it'll even be low. Even if the earnings were bad or good, it doesn't matter. It just gets bought up no matter how it trades. I've seen that all year with AMD. It has been wicked. And then even Micron, they did me dirty. I don't want to talk about the micron. Micron, disgusting. Where is it? Why was Japan? They had a holiday. I forgot what the holiday was, but they're closed. The yen went up. Would have been interesting if they're open. We'll even see what they do on Monday, too. Remember, that's still part of the equation. And China. You guys don't know. Like, China's done a little bit better off of us because of all of this. But, like, it's been awfully quiet on the China front. Early 10 minutes. Oh, wow. It's right around the corner. It is right around the corner. Yeah, 10 minute rigged right now. Literally right now, 10 minute rigged. You are going lower. That's been the trend for the last, like, what, 30 minutes? Wait, where's my... Why won't it load up? Yellen. Why won't my, my other E-Trade won't load up? Or my TD? What happened? Why won't it show? You guys see this? If I do that, it shows up. But it won't. Market on close, 36 million to the buy side. That seems very small for a day like today. What's even the volume? So, yes, last two days are just under 100 million. We're probably going to do the same here. You're at 80. You'll get a lot here towards the close. And it's a Friday expiration at that. Mm. Bro. Bro, this is really bothering me. Can't do anything. Not bad. Far from the thirty million solo sessions. I I feel you on that. Today alone, a race October losses in my portfolio. Yes, it was, dude. This is we've talked about how wicked it was. It parallels November twenty twenty. Again, the only the only part I don't like is that. It doesn't, it's, you know, again, this is what I was saying. Every other time when the Powell first paused, I asked why the market didn't react. And, and again, they waited till the second one. But at the end of the day, it's like Powell still said a couple of things that weren't too good. I understand why people are moving. There's a little bit of vulnerability, but everything that this parallels, I mean, it, it looks extremely bullish, unfortunately, uh, because again, I say that because just days ago, 
you have literally you have people talking good about things just last Friday they were telling you it was unattractive on bonds this again remember last Friday was abysmal I don't know if you guys recall that so very very wild to think about very very wild to think about and then bonds are going lower into the close we're still holding up 10 minute rig this past here for a couple of minutes not too much movement. I can't open up my thing. This is stupid, man. Let's see. This I got my other one. I don't know why it won't let me load up the other one, bro. So again, 4362, that's where we're at. All right. I'll have to put maybe I'll just have to keep that one up. Coca-Cola on the lump. Check XLP Dow point seven. Spy 1.0 percent, not too crazy, and then Nasdaq point at uh point 1.42. Banks even coming down here a little into the close. Fortinet up, they got destroyed today. Uh, XLP, yeah, XLP is up only a quarter. Coca Cola, Coca Cola's in the red. Not too many names should be red. Let's see. So coming into the close, final five in about one minute twenty seconds. You have Dow Jones names. 8 red, 22 green. And then FedEx Pilot Union says labor talks to restart on November 6th. And then NASDAQ 100, 14 names red, 86 names in the green. And then S&P 500, you're looking at 75 red, 425 in the green. Yes, ELF is one of those in the in the red today. One of the very select few. And, uh, and then Expedia is the best on the SPY and NASDAQ, I'm pretty sure. Expedia is insane. But again, remember, Expedia, you know, you might be like, how come Airbnb don't respond like this? But, like, they kind of look somewhat similar, but your, uh, Expedia got way more wrecked. I plan with Elf. I'm going to ride it out for a little bit. I would consider an average down, but not quite yet. It's kind of stayed within the same, like, I like the 50 shares because, uh, again, it's been like 10 bucks down at max. Then it goes to, like, 5 and then fluctuating. And I was up a good amount on it. I, that's the, the weird part. I thought this play was a winner right off the bat. <laughs> we were we were up, like, a 6 or $7 a share or something, and then it just switched gears. We'll close there. Well, get ready. You missed the final five right there. 20 seconds ago, I was telling you stories. Four, three, five, back to the level. So, again, this was that first main level in the morning. You did not get to test here. And remember, last time that we were here, I mean, you did kind of do the same thing in between these levels. Remember, there was a little bit of resistance. So, we'll see if that's going to play out the same way here. Uh, you only have a couple minutes left. So, Chattadonia. Chattadonia. Wrap pop w r a p uh, i must give you the warning here you got to pop on rap technologies but the warning i want to give you is that the new guy is about to arrive very soon and the thing about the new guy is that he is very loud so we have had reports of eardrums bleeding some people said dormant baby back bitch came to life uh, other inconveniences and problems so uh what we just always say is once you hear the word earmuffs, that is your warning to uh, mute your speakers because we want to make sure you are not only safe uh, and the safety of others and above all else, but we also want to make sure you have a great experience. So if you are prone to anything sensitive, loud noises, when I say earmuffs, just mute your speakers and you will be good to go. You'll be good to go. No problems, no questions asked. Don't worry, you got a little bit of time, maybe. It depends. You got like a couple, you know, I'll let you know. Who's the new guy? It's hard to explain. He's coming right now, though. So listen, I'll just tell you now uh, if you want earmuffs, okay? Everybody, put on your earmuffs again just in case if you feel like you're susceptible to any of those other issues that we just listed. Not a recommendation. You're, you go at your own accord, and listener discretion is advised. Uh, but earmuffs, this is your time. Okay, here he is. Here he is. All right, ladies and gentlemen.
Uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please throw them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the aisles with a trash bag if you like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Sunday night. And then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. Monday morning out of sunny San Diego, California. As you make this final approach in the San Diego International Airport, it's about 74 degrees and sunny, looking like a beautiful day, especially if you fought the urge to short the market because uh, the last three days in the market is insane and we haven't seen anything like this in three years. Uh, but besides that, uh, we are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required till the election. So all we ask is you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate you guys' business. If you're interested in the Call Rapid Awards program card, please flag down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat, and hopefully have a wonderful weekend. Chatadonia. Chatadonia. It's time to bring it home. One of the wildest weeks of the year. You haven't seen stuff in many, many years already, but now you have one minute. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to wrap it up. Bring it home. Finalize those plays. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Are you going to long it into the weekend? Short it, not play it, wait for the next move. Either way, like I said, it's been one of the most wildest ones you've had in a while. A lot of emotions. Last Friday felt a lot different, but you have less than 15 seconds. Finalize the plays, shares, options, futures. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Less than in 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. Five, four, three, two, one. Ding, 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 Good game, baby. I need a GG right now. Everybody, that's seven hours in the books. A crazy week, crazy month, crazy everything. Let's go. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. Everybody that contributed. Everybody that brought something to the table. Everybody that vibed out. Everybody that stuck through it and didn't even think about selling the long term. Even if you did, it's okay. GG, baby. Let's go. I need it from everybody. Best chat in the world. Worst chat in the world. If you don't drop it, then what? I'm just you. Just saying you got no respect for not one person, including yourself. It's good sports. We need a GG. Everybody, right now. Show it right now. Good game. Happy Friday. Wow. 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 Look at the twitch. Good game, baby. I see you too. Everybody, I hope you know he's stronger as well. Way to hold it down. Everybody dropping news, contributing. Good vibes to the table. Respecting other chats, baby. Good game. That's how you play. End of the year. New year. Already on the way. Show you the top. Everybody. I need me to rap. Come on, see me a lot. Monday through Friday, you need me, let's talk. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, where's your jail? Come on. Nah, I mean it. Hey. It's 4, 4 p.m. I have 4 p.m. when I wake up, bitch. Hey. Shout out to Percy, that's me. You can just call me JP. I do not answer no questions. You can leave that to Shaquille. Camilla riding with me. 
Feel like you up for some weed. She I'm just vibing, right bro. Machine. Thank you. I'm gonna make sure I'm, you I'm vibing, bro. What a week. Machine. Enjoy the weekend, chat. You better get a relaxing weekend. You know that? I gave you the feel of it, too, man. Thank you for being here. That's it. That's Friday, bro. I love it. Soak it all in. It's all crazy. Good and bad. I tell you to do the same thing. Fuck it. Just send them some Stop it. Tell them keep growing them grains. World. How you not get excited? Up or down, it don't matter. Stop it. You in the game or not? Eat a sports. In my cabin no more. Fuck the squad. Fuck the foe. Had it now. Fuck a bro. Now we going back to cold. Hunter, my dog, that's for sure. We ain't gon' fall about shit. Especially. That 10%. We ain't go find about hoes. Me and Nash get the vote. Friday. So if you gotta go, you gotta go. Thank you for being here. I got your store no froze. I got Stick around for a little bit. I got keys here for a little bit. I love you. God bless you. Happy week. I'll see you next week, too. God willing. Questions from Persia nightly. Bring up Trump if they don't like me. They give me the head yeah, wake up. Fashion bills, that's a layup. I'm the big man, I got say so. They like you down if I say so. Booster on booster on booster. Man, they don't man, they don't man, they. I just get EV a test break. Fuck you, Elon, I won't even say your name. Came in the office already bowling. Silent just ain't changed my name to Stalin. Read off the screen and I'm gone with the wind. Do nothing about something till they pass a bill. Pull up in a brand new bench truck. Have a fresh and did a brand new truck. How they got it, how they chefs. Yeah, how they got to make it one car. Chasing on your black, took off. Mixing up my words. I'm lying, so I think they mad. My fault, talking about inflation. I cost. Dumping our oil, turn me to a savage. One dollar shaved on a gallon. Fuck old Peck and King Salmon. And fresh, I'm, I'm tired. Right. Yeah, that's it, bro. That's it, bro. That's the day. That's Friday. Enjoy your weekend, please. For real. No matter what, man. And I'm telling you, we talked a little bit about emotions, but. I don't know, man. I've, if you can't say you've been through everything already this year, even after going through that last couple of weeks here, then I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? That's on you then. But I'm just saying show love. Enjoy the week. You've got to be exposed to so much, both good, bad. You see how things go, how fast things change, everything. So stay in the game. But I encourage you, you know, be relaxed this weekend. Get some rest, man. Get some food. Drink some water. Be at peace and be ready to go, man, so you could do some extraordinary things. You know what I'm saying, baby? I hope you feel me. So, Chad, I love you. God bless you. If you have to go, you got to go. But now we must rebuke the heathens. We're going to rebuke the heathens. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go get my cloak. I'm going to go get my equipment, my Bible, anything else. We're going to have our Bible study. If you know, you know. I am going to play 2K, I think, after. So we're going to have a limited amount of time for the Lord, and then I'm going to play 2K. That sounds awful because it is if you – but you don't got to understand the inside joke. But either way, though, no. But y'all better read Proverbs, okay? You better read Proverbs. You're a heathen. Well, then the music will get rid of you, I'm sure. Don't worry, though. You'll be fine. Maybe throw in a couple of the Bible emojis, rebuke a heathen. You know what I'm saying? And either way, honestly, though, it's not that deep, man. For all of you, I love you, okay? It's all about love, bro, for real. That's all it. I've been telling you that for a minute, man, but, like, for real. It's all about love, and I hope you show love to your brothers and sisters. We are all one. I really hope you guys really get that, man. You know, all this stuff you see in the news, bear, bull, it don't matter. You got people dying, y'all arguing with people, bear, bull in the damn stock market. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? So just love. It's all love, baby, no matter what. And we love you, man. So just, just keep that in mind, bro, and try to show love, exude that at every opportunity. And there you go. There you go. But I'm going to go get my stuff. I'm going to go, I'll, you know, so I love you. Even I don't care what you believe. I love you. That's it. It's all love, man. I hope you smile, too. You know, that's it. If anything, I say a lot of crazy shit. People don't like me for it. But at the end of the day, I do hope people smile. You know, I hope you can relax a little bit at some moments, man. And it's love, baby. So show some love. But I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to give you some uncle. Run it, baby. Run it. Seismic. Oh, yeah. Start them off. Get them some old school. That's where the playlist is taking you today. Hey, for real, though. What are you doing this for? Like, ask yourself that. Hey, fly, they turn this shit up. It took a while to get here. Told the daddies, take care. You could ask my mama, been hustling since daycare. So I had a lot of time to get me all these haters. Talking God in every song because he showed me favor. <laughs> but don't get it wrong, Tyrone, you meet the maker. I'm a weirdo. Study coaches around the planet. Learn the earnings in the battle. Serve a purpose, not a man. I'm a working in the famine. I learn working from the end. I'm the sickest motherfucker that you never seen before. I care about the final score and worry about the leaderboard. What the fuck you 
smiling for Start acting like you've been before I'm just trying to live my life Watch all the seeds I'm planting grow Yeah, and some shit you probably read about Business shit can stitch you with Some words to make you sleepy, yeah But I just made a million trading news up off the TV, yeah I put that shit on YouTube now The youth is trying to be me now So, take notes and not grant it Stay woke and upstanding Buy hope and sell panic That's a lesson in disguise So you might wanna rewind that Sell it on the high decay time Then I buy back I'ma take it, it's flagrant But take in, take patience I'm stalking, then waiting, then trade it Support it or hate it I love your engagement I came from the basement like Dre said Started from the bottom, how I get here Lots of risk management, I focus on the 10 year All that matters, what's not when, just patient till it get here I'ma do this till I'm dead, I hope I'm making this clear <laughs> Feel me, you should kill me, otherwise pay me no mind But if you wise, pay me your time up Try to fly and pay the fine, do what you want, your life ain't mine Ask my brother, ask my bitch, everything, I take my time You trying to ride, I'ma teach you how to move When the only option losing, the environment is fools Let me inspire what to do, give them some value, speak the truth The shit I'm speaking, this ain't new the way I speak it, make it cool, I dumb it down, I act a fool I'ma kick this lesson in, this one encompass all of it You only get one light to live, you blow it, then you dumb as shit Money, you start coming in, make sure you pay the government Just learn the game, do what they say, to teach you how to duck that shit yeah, I'm talking escorts, LLCs, this a loophole melody Feel like I'm Pablo Medellin, I gave my people what they need I told my God I had a dream, you like for real, you telling me You think it's coming that easy, so, yeah why you think I'm on my grind? I treat this life like it ain't mine For that been beaten and despised I've been seen, I've been admired I've been angry all the time I've been tired on this spot But that's the devil, he a lie <laughs>
I just want unity, no time for fighting Joint ventures, only time I like dividing Came up to the lead from behind like I'm Biden Trump make a tweet, I got rich off his typing No, you don't like it, you can't describe it I keep providing, contracts I write it Taking what's mine like I bought it, assign it <laughs> Walking to the car, this is 2020 last shit Live in the hills, but I still get them spread Started with a little, but I still reinvest it Fear how I feel, then you feel like it's a blessing I just want the lessons, I just want protection I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression If I'ma never plan, if you waste, put perfection Fingers to the dad, yeah, hold it down, we gon' get it Turn the last shit. Live in the hills, but I still get them spread. Started with a little, but I still reinvest. You feel how I feel, then you feel like it's a blessing. I just want the lessons, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. If I'ma never plan, if you waste, put perfection. Fingers to the dial, hold it down, we gon' get it. <laughs> hey man, that sound like opportunity. That's it, feel like opportunity. You feel the wind? Nah, <laughs> you don't feel me, dog. It's a call, baby. Get that armor, keep it shining. Let's go. Depo on the beat. It's a cup, baby. Yeah, boss and Chris, they said a crash. I kept the band so limbo cash. I kept it cool, was moving fast. I came with nothing left with the bag. You should do the math, I ain't pulling back. I'm pulling up, you pulling that. I double down, then double day. I changed the plan, I'm full with that. And I, so, this should be your motivation. Balance, growth, and values. I ain't talking about it. Stop rotation, price are going up. But that ego also got inflation. Told you it was tough, but it's different when you finally face it. Take it for complacent, get your patience. If it reset, what you making? Cause it hasn't taken. Surprising how much time to waste despising that could really tilt the balance or could kill you at the margins. Beg your pardon, I ain't never beg. I planned it and I got it. Lots of Luka Doncic with the options. I'm Giannis, feel like your kids with the passes. I'm a holder, you would talk it. Getting older and I'm wiser. I could run it like Eliza. You can't tell me that I eat it if you've never been through fire. Whoa, I'm the favorite today. Yes, me for a favor. You got motive, not no motivation. Stop with thought of faking. Thought I told you when I'm finished, then you're gonna hear me say it. Friday. Turn the bag into a boat off the bar. Happy Friday, baby. I ain't talking drugs. I got a lot of keys. What's up, man? Open lots of doors, but that shit didn't come cheap. From the moment I was born, it was them or it was me. But I still show them love, paying homage to the king. People hella fake, they do it easy. Why well, you got something to say, but you ain't speaking? How you know about the play, but you ain't Enjoy the weekend, baby. It's a shame they can't do it before they speak. This one not out yet, bro. Uncle like Ben, he's, he get mad no at me candles, too. No Ellis, no I'll give you another one. Cause I learned a little don't lesson from my mind, right? You don't want to get in the world and lose your soul, man. Right? Stack market. That's another lesson. You the should market know loves you if it's long Ask term. Hates you in the short it. term. Don't be so dramatic. You ain't Lil Wayne making Lil money, but I bet you gon' feel the same. I'm still a little vain, grow a little with the pain, change a little with the change, change the thoughts, change everything. Thank, Thank you, God, God, for the day, day, for the sun, for the rain, Thank for the joy, for the pain. The divvies in the trays, another day, another divvy. Had a still a bitch, riding through your city, screaming, say that 10%. The- you heard this? This one, Uncle got to redo this one, but this was different. Not too many people heard this one. Bye-bye.
money make me more alone The moral of the story is that good and bad will always grow Same time, said it's fine and we believed them Make men fried to stay inside, they turn the truth to treason Reality's perception, next thing, they'll cancel seasons Cause the history means nothing if the people cannot read this Set your clock back, don't tap back Don't matter if you red, white, blue, black Gotta matter where the energy of food at So if you really trying to be deep, you should do that Cause I really keep it dripping out shoes, man Ain't doing nothing different, I lose, man I was plenty, but the work is still Susan Full circle, most lazy, but a few men I let, I let Oh man, give me give me the ball, bro. That's it. Now we gotta play 2K. Now we gotta play 2K. Ale. <laughs> What's up, man? I hope you all feeling good. And again, like I said, man, last Friday I was like, I know how you feeling, and this week I know how you're feeling too. Again, I I really I I genuinely feel like, you know, this was an opportunity to go through a lot on both sides. I feel like. I don't know what type of exposure you got through all of it, both financially as well as like actual ex being exposed to it. But my goodness. So, Chad, I hope you're feeling good, though. I hope you find a way to get good over the weekend no matter what. I hope you get more prepared, but you can get prepared by getting some sleep, some rest, everything else in between. But what we got for the weekend, baby? Oh, you passed the real estate test in California. Excited to join the call, baby. Let's go. Where's the damn horn at, bro? Are you kidding me? Let's go. <coughs> Another one. That's what I'm talking about, bro. For real? Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, man. Good work. Good work. Good job. Now you get ready to start. Now you got now you still a lot more work to do. But let's go, baby. Recovering from being sick. Oh, man, I hope you're doing good. I've been praying for you on all ends, baby. So I hope you're doing good. It's good. That's good. I, I Never mind. I don't want to say it, man. I don't want to say it. Yeah, I got sick a little bit ago. Remember? I, yeah, I died. I died. And then my voice. Did I love my voice? You're resting. Let's go. Going to the Bulls game? No way. That sounds hype. Arc leaps. Let's go, baby. Let's go. What are you doing for the weekend? You're going to be doing arc leaps as you're going to see your room, just looking at Kathy Wood pictures. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm so I'm saying that's I'm asking what you're doing this weekend. You say arc leaps. That's my first. I get a weird imagination. Pickleball. I've yet to play. Working long hours. Let's go, baby. For a purpose. For a purpose, I hope. I know, I know. I don't even have to hope, baby. Long term. You skinny. You just checked your gas meter. Look good. God bless. That's good, baby. So I'm talking winners coming to Michigan. Gotta lock it down. Oh, snow. I don't know. I hope I hope there's no like messed up weather events. Remember every I feel like every year they're like everybody got snowed in and nobody has electricity here. How did this happen? There's a thousand car pile up. How come nobody saw this happening? All right, I guess last year we got trains exploding and shit. Nobody even gave a shit about that. That's the crazy part. Airbnb cabin on the lake. Oh, you're going to be chilling. You're going to see Wemby? No way. Liar. 
You're really, you're gonna go watch him live. That's a treat. That's neat, but that is a treat. You get to go watch him live. That's awesome. He be when you're old, but I saw him. I remember they put him when 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 I when 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 I was in Alabama when when Ben Wemby Wemby. Which I remember seeing Wemby. I got to witness him in real life. He boom. He's out there looking like Slinky. He's looking like Slender Man. He just fucking way well, stretched across. He looked like he looked like he looked like you were watching him like he playing Star Wars Space Jam. He was playing Space Jam on the court. His arms just stretch out. He just like steps over the defenders. It's just insane. Yeah, it was crazy. We're going camping. Oh wait, I got I forgot. I almost stepped in. Leaves aren't done. We're gonna go camping at. I'm I'm behind too on the chat, bro. You don't you don't let me get ahead of myself. Young Kathy or old Kathy, you need to calm down, sir. <laughs> Glad to hear permable. Much love. Glad to hear, baby. College football, y'all talking to each other. Waking up at 3 a.m. just to work two hours for UPS. Freaking dumb. Why don't they give you don't they give you a million dollars or something? Be a millionaire in a decade at UPS. And then they give you a doctor. I said, man, don't you get like you get all the benefits? And don't tell me I was gonna strike again. Tell you should have told them. Offered stands would love to teach me pickleball. Uh, do I need a teacher for pickleball? It's kind of offensive. You don't think I could hold my own? No, I'm kidding. Colorado going to the Buffs versus Oregon State. Isn't that like a big rivalry? I feel like I've seen, I've seen the O and then the Buffalo, the Colorados. Yeah, I've seen that before, bro. I feel like that's a, a rivalry, no? Out in circuits, outlet. Daughter's B-Day party. You got a three-game series for championship in baseball tomorrow night. Hopefully rest, baby. It's good, though, but you guys, you're doing something. You like the baseball, though. You know, we're, I feel like that's rest in its way, even though it is, like, physically exerting. But amen, man. And happy birthday to Lil Sandwich. <laughs> you got sick, too, Farnoosh. I hope you do better. I hope you are as good. Drink water. Get some vitamins. Wake up, eat a vitamin. But eat. you got to eat food, though, or otherwise you're going to throw up. You had snow on Halloween. I don't. I still have yet to see. Didn't wait. I think it snow. It snowed last time. It was cold here. I think I saw a little bit of snow. Putting up insulation now. Screaming, God is good. Amen. Amen. Is that for the cold? <laughs> Said Lord. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. I'm not, I don't know what cold life is like. Honestly, Arizona got cold when I lived there, but it's, it's different. Not like I've never like lived in snow. I never had to live in snow. I mean. What gaming? TV, OLED, QLED, my for what? Hang out my daughter Avery. Boomer sooner. Wait, are you the boomer or does she go to Oklahoma? <laughs> or are you or is, are you nicknamed the boomer as the father? <laughs> boomer. Stalling cat six for rooms and cameras. Oh, let's go, baby. Let's go. I got one of them ready. I needed that. That was part of my I did we had we were doing some unless you're talking about the internet wires, right? Man's went the F off. Are oh, you talking Wemby? Yeah, Wembynomics. Oh, wow. I'm so far behind. You're going to the Keys doing some fishing. Isn't that beautiful? The Florida Keys, bro, isn't it like crazy? I wish I went out there, but isn't it like a mission and just like little ass islands? I feel like that place is a trip. TNON could move higher. All right. You guys, that's what you're doing for the weekend. Penny stocks. Early morning nights with the attic. You're going to go to church. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for you. People go into the outlet. I demand 2K session now. Slow your roll, bro. I'm way behind on this, Chad. It's an Oklahoma Sooner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boomer. Yeah, okay. I'm, I made it. I made it. Yeah, Key West. That's what I heard, bro. I didn't even get to go to the Twitch. What do we got for the Twitch, bro? I hella, I hella neglected the Twitch, bro. That's it. You said gambling. You're going golf, chores, gym, Excel, church. That's beautiful. You get some rest. I hope I rest and relaxation. Hearn, uh, JG, hanging out with some friends, riding a dirt bike. Oh, dude, I want to do that so bad. I still have. I still got my redneck dreams of a dirt bike. Two K in ten minutes and just chilling. Oh yeah, you gonna play two K, man? You gonna play two K with me, Mikey? You know, like low key, Mikey plays like every game with me. If <laughs> when I if I don't stream, Mikey has figured out my schedule, the way that it works, and everything, and then that's it. We have our team chemistry. Even if we don't, we win. We go on winning streaks and not. But he's played every single game with me, every single game. 
completing my national this weekend. Oh, let's go real estate, real estate, real estate. Celebrating by punishing this white ball with a metal club. Excuse me. Oh, this is, I was like, this is a cocaine joke, but this is a golf joke. Yeah, I was like, Trav, this doesn't seem like Trav, but you're you're going golfing, I assume. That's what I, I translated that as. Took me a minute. Mama in-law's birthday, we about to throw down. Does she turn up? Is she, are they like down to like, do they like parties? Like, are they like, they go crazy? That's exciting. That's exciting. I wish, man. My mom still, she don't, she won't let us throw like big parties for her. She too low key. That's where I get it from. I get it from my mama. Me and my moms are the same. But I, now that I think, is that how people are with me? They're like, oh, and then I'm the asshole. Cause I'm like, I wish I could throw my mom a giant party. She don't like parties. But then again, I'm like, I'm like that too. Hmm. It's a little self-reflection. You were in East Palestine or Palestine, Ohio. Is it Palestine? Well, how come white people call it Palestine, Ohio, but then they say Palestine? I'm just saying, but either way, uh, you were there last week for a dirt bike race. How is it out there? Is it, is it good out there? You don't know what pickleball is? Don't Google it. Just be careful if you Google it. Okay? I'm just telling you now. Rangers won the series. They're parading here in Dallas. Yeah, no fucking clue anybody won the World Series. Thank you for updating me. <laughs> no, I just wanted you to Google pickleball. Because now you've definitely Googled it. Because I was like, don't Google pickleball. You know, none of you couldn't resist. You were like, what? Oh, wow. What is he talking about? What is he doing? Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Pull up to U of A homecoming game. Oh, I'm down, dude. Are are you there? Are you there right now? We got Zach out there too, bro. I'm kind of down. I'm kind of down to pull up to Tucson. I'm always about going to Tucson. I have. Well, I'm taking my parents out this weekend, so I don't know. Can I go? I don't know if I'm gonna see my girlfriend today. I could probably come tonight, and then but but the game's tomorrow, so that's I can't. I could come tonight, and I could I have to leave by like nine a.m. and then back to my back to my home. I don't like leaving too long. Otherwise, I get I get nervous. That was crazy. You'd rather be cold than sweat. Was that re does that relate to pickleball? It's Bedlam this weekend. OSU and OU. Yeah, that's a rivalry, right? Go to Key West. We were there last weekend. Was Fantasy Fest in the Keys? A huge swingers party. Jeez, yo, Trav, bro, what's happening? You were the golf joke. Now you now there's a swingers fan. I thought that was about fantasy sports, bro. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. My mind already allowed me to read it out loud. That's why I was like, it already I read it like I'm fucking Joe Biden on a teleprompter. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I was like, oh, this is about DraftKings. That's how we ended last week. We're coming into the weekend, fantasy fest. Oh, I didn't know they, they I was like, that kind of dope. Football uh, island, you know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. 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 That's crazy. Fixing the mermaid and pirate costumes. If you're, are you taking the photos after? Then we got to start decorating for Thanksgiving now. Or no, 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 for Christmas. Not, does anybody do Thanksgiving? Only if you let me. If I Oh, we're talking about playing 2K. See, I'm falling behind on the Twitch now, too, man. That's crazy. Working two hours tomorrow, then I don't know. You can rest a little bit. I see it. What do you what do you do? How do you blow some steam off? I dunk on fools in 2K. <laughs> Again, I mean, lately I've been kind of clapping back at them, especially if they run their mouth on it. I feel like I, I clapped them back very positively. That's why I felt good. The one guy, bro, I was just like, I just I was roasting him like a therapist, though. That's when you know I told you that story today. I was like you know, I roasted someone and I didn't feel bad about it, but like legitimately it's cause like I made sure it was constructive. Like I was just straight up. Like I was being, I was, I, it was bad, bro. It was bad. This dude messed up cause he asked, he was getting really mad. He was being really crazy on the 2k. And I asked him a question. I was like, how old are you, sir? I asked him just like that. And then he, he answered me and then he messed up. He shouldn't have answered that. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. I really hate to be that golf ball. Come to Ohio. My dad is the vice president of an ATV and dirt bike racing club. We host events at racetracks. I have keys to like 200 acres of racetrack. Oh, dude. <laughs> JG, bro. Why is your like, you, you have such a fascinating life. You know that? 
Like, just everything about you, bro. Very, very cool. You know that? Like, you're just very... Like, you out there living, bro. You out there living, bro. You got dirt bikes. Even your dad. You the president of the damn race club, bro. You out there in NASA. This is amazing, bro. It's amazing. That's it, bro. Y'all got good charities going on. Y'all got good things. I love it. Cousin's wedding, golf, and some soccer. Ooh, where are you going to, like, pick up soccer? Mama in law will take a shot at Henny still. There you go. There you go. I know who Harry Mack is. You know, I used to the the Harry Mack skill was my that was my college icebreaker back in the day. I love it. So I, I respect any I love the freeze. You ever heard of uh what's her name? What was it? What was her name? Me was it like Me Shells or E Thugs? What was that name? Thug Shell, Thug Shells? Yeah, Thug Shells, yeah, bro. She, I, I got mad respect for her too, bro. She was kicking it. I love that shit. I love all of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm down with it, man. Uh huh. It's cleaned up. Your friends living there, chilling. Home values got smoked. Wait, what? What's cleaned up? Oh, Palestine. Oh yeah, it's Arlington, not Dallas. I don't think uh, I'm losing on YouTube. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. He's the freestyle ledge. I will. Swingers is wild, dude. I'm way, dude. The Twitch, y'all get, y'all put me behind, like behind, bro. Thug show. I love this small streak we had a rating. I did too, but like, you know, it's a good memory because <laughs> <laughs> rating is the most volatile shit ever, bro. Hey, I'm telling you, after going through, uh, what's it called? After going through like all of it, man. It's it's like uh like it's it's crazy. She streams from show venues now? No way. Bro, good for her. I'm very glad. Hell yeah. Good for her, bro. Good for her. Cause that was a beautiful one. I like her. What was the other girl's name? Olieta. She was fire. And like any of the cool I like, what's her name? Kanara. I love Kanara. You mama Kanara, she was great. But then like, dude, I'm telling you. Some of the other ones, it was just bad, bro. People would get mad if you would raid them. And then we would be, like, going through raiding. Like, you guys, like, dude, you guys, like, some of you got lost, bro. I'm, Dude, some of y'all are, like, y'all don't know what happened, bro. Like, real facts, bro. This isn't a joke, but it's funny because it is a joke, but it's sad. But it's hilarious, but it's, t it's so tragic. Y'all were just, like, y'all were hella getting in trouble on fucking Twitch. That's it. Y'all saw w too many fucking sets of cleavage and could not contain yourself. And then y'all started clicking on videos that we weren't on. Uh-huh. And then you were like, oh, Josh said we were raiding. And Josh said we were doing. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Y'all literally, you had people's girlfriends. They were like, did you tell him to do this? No, I ain't do shit. The hell are you saying? Mm-hmm. Then I'm not even talking even talk about Georgie yet. Y'all went crazy with George. That's what I'm saying. It's like we have a good memory. That's at the end of the day. I don't know what y'all like and don't like. You know, we do stuff. We stop things. But, like, y'all got some great memories, man. Because <laughs> she's crazy, bro. The Georgie scenario is unhinged. Absolutely unhinged from every aspect. No matter what side you were pursuing it from. You guys, some of you were trying to help him. Some of you were trying to hurt him. Georgie was trying to hurt you like it wasn't like <laughs> no nah, bro like dude it was just so yeah it was volatile bro it was volatile as hell bro volatile as hell mm. yeah bro it was crazy it was crazy we just had to be there mm-hmm But, like, it, nah, it was just weird. You can't explain it. It was pure chat. It, what, dude, it was awful. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There would be such beautiful moments and such awful moments. But, like, dude, I can't, I can't commit to that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I deal with so much volatility already in my life. And, like, and then even in the markets. And you want me to sign up every day. We just raid somebody, bro. In like one moment, it's just like it's it's a beautiful. Then the next moment, it's just like you have you have no idea. It's not even box of chocolate shit. It's insanity. 
a box of, of TikTok live stream. Mm, thanks for the roses. Mm. Mm-hmm. You couldn't write something. No, you couldn't. I'm telling you, AI, nothing, writer strike, nothing. I'm telling you, it was wild. You ever play Silent Hill? Nah. I don't think I was allowed to, and then it was too scary. I didn't like scary games. And then I think Resident Evil was haram. Like, I never got it. I was just terrified. I played the demo. Definitely played the demo. Mm hmm. I had to be there. But yeah, so you may be missing out on the raids, but I hope you have a good weekend. Above all else, I hope you really get some rest. This has already been so wild. I can't wait for 2024. Even these next couple months, man. Whatever is going to, it's going to be wicked. So, life is good. Can you come over next weekend? Uh, what's next weekend? Oh, I don't know. I got to, I got to see. I was, I was looking up things if I wanted to go somewhere at the end of the year. I think the, pretty much like, I might disappear after Christmas. So, like, I might leave at, like, for Christmas and then I won't come back till 2023. I might I might end the the streaming year at 20 at at Christmas, you know, and then come back right after. So I don't know, but I don't know about next weekend unless there's anything going on, but I I did plan on hiding myself from the world and staying in my cave, maybe eating a steak. Mm. We got to find a deal, bro. Let's flip a house out here. I'll stay it again. Find a house out here. We'll we'll do a deal out here. And you'll be good. Enjoy it. Can you leave with someone in charge? Last time I did that with lending tips. Uh, again, any of the times I was out with like surgery or anything. I end up with shit in my account. You guys end up asking me about Neo. And then y'all become a little extra tinfoily. I got to wash the tinfoil off of you for the next, like, four weeks. Mm-hmm. I get, like, Nikolai. I get a lot of shit. Mr. Market hopped on. No, we had Mosby. That was the other day. That was that was this year. No, we did... Uh, there's a period, again, when I had surgery, you had some lending tips. I even came on, though, after surgery. Mm hmm That's the early January. Well, if I end up taking this break, I will not be in San Diego. I don't know. I want to either go to Dubai, London, Switzerland, uh, Africa, or even uh, uh, Canada. Or like New York. I kind of I want to go to Canada, but I was like, I'll just fucking go to New York. I don't know if I want to deal with the with the snow anywhere. So I don't know. I don't know. LT chilling. I called yesterday. He said a conference call, and then that's it. You've been flipping houses, doing a lot of that. Why not Egypt? Um, I don't know. You you don't have any ideas. <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. Of why I would not want to go to Egypt in the next couple of months. Nothing. Even do du even Dubai, I don't want to go to Dubai. My girlfriend wanted to go to Dubai and I was trying to explain to her. I'm like, you realize what is happening right now, right? <laughs> it's the last place uh, you wanna you wanna send in me. With how I look, and then I am a Christian Egyptian in the middle. You're like, and she's like, it's rich. She she's been to Dubai many times. She loves Dubai. I know. I, I I was I was suspect of that until I found out her parents lived there for a little bit. So I was like, okay, you're lucky. And I was like, <laughs> this was not gonna fucking work, <laughs> Miss. I love Dubai. Uh huh. But nah. So either way, it's uh, you know, it's I don't know. I don't I don't think I'm gonna hit up Dubai though. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Why would you want to go to Canada? Because I like Canadian people, but I don't know how y'all came out like that. <laughs> Once I meet your parents, a.k.a. your government. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's like, it's like, honestly, it's like if you met my parents, sometimes you'd be like, wow, that's weird that because I'm, I'm very different than my parents. So like all the Canadian people I've met, 
I love Canadian people. Uh, but it's uh, you know, I don't I don't know how y'all became so chill. When I see like how y'all do things, I'm like, that makes no damn sense. Why y'all so chill? But Canada look cool. I wanna go to Canada. Everybody I've met from Canada is awesome. Seems like a cool culturally, you know, a melting pot of sorts. I wanna see what Toronto's like. Ooh, I'm down to go to Japan actually. Fuck yeah, bro. I'm gonna come back with like ten Toyota Camrys. I'll be like, I converted it to fucking yen. We just we importing all of them. Nah, bro. It's crazy. I got like 30% off. This is insane. Mm -hmm. You just left from Japan? What did you do? The only thing to do in Canada is ice fish and eat poutine. Are you sure? Isn't that from that, isn't that, from that conspiracy movie? <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. Are you sure? I'm heading to Japan in January. Oh, that's exciting. I want to go, bro. Yeah, I heard Toronto's, I think it's more than ice fishing. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, you know, I'll say it. My girlfriend, I don't, I think she knows this. She might get mad, but like, dude, the one thing about Canada too, like low key, all Canadian girls are hot. I don't know what it is, but that is something I will, I, unfortunately, I don't know. If, even if I get in trouble, I'll be like, I'm sorry. It's just the truth. I can't get in trouble for that. But that's no matter what. They're just... So that's another thing about Toronto. But, like, I've not... Like, how do I know? I met a lot of Canadian... Like I said, I love the Canadian people. Even the dudes are chill, too, bro. But, like, I'm pretty sure all Canadian girls are hot. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> like, at least, like, 9 out of 10. It's just a very weird thing. I don't... I can't explain it. So good for them. But, again, I don't know how they ended up like that. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, Omen, Canada, he's chill. Nope, I take that back, though, because y'all going to be like, Josh told me this. Nope, mm -mm. we're not falling for this Twitch. Something in the maple syrup. But yeah, man, we go to Toronto, let the Chad know. Yeah, I mean, that's why I said maybe New York. I'm kind of down to go to New York, call it a day. I don't I want to leave. It's like if I do, that's what I'm saying. If I'm if I'm going to not go on stream, I better leave the country. But other than that, I don't really want to leave the country. So, I don't know, Japan would be dope. We'll see. NYC, I'm really down. Chicago. I don't know if that'd be a vacation versus like a boot camp. <laughs> You know, I was trying to do like a basic vacation, not basic training. So I I prefer to stay out of Chicago for, for my couple days off if I'm going to end up taking those. We'll see. Fiji, this is the winter. That's the only thing. Yeah. All right. All righty. All right, Chad, it's time. Well, hold on. I need to set this shit up. You want a winter vacation? Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Because I live in the sun. <laughs> like, even though I'm pale as shit, like, generally speaking, you know, I got the AC on a lot. Shout out to Solar, baby. Are you at ESG? I always say I fuck with solar so heavy. I don't I don't know. They just trick the shit out of me. But like I run my AC twenty four seven and my electricity bill is four dollars. So that's the only good thing. But then I paid like forty grand for the whole system or something. So either way. Yeah, B say I'm about to I'm about to, I have to set up the two K. That's it. I think we're about to wrap it up. So YouTube, you could get to the Twitch. I'll be here for a little bit. Let me I gotta move these things around here. Got to move the OBS. Mm. Woke up the house was 51. I mean, it was like, dude, my house was like 60. That's not like, that's fucking cold. But like, even in Cali, 
I woke my house was like sixty something the other morning. Mm-mm-mm. Costa Rica. Mm. The lady I bought my house from paid the two year solar off and transferred ownership. Yeah, you you fucking came up. That's what I said. If you if you're a secondary owner of solar, you just hit the fucking jackpot. Now you just don't fry your AC system or anything else, but you're you just won. So like if I ever sell my house, uh, and again notice I say if I ever sell my house, meaning hold you there, hold it long. Anyways, but uh, the, I paid mine off, so they're gonna come up fat. I'm telling you, it's it's actually it's. Like I said, there's the cost to it all, but down the line, I do think like forcing solar, all these people who buy, who like get these secondary houses, you know, existing homes, it's going to be nuts. She offered that in the water treatment. They usually should, uh, you know, they, you know, they could ask for you to take it, but if you guys do come to an agreement, they're down. I mean, that's just, that's just a good deal. Okay. solar battery i want one i don't have them but i've i've literally i've had my power go out be, even though i have solar and that's because of the the battery thing i don't have the battery but isn't the battery like twenty thousand dollars or some shit i haven't really looked I'm, i haven't been that and i have a generator so i don't care but you know i'll burn some fuel for some electricity you know fuck it all right All righty. We did it, baby. You guys remember my player? You didn't forget Mr. Joseph Biden. I love when I get goaltending because then everybody sees my name. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys want to watch a 2K game? Usually I just cut off the YouTube. I don't know, YouTube. Would you guys like to see a 2K game? I don't. I don't. It's going to be hard to manage the chats. That's the only problem. And then I get, like, kind of quiet. I'm just down to run, run real quick. But I think YouTube gets, like, mad with the gaming, though. Oh, yeah. Hey there. That's me. I look pretty cool. <laughs> what, you have Philo? No, we call Bible study something else to rebuke the heathens. We did have Philo, though, today. A good one. You get rest. Mm -mm. Show your player stats. I'm an animal. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand, bro. Is this the right one? Yeah, bro. There you go. B+. Plus. 13 points per game, 17 rebounds, 5.9 assists, 2.6 blocks, and then 0.8 steals. I'm an animal. That's it, bro. I'm an animal. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm almost averaging a triple-double. I don't think you understand. All right, Mikey. Are you going to get on? Right, Mikey, are you already on? You're like, what is this? Yeah, stonker ball. We haven't heard stonks in a while. I like the build. The center one's good. My small forward's good too, but I can't I can't play without a good center. I played the other day without a good center, and I realized how useful I am to the world. Mm-hmm. That's awful. Well, I gotta switch the stream. Yeah, I can't play music though on YouTube though. YouTube, I'm cutting it off, bro. YouTube, we're going straight Twitch. Yeah, that's it. I forgot. I'm trying to vibe. I need my I need my army gun. Last time we get hyped up on the music. Go to the Twitch, bro. Just go to the Twitch, bro. Go to the Twitch. Here, where is it? Where's the Twitch link? 
and you enjoy your weekend. That's all, baby. That's all. That's all. The week is over now. The week is over. This weekend, you got to get ready to go. You have to be ready to go, man. We have a lot we're going to be doing. Can't open Twitch. Oh, why not? At work, they hate you. But then if I keep gaming on here, they're going to ban this for, for your work, too. There's too many games. And then the music. So I'll see you guys if you could be there. But, Chad, I love you. Thank you guys again, as always. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you're ready for more no matter what, man, too. There's a lot of opportunity at every corner, but thank you all. God bless you. And don't forget why we're here and why we keep going and why that faith, hope, and love ain't never going out of style, baby, and why sometimes you just you just need a little bit of rest and everything has a seasons and we accept it and ride with it because we know it all works out in the end, baby. Why, baby, why? Finger to the sky, baby, to God be the glory, and through the grace of God alone, amen, amen. That's what I'm talking about, Chad. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, and peace out. Unless I see you on the Twitch. Unless I see you on Twitch. All right, peace.